Hi guys, I want to invite you to join the Patreon where you will get some benefits as well as audiobooks that will not be uploaded on YouTube. I hope you have read the previous part before starting here. PD the MC is a male. Where I am. I remember I was at home, watching a marathon of my favorite movies, and suddenly, I heard a loud noise before everything went dark. But looking at their surroundings, there was no trace of the supposed darkness. It was a square room so perfectly white, it didn't look natural at all. As he tried to get his bearings and understand what was happening, a white flame erupted in the middle of the room and a white silhouette with a human shape but without any features emerged from it. Hi, Tony. I am. Groot. The room was silent for a few moments at the abrupt interruption, before it began to tremble from the white figure's laughter. That was bad, very bad, but I have a soft spot for that kind of humor, said the figure, wiping away a fake tear. Anyway, let's start over. I am Rob. Oh, holy. Tony yelled. Are you Rob? So am I dead. Then he realized something was wrong wait a second, I didn't die for a truck, I shouldn't know you. In answer to your first question, yes, you are dead. And I must apologize, but yes, you also died by a truck. What are you talking about? The thing is long to explain, so I will try to give you a summary. I bet someone that you would get through the weekend safely, while the other party bet that they could take you out using a truck. Did you use my life on a bet? I don't usually bet with this kind of thing, it seems disrespectful to little creatures like you, he added. But this time, the bet seemed like a sure thing. You live on the top floor of a 24-story block, the elevator broke down due to poor maintenance, the doorbell stopped working, you had a pantry full of food, you didn't need any daily supplies like toilet paper, they were marathoning your movies and favorite series, your phone ran out of battery and the list goes on. In other words, there wasn't a single reason for you to go out and you should have had a very peaceful weekend. How did I die then? Tony asked blankly. How the hell did a truck eliminate me 24 stories up? He fell on you. I repeat, how is that possible? Okay, maybe my answer was too concise, Rob admitted. I didn't think there was a way for it to happen either, but I didn't expect the other party to be so creative. He used a cargo plane to transport some vehicles and just as he was passing close to your house, the compartment accidentally opened and a truck plummeted towards you with amazing precision. You've got to be kidding me, Tony's jaw dropped at the revelation. I was mad too when I found out, Rob said. Isn't that cheating? Really? Tony gave Rob a blank look. Are you more concerned that I cheated than my life? Well, if I didn't do that, you'd technically still be alive Rob looked away in embarrassment. Let's leave that aside, Tony sighed tiredly, what will happen to me now? Right, I almost forgot, Rob facepalmed, even though I lost the bet, I feel bad about what happened to you, so after talking it over with some friends, I'll do something I know you humans love. I will send you to another world with advantages. Really? Tony's eyes lit up at the prospect of being an OP transmigrator. Can I choose the world? Or what advantages will I have? Of course no, Rob replied. Don't look at me like that. After your death I have reviewed your life many times and I know that many times you have dreamed of this. And in all of them, your advantages are not revealed until you reach the other world, so be patient. I'm pretty sure you'll be happy with what you get. Just like you were so sure I wouldn't die. Tony asked suspiciously. Ahem. Wow, look how late it's gotten. Rob exclaimed as he looked at one of the blank walls and an analog clock appeared out of nowhere. I think I should send you on your way already, good luck Tony. He stomped on the ground and a circular opening appeared below Tony, causing him to fall into the void as he screamed. Somewhere in another world. A young man, who was lying on the grass in a field, begins to stir as he regains consciousness and opens his eyes. He jumped to his feet and looked around warily. Even if he wanted to surprise me with the advantages, he should have at least told me which world he sent me to. Seeing that there was no one around, he relaxed a bit and began to examine himself. It seems that my body is very similar to when I was younger he lifted his pants a little and looked down not bad, I know what the first advantage was he nodded satisfied now, how should I try to find out my powers? Ding! The host has received a rookie package from Rob. Do you want to open it? OMG! 
Do I have a system? But before the emotion went to his head, he took a deep breath and tried to calm down let's not jump to conclusions, let's see what this package is first. System, open it. Ding. The host has obtained a mysterious devil fruit no weaknesses. A devil fruit. And no weaknesses. Tony's eyes widened AMI in one piece. No wait. Many times the systems give things from other worlds, it does not mean that you are really in that world. System, what model of fruit is it? Ding. The host has received a note from Rob. Do you want to open it? Perhaps he realized that he forgot to tell me something. Let's see the note. Hi, Tony. Knowing you, you will surely ask what the devil fruit is before deciding whether or not to eat it. But where would the fun be then? I remind you that the fruit no longer has any weaknesses, so show a little courage. By the way, the system won't activate if you don't eat the fruit, but hey, it's still your choice. A vein bulged on Tony's forehead after reading the note, but on second thought, he was right. The fruit had no weaknesses, so as long as it wasn't a bad power, he could always choose to use them or not later. System, give me the fruit. In front of Tony, a translucent shadow of a strange fruit materialized and gradually gained consistency until it became real. He looked at it curiously, because sometimes the appearance of the fruit gives clues to the kind of power it contains, but he failed to recognize it. He psyched himself up for a few moments before working up the courage to bite into it and swallow. Oh. What do you think is the devil fruit he will get? When you pointed out that the fruit had no weaknesses, I thought it was limited to sea stone and sea water. He did not expect that the bad taste will also be fixed. He exclaimed in surprise as he continued to eat the devil fruit with relish. Ding. The host has obtained the abilities of the devil fruit. Kuku Kuku no Mie Paramecia type devil fruit that allows the user to transform any material into food. Because the fruit has no weaknesses, the food it generates tastes delicious and superior to any of its peers. Wait, isn't that the ability Strusen had from the big MOM pirates? Tony was excited about the ability he got. He not only should never worry about not having food, but he even he could dedicate himself to selling his food at zero cost. One didn't have to despise this ability, Tony remembered Strusen turning the whole cake chateau into a fluffy meringue pie when it fell apart. Ding! The host has met the system activation conditions. The gourmet ninja system has been activated. Ninjas? Tony looked at the translucent window in front of him confused there are too many worlds that ninjas use, Naruto being the one that most familiar to me. Maybe. System, show me my status. Condition. Name Gluttony, nicknamed Tony. Current world Naruto. Ability Kuku Kuku no Mi Devil Fruit No Weakness. Weapons None. Traits Unawakened. Summon Contract None. Description A seemingly ordinary boy with the mysterious ability to transform things into food. I see, so I'm really in Naruto's world, Tony reflects. Now the big questions are where and when am I? Before the Nine Tails attack. After Kagaya. Damn I hope it's not Boruto's timeline, I refuse to watch that sad attempt to extend the series. And I don't remember much about Naruto either. He tried to organize the memories, but due to the stuffiness of the series, he would sometimes skip several chapters to avoid them. If he could visit Kanoha, he could get his bearings. Certain. System, what are your functions? The system will act as an assistant to the host most of the time. It will also issue optional quests, you can help to get more food and related skills. Fortunately the missions are optional Tony was relieved to know that do you know where or at what point in Naruto we are? No idea. Okay, let's go by steps then. Since food won't be a problem, let's take it easy. Let's start by seeing what I can do. He remembered that Strusen used a short sword to use his power, so the first test was whether he could turn things into food with his bare hands. He picked up a branch from the ground and thought about changing it. The branch softened and slowly turned red until it became strawberry licorice. Not bad for the first try, Tony nodded. The transformation is a bit slow, but I'm sure it will get faster the more you practice and develop the skill. Although, I wonder what kind of power the fruit will have when it awakens. Will I indiscriminately turn everything around me into food? Perhaps living beings and food? He took a bite and froze, how could it be so delicious? 
I'm going to have to be careful with my own power, otherwise I'll end up becoming a gusto version of Ratatouille. He chose a random direction and started walking hoping to find a path that would lead him to a town or city. I must be careful that no one discovers my ability, at least for now. Seeing the paranoia and greed in this world, they might believe that he is a Kekiai Tota. Or was it a Kikiai Mora? I do not remember. He ate as he went along and after a while, he noticed that something was strange. System, why do I feel so good, but I'm not full yet? The food that the host has transformed has the ability to speed up chakra recovery and physical stamina. As for why you don't feel full, it's a surprise. Another surprise, I see. He remembered that in the status tab, he had a section that said he had unawakened traits. So, devil fruit power aside, I do have something like a bloodline. Interesting. I wonder what it could be. As he continued to walk into the unknown, he began to think what he would do in this world. To begin with, he calculated that the age of his current body was about nine years old and he had no money, meaning anyone who saw him could take him for an orphan and that gave him a chance to be adopted by one of the five big hidden villages. But that was both a danger and an opportunity. He could rule out Sand Village, because from the scenery around it, it was clearly not on his land. It was also one of his last options. He remembered that it was a village with few resources and whose daimyo had a dislike for his kage. If they discovered his ability, they could lock him up as a strategic resource. The rock village didn't seem to be a good option either, he didn't remember much about it, except that his kage and his ninjas were stubborn as mules and seemed to look for any excuse to get into fistfights. He didn't know if it could be a good place to live. The cloud village gave him a better impression than the previous two. Granted, the Kage was a muscle man who liked to go shirtless and based on the timeline, perhaps he would need to put up with the acoustic onslaught that is B's rap. Wait, wasn't this village the one that had a habit of kidnapping ninjas with special abilities? He vaguely remembered something about it with Kushina and Hinata. Okay, ruled out. The village of the mist rather not. Between the period of bloody mist, his Kage manipulated by Abito and the slaughter of the clans. Tony was pretty sure there must not be too much food culture in that place. That leaves you with the Leaf Village. On the bright side, he knows a lot of characters and knows things that are going to happen, so he can prepare a bit. On the bad side, they have Danzo and his lover, the third Hokage. Not to mention the corrupt council duo. It could be said that it is the village that has the worst and most inept chiefs of the five villages and is only sustained by the accumulation of its predecessors. A good example of this is what happens to the Senju. Fortunately, Orochimaru remedied that later, if only partially. It seems that the only options for him are the rock or the leaf. System, if a sensor ninja tries to read my memories, will he find out about you? No, you will be shown false memories where it is reflected that the host is the only survivor of a small destroyed town, the kind that no one cares about. Let's find out the timeline first and then decide then, he concluded. If he was in Baruto's time, he would go live in the rock village without a second's hesitation. If instead he was still in Naruto's time, the blade might be his best option. He just needed to find a yellow-haired idiot in bright orange clothes. Geez, now that he mentions it, there was nothing less ninja and understated than that. Wait a second, do I have to go through puberty again? I don't know how long the fanfic will be, but I hope you enjoy it. Two days. She had to walk for almost two whole days before she found an elderly couple who were picking mushrooms in the forest so she could ask them for directions to civilization. By the time he finally saw the gates of the leaf village, night had almost fallen and it would not be long before they were closed. Should I go in now or wait until morning? Tony hesitated over what to do. Staying outside when the doors are still open might make him suspicious, but if he went in now, he had nowhere to sleep. Who knows, maybe he could be kidnapped by a root ninja. Mental note do not go into any dark and sinister alleys, he reminded himself. Perhaps I could offer some food in exchange for a night's lodging. He thought before frowning but if I do that, I won't be able to go to a civilian establishment, I'll have to look for a clan that is willing to make this deal. He knew some of the clans in the village, so it didn't take him long to think of a possible target. He entered the gates under the gaze of the guards and began to search for his destination, always following the main paths and discreetly picking up a few branches along the way. Here they are, the Inazuka clan. 
Yes, Tony thought of three possible clans, but the Inazuka was the most suitable at the moment. They have a pack mentality, they like direct dealings and they have ninja dogs. And it was precisely those dogs, his backup plan. He had kept the branches he collected inside his shirt and processed them into premium sausages. Their taste, along with their smell and quick recovery effect, should make dogs go crazy for them. He would offer them all he had as long as he would let them spend the night. It was an easy deal, they would win and they didn't have to worry about security. After all, he would be surrounded by trained dogs everywhere. He approached the guards at the entrance and proposed the deal. As he expected, they agreed to it after one of the dogs tasted the sausages. The delighted face on his face and the effects he felt made him tremendously energetic, more than usual in fact. But when they asked where he got them from, he told them it was a trade secret. That was one of his plans, he would open a ninja grocery store later on. The two days of walking were not in vain, he had a lot of time to think. He remembered that in this world, the ninjas had a kind of pills called soldier pills. He especially remembers it because Sakura made some with such an unpleasant taste, that neither Sai nor Naruto could stand them. He read something about it and remembered that they were made from wheat germ, potato, special fat and other things, before being compressed. If he could do something to replace them, like ninja chocolates, it would be a big deal. He spent the night sleeping peacefully and not worrying about his safety. Danzo he would dare to kidnap in the middle of a pack of territorial ninja dogs. Come on, I dare you. The next morning, he woke up to the relentless onslaught of dozens of dogs licking him, hoping to get a taste of the sausages the other dogs bragged about. He played with them a bit before saying goodbye and promised to bring more another day as thanks. Now that it was daylight and he had a whole clan that remembered his scent, he could be calmer. He thought of the other two clans Aburame and Akimichi. The reason he thought of these clans is because of the importance they also place on food. The Aburame clan raises a lot of insects, so if he provides them with honey or fruit, he could have done the same as the Inazuka clan. The reason he didn't do it is that he has something of a bug phobia. You don't like them at all. He adds the fact that the members of the clan are quiet and of somewhat poor social skills. Discarded. Perhaps as potential clients in the future, but he had no interest in going to their nest. Then there is the Akimichi clan, the legendary wolverines of the village. To be honest, if he was going to open a ninja food business, he would definitely have to make sure it was in the immediate vicinity of his clan. The use of calories for his techniques, coupled with his insatiable appetite and deep pockets, made them his better half. He still remembers how a friend of his told him that apparently in Boruto, Hinata won a ramen eating contest against an Akimichi. He didn't believe it at all, where would all that food go? Clearly, he was trying to tease her. Too bad for her, he didn't manage to fool him for a single second. Ha! Now his plan was to look for Naruto, Minato, or Kushina. He was able to confirm that the village is not at an advanced point in history, thanks to the huge stone heads that can be seen from almost everywhere in the village. Apparently the third Hokage was the current head and that meant either Minato hasn't taken over yet or the Nine Tails attack has already happened and if so, he needs to know how much time has passed since then. His first stop was the most logical, the village cemetery. If he finds the name of Ikaku Yumino, who was Iruka's father who died during the Nine Tails attack, he will be able to confirm that he is in the period after Minato and Kushina's death. It took him a while, but he was able to find the grave with the name engraved on it. He felt a little sad about it. If he had been in the time before the attack, say, in the childhood of Naruto's parents, he would have thought of some way to save Kushina from both Minato's trickery and Ibido's attack. The girl known as the Bloody Habanero, he liked her and understood what it was like to be picked on for nothing. Minato. Yes, he died. Who cares? She was nothing more than an idealistic puppet for Kushina to feel tied to the village, we all know that. And what nonsense is that of dividing the chakra of the nine tails between Naruto and him? Give it to Kushina, asshole. With the nine tail chakra, the Uzumaki build, and medical ninjas, he could have survived and Naruto would have had a mother to grow up with, as well as someone who knows what it's like to be a Jinchuriki. I mean, it was surely Minato's genes that made Naruto go halfest during his childhood and adolescence. That and the mistreatment that the third Hokage didn't prevent or that Jiraiya chose to ignore. According to the date of death and the date I asked before in the Inazuka clan, I'm really in Naruto's childhood period. 
That is not good he sighed when he accepted the reality I was thinking of joining an orphanage after they will examine my memory to prove my innocence, but if I do, Danzo could take me out for root or I will become cannon fodder for missions. I need a backup, one strong enough to notice my demise if it happens and not strong enough to prevent them from trying to use me as a sacrifice. He spent a lot of time thinking in front of the grave and only came up with one solution. Being adopted by a clan. But that was easier said than done. Depending on the clan, he could go on to become a servant of the secondary branch or actually be part of the family. Maybe not at the level of the heirs or the main bloodline, but that would be good enough for him. He would no longer be alone in this world. One of the things that many transmigrators forget is that when traveling to another world, their family is left behind. He had only been in this world for a few days and he already missed them. He left the cemetery with tears in his eyes and did not calm down until it was noon. He tried to tidy himself up a bit and walked purposefully towards the clan he believed he had the best chance of being successfully adopted with. And it wasn't just any clan, he targeted one of the four noble clans in the village. What clan could it be? Tony stood in front of a huge compound whose entrance was marked with the kanji for food. This place was the target of him, the Akimichi clan. A clan that has had more than 15 generations and has a strong relationship with the Yamanaka clan and the Nara clan. As long as he gets adopted, he will be akin to having the backing of not one, but three clans. But he can't deny that something he thought wouldn't affect him made him nervous. He did not have a good relationship with his original family, they loved each other very much, there is no doubt about that but disputes always arose over certain issues and it ended up affecting everyone. The last conversation he had with his parents ended in a heated argument because they kept remembering that he was the only one of his children who was not married, and they tried to force him to be with women he didn't know. That's why he locked himself away for the weekend, to try to relax and be able to talk to them again with his batteries recharged. He now he could never do that anymore. Okay, let's go there. Just as he was about to enter. Are the bags of premium exotic flavored potato chips nearly out of stock? Ruin. That was all he could hear before he was hit by something at high speeds and knocked unconscious on the ground. Later, in a room at the Akimichi compound. Choji Akimichi. How many times have I told you not to run out of the house? A large woman hit him on the head with a ladle now look. You have rendered the poor child unconscious. We're lucky nothing broke. But mom. Potato bags. Without discussion. The woman stood her ground. No potato bags for a week. No. -oh. A cry of despair and lamentation was heard throughout the Akimichi complex and the surrounding area. A ladle at supersonic speeds fell on his head and left him silent. Don't yell, the child is still sleeping. She told him with an even louder voice shut, take the child for a while Tio calm down. The woman ordered. Yes darling, but please calm down. A large man with red hair and purple line marks on his cheeks took the boy away from his mother's wrath. What's all that noise? Heard the woman in a room behind her. Tony looked around him without understanding what he was doing there. Don't tell me I got hit by another truck. I swear that whatever the case. Fortunately, her doubts were quickly dispelled when a woman entered the room and she recognized her at a glance as Choji's mother. She with short brown hair, crimson lipstick, black eyes, orange eye shadow and a large build like the rest of the clan. How do you feel? Asked the woman would you like something to eat? I'm fine, Tony replied with a slightly disoriented expression. Where am I? You're in the Akimichi clan, my son hit you by accident when he was leaving the compound, she explained. Akimichi? Oh dear, the woman worried at her reaction. She didn't know if her blow had affected his head or if he was a stranger wait here, I'll be right back. Tony was left alone in the room and tried to reorganize his thoughts. It seems that he had managed to enter the Akimichi clan, but not in the way that he expected. The woman was soon back with another woman and Tony's pupils contracted as he recognized that person's style. Someone from the Yamanaka clan. Wasting no time, he quickly talked to the system about a last-minute plan. And he was glad to act fast because apparently the person noticed his panic and raised his fingers to do some kind of jutsu that made him lose consciousness. Lady Yamanaka. What are you doing? His reaction to him right now is very suspicious, it seemed like he was scared of me, explained the woman in Venetian English style clothing. 
he could be a spy from another village. I'm going to read his memory and we'll get rid of doubts. This. It wasn't the first time that someone had sent a child to another village as a spy, they had been doing things like that for centuries, but something inside her told her that the unconscious child was not a spy. Don't worry, Mrs. Yamanaka consoled. The last thing he'll remember is when your son knocked him unconscious, he won't know we read his memory. Although she still had doubts, Mrs. Akimichi did not stop her friend from acting. Mrs. Yamanaka put her hands on her head and used her clan's technique to access Tony's memories. At least, the ones the system allowed him to see. She kept her eyes closed for a few minutes and when she opened them, she was surprised. And good. Mrs. Akimichi was on tenterhooks all this time and she needed to know what was going on. Mrs. Yamanaka took a deep breath and told him everything she saw. A poor but happy childhood with her family, until a few weeks ago some ninja bandits attacked the place. His family split up and the boy's mother yelled at him to go to the leaf village to look for the Akimichi clan, that they would help him because of his grandmother's debt. The boy managed to hide, but unfortunately, he saw firsthand how his family was massacred and the place where he grew up was burned. The boy wandered disoriented, was attacked by wild beasts from which he miraculously escaped, ate roots to survive and endured the adverse weather until he reached the village. He didn't know where the Akimichi clan was, so he temporarily slept with the Inazukas and accidentally arrived at the graveyard, from where he left with tears in his eyes remembering his dead family. It was only today that he managed to find the complex and stood at the door not knowing how to proceed. The rest of the story, they already knew. Poor boy. Mrs. Akimichi had tears in her eyes after hearing the story but why was she scared when she saw you? It's because the female ninja who eliminated her family looks like me. Mrs. Yamanaka looked at the unconscious Tony with complicated eyes. It would have been strange if she didn't react like she did. If she hadn't knocked him unconscious, he might have tried to attack me as revenge for his family. I see. Do you know anything about the debt his mother said? She asked curiously. I don't think so, Mrs. Akimichi thought for a while, but my late mother told me that she had been helped many times in the past and she still had promises to keep. Perhaps the child's family had one of my clan's pledges. And what will you do with him? Asked Mrs. Yamanaka, I'll be honest with you, I've seen many children in his situation due to wars and if we leave him in an orphanage, it could leave him scarred for life. Mrs. Akimichi looked at Tony and only now did she notice the slight swelling in her eyes. The boy must have cried a lot just before reaching his clan's compound. Mrs. Yamanaka did not interrupt her friend's thoughts. Now she was the one who felt bad about being too suspicious of the poor creature. He wasn't a spy, just a boy who had lost everything he loved and was holding on to the last rope of him. I'll ask Choza to adopt him into the clan, the large woman said determinately. Since her mother deposited her hope and her greatest treasure in her clan, she will make sure that the child can have a roof to sleep in, a full stomach and people to trust. I'm glad to see that so far the story is liking, let's keep it up. Tony was overjoyed when he regained consciousness and the system explained what had happened. Mrs. Yamanaka made it so that she will not remember what happened, but the system had a record of everything and could not be affected. Thanks to the rapid response capacity and the last-minute plan, he was able to clear up any doubts about its origin. The part he didn't expect was that the Akimichi clan was the one who took the initiative to adopt him, without him even asking for it. And when asked the reason for the attack, he gave a perfect answer. Maybe it's because of my family's secret cooking technique? Other clans would have scoffed at such words, but not the Akimichi clan. They politely asked him to cook something and Tony made them a simple salad with some of his own ingredients. Even the Akimichi family was surprised at the simplicity of the dish. They expected a tremendously elaborate or precise dish. Or at least something more mysterious. Since when does a salad require technique? It is just cleaning and cutting some vegetables and then depositing them in a bowl, there is nothing secret about that. But after the first bite, no one spoke. They were too busy stuffing their mouths and chewing. Speak. Yes I'm talking, I'm not eating salad. And that wasn't even what surprised them the most. The boy before them turned out to have more appetite than everyone present together. Each clansman in the room ate twelve bowls of salad, but the boy ate thirty by himself. It was not a joke. They were all ninjas and they could feel the change in their bodies, it was as if their chakra felt stimulated, not to mention their resistance. 
They exchanged glances with those who shared the same thought. Looks like that really was the reason for the attack. But at the same time that everyone believed that, a great sadness invades them. Had they known that a family with such abilities was nearby, their alliance of three clans would perhaps have increased to four. Even if that hadn't been the case, the Akimichi clan would have gained a like-minded ally with great compatibility. And so, at the end of the day, Tony Akimichi was born. Not only that, he was provided with a status in the clan similar to a cousin of the main bloodline. The adoption of him caused surprise and drew the attention of many clans. One of the noble clans in the village adopted a child from outside. Everyone wanted to know the reason for it. The first clans to be alerted were naturally the Nara clan, the Yamanaka clan, and even the Inazuka clan. When both of Akimichi's allied clans asked the reason, the only answer they got was an invitation to the Akimichi clan for dinner. After dinner and exchanging glances, everyone understood the reason and why the Akimichi clan gave so much importance to the child. Even the descendants of the clans did double-take of the child. Choji was excited about the new cousin and her delicious food, Shikamaru began to see Tony's food dishes in the clouds and Ino was elated to discover that Tony's food did not make her fat despite how tasty it was. She was hers. As for the Inazuka clan, her response was that had they known that he could be adopted, her clan would not have hesitated to do so. That, along with an order for sausages that left the Akimichi clan baffled. Tony had to go out and explain the situation and as a result, he had to send more sausages to the Inazuka clan as a gift, as well as prepare some for the Akimichi clan under the guise of supervising their quality. He spent several days acclimating to his new clan and then the topic he was waiting for came up, the Ninja Academy. They asked him if he was interested in attending and he stated that he wanted to go so that he would have the strength to protect himself. He didn't mention anything like revenge since it could backfire and from the clan's expressions, it seems he did the right thing. Ding! The host has embarked on the path to become stronger. New quest The road to the force is paved with food. Task complete the following exercise routine daily for two months. 100 push-ups. 100 sit-ups. 100 air squats. 10 kilometers run. Reward curry of life recipe. My first mission. Tony clapped. Let's see wait, where have I seen this before? System, isn't this Saitama's routine? Does it really work? The system only provides beneficial targets for the host. I will do it. In this world, I will need to be in shape or else who knows what could happen to me. A little exercise won't hurt. A routine later. I'm dying. Tony complained. Okay, in my previous life I didn't exercise much, but I wasn't in such bad shape. This body is as if it had never been exercised. I need to eat something. He entered the kitchen, to which he had been given full access, and began to eat. Sure, he could have taken a stone and turned it into a huge strawberry. But ever since he became known about adopting him, he found out by accident that there was always an ANBU watching. At least, he hoped he was just an ANBU, he didn't remember what the difference was between the ANBU and root masks. It did not seem normal to him, so he informed Choza of the matter and he calmed him down saying that it was just a usual check due to the situation. Tony didn't find it unusual to send what he assumed to be at least one chunin, to watch over a child under the age of 10. It will be that common sense varies from world to world. However, he had to endure the masked man's harassment until he formally joined the ninja academy. They gave him a written test to check his level and Tony was surprised at the low level required, he almost thought it was blatant favoritism. I mean, apart from a bunch of nonsense about the will of fire that took up most of it, the rest consisted of basic logic and math questions that barely went beyond addition and subtraction. Now I could understand why the graduates had such a low level. Even some subjects like chemistry were only taught during the last year. The education system sucked because it was geared more towards brainwashing the new generation than making them useful and skilled. He could almost see the third Hokage's name on the papers of whoever designed this teaching method. After the results came out, he was placed in the same classroom as Choji, Shikamaru, Ino, and company. Everything was fine, but it seemed his response to the will of fire was not up to par. In other words, you're intelligent and capable, but since I don't know if you're impressionable, you have to be brainwashed. Something like that. Clear manipulation of my results aside, 
I was able to complete the quest and obtain the recipe for the curry of life, which I can now prepare at any time thanks to my skill. Not only that, but apparently the reward of. It was just what she expected. What do you think is the reward of? For those who have not read the upper part as recommended, I clarify the MC is a male. The reward? It was something he desperately needed in Naruto's world, because otherwise he wouldn't be able to do much even if he went to the academy. The host has successfully completed the mission. Rewards are being handed out. Recipe for the curry of life. Unlocking the chakra channels. Surprise bonus. Since this is the first quest the host completes, he will receive a bonus. The host will receive double the usual chakra for children of his age. The host will receive the mastery of forming hand seals. Of course he had to do with chakra. Tony remembers that in Naruto you need the help of an adult to unblock the chakra channels and no one helped him with that. So aside from being able to use chakra now, he can use twice the amount of his age and doesn't need to spend weeks practicing how to form hand seals. Ding! New quest become the alpha of the pack. Task remain at the top of your class each year until graduation. Reward summon contract awaken traits. Note prove your superiority to your peers and teachers. After all, only the alpha can enjoy the best parts of prey. Warning the mission is considered failed if at the end of the year, your name does not come first. Any drop and comeback before then is acceptable. A summoning contract? I wonder what cool beast I could get. Even the awakening of my features? It looks like I'm going to have to work very hard for the next three years. Ding! New quest on my turn, no one will go hungry. Task make all your classmates taste your food at least once. Reward Sanji's special pilaf recipe 1 piece Elbaf Semla recipe 1 piece. 2 missions this time, huh? The first can be a challenge because I have Niji and Sasuke as competitors, I will have to focus on not falling behind. But the last one should be simple. Tony, pay attention. A scream from Irika breaks through his musings and snaps him out of his own world. I'm sorry, Master Irika. Irika debates whether to continue scolding his new student. She had seen Tony's grades and the theory was impeccable. The only thing she wasn't tested on was the ninja techniques like the rope escape technique, the transformation technique, and so on. Okay, pay more attention next time. Irika decides to let it go for the first time and hoping that hopefully, there won't be a second. At the end of the lesson, they have a lunch break and Tony smiles like a villain since he can now start his offense. Guys, I made some food. Do you want to try it and give me your opinion? She asked. Choji uses speed similar to Minato's Thunder God technique to appear before Tony and take a portion of food with each hand. Ino gets up excitedly and Shikamaru follows up by telling her that she was a bummer. You don't need to eat if you're not hungry, Shikamaru, Tony told him with a smile. Shikamaru stops in surprise and is quick to say that he needs to feed his mind. Kiba also approaches and claims the sausages for both himself and Akamaru and along with them come Hinata who eats some strawberries with cream and Shino ops for some pancakes with jam. This is delicious Hinata murmured with a smile. It's the best jam I've ever tasted, Shino said. These sausages are great. Right Akamaru? Roar. Tony, how do you make so much food and make it so good? Ino asked. Business secret, Tony tells them. He turns and waves at Team Guy. Don't you want to try something? What's wrong? Ten Ten decides to approach after seeing the sweets. Do you have something that overflows with youth? Rock Lee asks. I don't think you're as good as you seem, Niji says sharply. I have some fantastic vanilla cookies, he handed to Ten Ten. If you want something with youth, Lee, I have some special curry that I think you might love and you Niji, don't judge without trying anything. It is not your destiny. What have you said? Aha, uh -huh, he knew Niji would be upset if he used the word fate. It's like the switch on him when he's in his idiotic phase. I dare you to taste my food and say it doesn't taste good, I said with a look full of arrogance. My mission is just to get him to eat something, he doesn't need to admit that he likes it. Is that so? Good. Show me what you are capable of. Do you prefer something sweet or salty? Tony asked him. I prefer something light. Niji narrowed his eyes defiantly. Try this vegetable sandwich then. 
Niji took it roughly and took a bite like it was nothing special. The performance would have been more convincing if he hadn't been transfixed with shock in his taste buds. The others who were eating had to make a small effort not to let his laugh show. Not so bad, Niji said as he walked away with the sandwich in hand. And you two don't want something? Tony asked the orange with legs and the depressed crow. He didn't call Sakura because when he saw how Ino was eating to her heart's content, he wanted to try it. Can I try too? Naruto asked surprised. I forgot, Naruto didn't have a good time at the academy either. I think Irika had a thing for him. Well it doesn't matter, the food was free anyway and otherwise I won't complete the mission. I am very curious to try the semla of Elbaf. I believe it was a cardamom spiced wheat bread bun that had the top cut off and then filled with a mixture of milk, almond paste and topped with whipped cream. Then the top is put on as a lid and dusted with icing sugar. I almost started salivating just thinking about it. Come on, come on, Tony said, I have some dango covered in sweet syrup, tell me what you think. As Naruto processed the invitation to lunch, Tony's gaze rested on Mr. Emo, I mean, Sasuke. I'm not hungry, he said dryly and concisely. Sasukakan, you should try Tony's cooking, it's really delicious, Eno invited. Yes yes. Sasukakan, come eat with us, Sakura added. Annoyed. Sasuke gets up to leave with a frown. Why don't you want to try? Tony asked him in surprise as he turned to the others. Don't you know that my food would make you stronger? Sasuke, I'd really advise you to try Tony's food, Shikamaru told him in a rare effort to speak when it's not strictly necessary. Because I should. Sasuke is proud, but he's not as dumb as he acts. If Shikamaru speaks for Tony, there must be a good reason. It can't be a fluke that everyone eats their food just for the taste, right? Use your eyes and you'll understand, was the only answer he got. Sasuke stood there while the others ate until he decided to get the bother out of himself. He opened his one Tomo Sharingan and watched as the flow of chakra within his companions was stimulated. What the hell? He exclaimed in surprise. Was that food or were they ninja drugs? If food can really make you stronger. He approached the group with steely determination. Give me a sandwich too. Tony gives it to him with a smile and looks forward to what is to come. The host has successfully completed the mission. Rewards are being handed out. I love these types of missions. If you were part of the class, what food would you order from Tony? It has been three years of continuous efforts and some headaches. It turned out that being the first of the promotion was not as easy as I thought. I completely forgot about Lee's mastery of taijutsu, so just beating him already resulted in a lot of hours spent exercising and sore muscles. The only reason I ended up winning without a doubt is because of the food I've been eating these years, all provided by myself. I have gained a lot of mastery over the power of the devil fruit and now the transformation into food happens at a much faster rate, as well as having a greater invigorating effect. Over the years, the system has given me more quests that have almost always rewarded me with new recipes, and I discovered something very interesting. Certain recipes have special effects when eaten and not just the effect that is already present from my transformed ingredients. The only pity is that they are all temporary. For the Jinjutsu lessons, my rival was definitely Sasuke, the strawberry-eyed ninja. Come on, you will not deny me that it really is so. He has the color and the tomo looks like seeds. The look on his face when I called him that for the first time in public is priceless, too bad I didn't have a camera with me then. Weeks passed before Piers stopped calling him that. Ninjutsu was the easiest for me, I remembered a lot of advanced control training exercises from the series and practiced them in secret. After all, I got the chakra overnight and that meant my initial hold on it was even worse than Naruto's with the Nine Tails interference. Tomorrow is graduation and I must say that the time at the academy has been very rewarding. I even found out that I have talent as a sensor ninja, which was a complete surprise, albeit a very welcome one. Now the bad news. Danzo learned about me and my peculiar ability. I won't lie, he nearly peed my pants when I ran into him turning a street corner. The idiot looked me up and down like a piece of meat and left without saying anything. He was terrified. There is only one way to prevent Danzo, the man who dares to enter the Uchiha district with a spoon for his eyes, from leading you to the dark side. 
you have to go to the third Hokage and punch him between the eyebrows that you are a good seedling for the future of the village, not an expendable tool. You have to believe that you have steeped yourself in the will of fire and that you live to die for it. I spent days in anguish thinking of a plan and luckily for me, one ended up forming in my head. Saratobi has always complained about the paperwork his position entails and the mental fatigue it causes him. So I thought of a way to fix that. And no, I'm not going to point out that with the clone technique he could do his job several times faster. My intention is to stay protected until Orochimaru takes him out of the way. So I went to his office in the afternoon, when fatigue begins to overwhelm him, and offered him a special bento. I know, I was also surprised by how easy it was to get into his office, the man only has three umbus in the office and even I could feel his location. Perhaps the benefits of being a sensor ninja. Anyway, my bento contained one of the first special effect recipes I got Sanji's pull-off one piece. Not only is it delicious, but it has the temporary effect of refreshing the spirit and the mind. I think it's obvious that I'm not going to give the old man anything that can help him get stronger. This man has to die if I want the village to prosper at some point. The more prosperous I am, the safer my clan will be, the better my future business will be, and the less I will have to worry about my personal safety. He acted like an old man touched by my concern, but if he thinks I didn't see how he discreetly put away the unopened cup of instant ramen, then he takes me for a fool. I think the only reasons he agreed to eat it are. 1. You need to appear accessible to the next generation. 2. Surely he was somehow able to verify that he was not poisoned or drugged. 3. I was sick of eating fast food. For he has heard of the fame of my dishes. 5. I don't know what it could be, but being Saratobi, surely it's another conspiracy. He ate to taste, praising the good work of the plate and when he noticed that his fatigue disappeared and he felt good again, he was stunned. I capitalized on his strong impression and told him about my dream of setting up a ninja grocery business. Hell, I think he even got into Naruto's talk no jutsu mode from when I got into the role. For a second I felt my IQ drop a few points. Saratobi was delighted with the idea and I even made a deal with him. The conditions were that I, Tony Akimichi, would provide two free Sanji pilaf bentos a day while he was in the village, to the third Hokage for life. In exchange, Saratobi gave me a document with his seal and the Hokage's signature, effective immediately, that I would never be recruited by Root and the village would never delve into my trade and culinary secrets while I made my company headquarters in the village. In all honesty, I just asked him not to be in Root. The rest was what I assume, a long-term investment for the benefit of the village. What the old man doesn't know is that the document he has given me only gives me a temporary obligation of how long exactly did the Chunin exams take. A few months. For a few months of free bento, Danzo couldn't take me to the dark side and neither he, nor the embittered advisors, nor whoever is the future Hokage, will be able to delve into the secrets of my future company. As long as I am based in the village, my business has become legally untouchable. Of course, I'm not stupid. I'm well aware that if Danzo wants something, he'll try to do it on the sly, he'll use rumors, deny his involvement and all that. I'll think about something later, my immediate objective was achieved and more than that. I made sure to make dozens of copies of the document and hide several copies in secret places just in case. Come to think of it, how are you going to split up the Genin teams? Tony wondered. My presence would cause one of us to be left out, unless they form a team of four, but it would seem strange to me. Will the teams I know change? I'm a bit curious as to who will be my captain. The graduation happened the next day and as expected, everyone received their ninja band except Naruto. He still has to go through Iruka's rescue, right? It doesn't matter, he will see it when the groups are formed. Maybe he can even ask her to teach him the shadow clone technique. Or at least he hopes so, because otherwise it means that he will have to take his place along with strawberry-eyed Sasuke, ahem. Uchiha meant in Sakura, the bipolar screamer. Seriously, Sakura went on missions with her pink hair and matching clothes, she practically screamed I'm a bullseye. How did she survive to become Tsunade's disciple? After the celebratory banquet at the Akimichi clan, Tony went to his room to claim the reward he had been dreaming of for the last few weeks. The host has successfully completed the mission. Rewards are being handed out. Tony looked at the information on the two rewards and felt his mind explode. FCK. I mean it. He reread the descriptions three times and went to wash his face with cold water to make sure he wasn't in a dream. 
My goodness, I think Rob smoked the same thing as Kojima. How did you come up with this? Thank you all for your patience. I remind you that English is not my language and any grammar problem is the fault of Goggle Translator Chan. I already clarified that the MC is male. He couldn't help but reread the information on the system panel. Chimera Ant Summon Contract Acquired Description A scroll that allows you to make a summoning pact with the clan of Chimera Ants, also known as Gourmet Ants. They have a voracious appetite and are capable of eating dozens of times their own weight in a single day. The queen of the colony possesses a reproductive ability called phagogenesis, which means reproduction through food. By eating other creatures, she can pass on some traits of the creature she devoured to the next generation of chimera ants. As long as the queen is safe and there is food, her clan will never disappear. Condition of hiring every time the summoner decides to summon and command the clan members, she must satisfy her hunger after finishing the task. Different levels of strength will require different amounts of food. Side note if you get between them and their food, you will become part of the menu. This contract isn't scary at all, Tony commented sarcastically. Feeding the summons is not an unusual condition, I remember that Orochimaru had to give human sacrifices to her purple snake every time he called her. What was her name Mandy? Me having to just give food isn't a problem thanks to my devil fruit. What has me unsure is if the contract is for the chimera ants from my previous world that were about 4 inches tall or it refers to the hunter's hunter monsters whose queen was 6 feet tall. I don't see the series tag in the name unlike the recipes, but the description basically screams that. But be that as it may, the truth is that the contract was tremendously useful to him and he was thinking of many ways to use them. Tony had developed a peculiar food-focused ninja combat style over his years at the academy and that meant wherever he went, he would leave food scraps behind. He could summon the lowest level of ants so that his task was simply to eat the remains on the battlefield, sure that would excite them. For example, he possessed a variant of the hidden mist technique called the hidden flower technique. Not only did it block the field of vision, but the flower got into the eyes, snagged on the enemy's clothes turning them into a white ghost that left traces everywhere and with a few sparks in the right place, it could even unleash an explosion of dust. Ever since Danzo revealed the cake so to speak, I started feigning interest in weird ninja techniques like the Kazakage's gold manipulation or the Akimichi clan's technical feature of converting calories into chakra. Throw in a few months of using genjutsu in public so people would see stones and sticks as food, my particular interest in cooking, my appreciation for adopting the Akimichi clan, and voila, gourmet ninja techniques. It was a real headache having to act like this for months, but now I have a viable excuse to use my devil fruit power to some extent while he disguised it as a ninja technique. And take steps to trick even a sensor ninja into spying on my chakra flow. The best part of all this? Since the techniques are something secret and of great value, not even the Hokage or Danzo with the googly eyes can demand that I hand over the scrolls of my techniques. The village had a system whereby when delivering new techniques obtained or created by different means, rewards were received. But it was all voluntary. Also, the technique scrolls don't even exist because I didn't write any, I thought it was stupid to do so since only I can use them because of the devil fruit. An additional detail. I realized that although I can make all kinds of ingredients and food, I can't make plates and cutlery. So when Choza asked me why he didn't use a storage scroll for such things, it was like lightning flashed through my mind. The storage scrolls. Seriously, sometimes I think I know so much about the show that I forget the most basic things. So on the same day, I went to look for 1010, and after promising him a certain amount of high quality and assorted cookies, he agreed to make me some small scrolls for my personal use. Yeah, I made sure they could only be opened by my chakra signature, I don't want anyone tampering with any of my stuff. And if they do, I want to know. It was an interesting project for her and an added level of security for me. Now if the summoning contract gave a TNT level surprise, then the next thing was an atomic bomb level. Host traits successfully awakened. Acquired trait gourmet sells Toriko. Acquired trait gourmet sell demon asleep. Yes, I wasn't dreaming. What could go better with a devil fruit that makes food? The answer something that gets stronger the more you eat. System, show me my status. Condition. Name gluttony, nicknamed Tony. Current World Naruto. Ability Kuku Kuku no Mi Devil Fruit no Weakness. Weapons None. 
Trades Gourmet Sells Torico Gourmet Demon Asleep Summon Contract Chimera Ants Description A boy recently graduated from the Ninja Academy with such an enthusiasm for food that his fighting style has been influenced by it. He has gone through a unique awakening and most of his body's bloodline has been activated, but there is still a dormant bit within him, the most important and the true core. He possesses the mysterious ability to transform things into food. Wow, it seems weapons like kunai and shurikens aren't prominent enough to appear on the panel. Should I try to get one of the seven swords of mist or something? Samahada would be the best option I can think of, she's a real glutton after all, she questioned. Tony then turned his attention to the features of his body. Gourmet cells, huh, Tony thought. It's like she suddenly has the abilities of a true Akimichi, but an infinitely superior version. Perhaps I should try to extract some cells and give them to the clan. He thought seriously I mean, at this point we are practically family and I think they should have a great compatibility with them. But apart from some basic knowledge of my old world, I learned almost nothing in the academy about it to be able to do something like that. He would need the help of an expert like Orochimaru or Tsunade. Although maybe someone lesser like Kabuto or Shizun could also do. The problem was the gourmet demon. What must be the demon that sleeps in my cells? Tony wondered even after thinking about it for hours. Seeing all that Rob has been adding, it could be anything. If he could find out, he would be able to see which ninja techniques would be more in tune with him. Wait, affinity. The chakra paper. Tony suddenly exclaimed I don't know what the nature of my chakra is. Why am I so clueless when it comes to these things? But I go from surprise to rationality actually, it's not that important yet. I don't have access to information about chakra nature transformation and almost all of my techniques use the power of the devil fruit. I can afford to wait a while. Wait, what would happen if he used the power of his fruit with the change of nature at the same time? Let's save those ideas for later, I have to prepare for the team meeting. I can only cross my fingers. Granted, previously I had some doubts as to whether my presence was going to cause a butterfly effect or changes beyond my control, but I think there is definitely something wrong with this world, even before my arrival. But I will not deny that I have acted as I considered most appropriate. For example, Choji always had a self-confidence problem that wasn't fixed until pretty much the end of the series. With my advice and daily interaction, he now doesn't mind being called fat and even though he doesn't go around kicking heads, he is much more focused on what he does. His doubts have been greatly reduced. Choza couldn't help but shed a tear when he found out and patted me on the shoulder so many times in thanks that I lost feeling for a few minutes. Also he may have influenced the others a bit, but let's leave that for another time. What is the reason I am almost sure there is something wrong with this world? This morning I have been assigned to my team and to my complete surprise I joined Team 8. The original team had Kurinai as their captain and the three members were Shino, Kiba, and Hinata. Yeah, I never understood why they assigned a genjutsu expert like Kurinai as captain of a team that never used genjutsu. At least I don't remember them using it even once. It was a team focused on tracking and espionage, so they should have learned even a little bit of their captain's specialty. Kiba would be a hopeless case, but the other two I think could have gotten something out of it. But I digress. The first problem I thought of is which of the three did I replace and why? Maybe Shino did a flea attack on Kiba and Akamaru and it was too effective. Well, I didn't take long to find out when I was called to training ground number 12 and saw my future teammates. Tonikun. We're here, one of them calls. It doesn't take a genius to figure out that the one he's calling me is Hinata. I couldn't get her shyness out of her since we met, she's too ingrained in her, but I got her to stop stuttering. She now she speaks clearly or she faints, there is no middle ground. I admit it's not my best work, but hey, an improvement is still an improvement. You wouldn't expect me to turn her into a lioness, would you? Tony. Cool. We won't have to worry about food during missions. Raw. Kiba and Akameru are surely the ones who are most excited about me joining the team, I've practically tamed them with food even though they try to deny it. They were part of the rambunctious part of our promotion, but since I left them without sausages for a week after they played a practical joke on me, I was never one of their targets again. And now comes the million dollar question. I haven't seen Shino in any of the teams, do any of you know why? I have no idea, but Akameru is glad he doesn't have to worry about fleas from him again. 
Wow, did they really have that matchup. Too bad I missed it. I know a bit, Hinata said. I swear that even though I was the one who made him get over his stutter, now I feel weird if he doesn't use it the Aburame clan has discovered an insect that is a very aggressive and dangerous species near the village, so they have had to take everyone in the clan to be able to handle the problem. Do you know what kind of insect it is? Tony asked. Just that it seems to be a type of bee, Hinata replies. Goodness. For a second I thought they were the chimera ants I recently hired. If so, the Aburame clan would face extinction. Although I don't like his insect techniques, I'd feel a little bad for it. Side note, Shino became friends with me. But because of a misunderstanding. Since Shino is kind of a combination of a walking anthill and a walking hive, I felt uneasy knowing how many insects were around me, so I made a habit of checking where he was often, with the idea of not letting him scare me. With his bugs. It is likely that she believed that he was being considerate of his weak presence and was slightly moved, which led to the current situation. By the time I understood what had happened, it was already too late. And do we know who our captain is? Tony asked. Come on, I knew it would be Karinai, but I have to make some small talk until I got here to eliminate some time. Two people and a dog exchanged glances and shook their heads. It seems that they also received the message with the meeting time and location just like me, but not from Karinai. How odd. Maybe my memory is failing me, but aren't we supposed to be waiting in a classroom where Naruto will burst in showing off the diadem, before being told by the Jonin that he will be in charge of us? Ah, uh, look at you. Fresh out of the academy and you already think you're a full-fledged genin. I think I will enjoy crushing your misperception in this trial. A female voice reverberated throughout the training ground and mystified almost everyone present. Tony's eyes widened when he heard that voice. Because he recognized the voice. And it wasn't from Kurinai. But of that person. Why there was that person here? Cannot be. Who could it be? It was Enko Mitarashi. What the hell? Since when is Enko in charge of a team? Or rather, how did Sarutobi allow something like that with her past with Orochimaru? No matter if she was in the series or in the fanfics, Enko could be considered an outcast among the ninja. Her past with Orochimaru earned her the displeasure of many classmates and the mistrust of the village superiors. Most of her missions were high-risk or even suicidal missions. Perhaps due to all that, Enko had a character, let's say, strong, depending on the situation. And that was the exact moment where my suspicions were aroused. Either my butterfly effect already works in ways I can't understand or this world of Naruto has deviations from what I know. Wait, does that mean Rob sent me to a flawed Naruto world? I want to make a claim. On the other hand, the fact that Anko is in charge of Team 8 is unexpectedly clever. I mean, she with her personality will be able to keep Kiba and Akameru in line and discipline for sure. Although they may take some scares until they get used to her way of being. Both deal with animals, perhaps they will find a common theme. Hinata will have to wake up and if she manages to assimilate even though she is a part of Anko's drive, her clan will no longer give her those disappointed looks. Anko also knows the human body well, so she would be a great help in improving the practice of the gentle fist. She could even stand up to some of the elders who won't stop complaining about anything. And then there's me, the man of the moment, Tony Akimichi. Knowing that she will be responsible for us, my goal would be to get her to allow me to learn about some poisons and the creation of antidotes. Not only that, I'm interested to know if she could also sign a contract with the snakes to later visit her cave and try to learn sage mode from her. If I have to choose between being a slug sage, a toad sage, and a dragon sage, the latter certainly sounds much cooler. Although I understand that it is the most dangerous method. But I also have some ideas for the snake sage to help me a little. Well little chicks, are you ready? Anko appeared on top of one of the three trunks in the middle of the field and looked at us as if we were her new toys no questions. I am Anko Mitarashi and I could become your team captain, as long as you pass my test to officially become a genin. I see that Kiba is about to reply to her and from her expression, I don't think it's kind words, so I block her mouth with one hand before she does something she'll regret and give her a warning look. Two smart and one impulsive, huh? She assessed with a crooked smile. Since you're so motivated, let's get down to business. My test is very simple, you must endure. Survive my summons for say five minutes. 
As long as you can stand at the end of time, I will accept you and if you fail, I will kick you back to the academy. He looked at the three of them and added something else as if he remembered it at the last minute. Don't worry, with me here, you don't have chances of fleeing. Give it all or you will die. It disappears with a burst of smoke and in its place appears a brown snake with black spots, the size of an ox. Ding! New quest lets barbecue snake tonight. Task you and your team must hold out for the time stipulated by Enko Mitarashi. Optional task defeat the summon before the time is up. Reward official promotion to Genin all Shokyuchiki no Soma cooking skills, experiences and techniques. Optional reward interdimensional travel ticket single use item. Note the meat of this snake is edible, very chewy, and poison free. Bon appetite. Tony spent no more than the time reading the objectives, not knowing what the rewards were going to be because from the moment the mission appeared, it meant that the countdown had begun. Hinata. Tony snapped the ninja out of her trance and brought her back to reality can you check if she has poisonous glands in her body? They should be in the jaws. Then without looking away from the snake, he continued and assumed the role of leader, Kiba, protect her from her in the meantime and watch out for any sneak attacks. Don't let him catch you. Right away. Hinata didn't question and raised her hand in a gesture. Be a Kugan. Come on Akameru. Kiba and his dog moved to Hinata's sides at the same time. Meanwhile, in the foliage of some trees beyond. Just a decent reaction among everyone, Aanko was not only waiting for time to pass, but not to get bored, she began to analyze the three both have reacted to her orders without even realizing it. I don't know if they are very familiar or if they have leader material. Ha! Huh. She has put the shy girl in the rear while she searches for information and has not left her alone, it is already a better strategy than most recent graduates. What will she do she now she? Back to combat. She doesn't have any venom glands or ducks in her fangs. Hinata informed. Then it must be a snake that focuses on strangling and biting, Tony quickly analyzed. The snake wouldn't wait for the trio to strategize against it, so after understanding its purpose, its first target was Kiba and his cub. Double piercing fawn. Kiba used his signature technique together with Akameru and collided with the snake. Causing heavy damage to the scales ha. Huh? What did you think of that? Be careful. Hinata yelled. That's just her shedding. What? Before Kiba could react, a high-speed tail hits him in the stomach and sends him into a tree. Akameru narrowly avoids being swallowed in one bite by the snake and regroups with Kiba. Why am I not surprised that he is the first to fall? Anko commented to herself the counterattack was fine, but in this case they should have attacked separately and not let their guard down after hitting. Typical rookie mistake, on the battlefield he would already be dead. What will the other two do? Hinata, would your soft fist work on her? Tony asked. I should, Hinata replied, but it's too fast, my domain isn't enough to hit her yet. If I slow it down, will you be able to do it? Hinata falls silent as she quickly calculates and dodges the snake's attacks, although she manages to avoid the heavy blows, she still has skin scraped off in places. Yes. She replies confidently. Then let's do. Tony yelled as he pressed his palms together and began to mobilize her chakra by making some gestures. He must admit that he was a little excited to be able to wear this in public at last. Oh. It seems they have a plan Enko commented as she looked at the clock they've been here for a minute and they have four more to go. Wait, those seals I have no idea what technique it will be. Perhaps it is an own invention. Let's see what it will be. Tony made the last gesture and smiled at the snake that swooped down on him with open jaws. I don't know if the name of the techniques is exact, but if not, it was made by a magician. Tony took a moment to make sure the snake couldn't dodge and used his technique at full power. Gluttony Dragon Beard. His cheeks puff out and he spits out hundreds of candy flosses as fine as silk. The snake was unprepared for such a display and he tried to break the threads by force, which he partially succeeded in, but actually only succeeded in getting more entangled in them. He underestimated the threads because they were too thin, but they are the result of using the power of the devil fruit on the chakra. Even if they are weak, they will be a nuisance. Go ahead. The technique was still in the process of being perfected and couldn't take too much of a fight. 
Hinata hesitated a bit, but luckily she didn't miss the chance her teammates had won for her. She got into position and began to pound while being careful not to accidentally tangle herself in the candy floss. The snake was getting more and more furious and despite being under Hinata's continuous blows, he focused on writhing violently to free himself from the threats. Tony underestimated the snake and broke free sooner than expected, landing a blunt blow to Hinata when he wasn't expecting it. Hinata. Tony caught her in flight and watched as she spit up some blood. We have to finish this soon. He frowned. Two members of the team had taken major hits and the only ones in decent condition were him and Akamaru. Furthermore, they only needed two more minutes to pass the test. Akamaru. Tony tossed something at him that he pulled from the storage scroll and the snake paused for a moment to assess the threat. A paper bomb? Akamaru bit into the object and it was revealed to be an ordinary looking stone. You already know what to do. Tony told him. The snake was upset with itself and he turned his attention from himself to Tony. It was because of that child that his movements were hampered and he had been outsmarted. If he didn't break some bones, he couldn't rest. Gluttony liquid gold. Seeing that he had the enemy's focus on him, Tony switched to a more aggressive tack and spat a large amount of oil onto the snake and its surroundings. The snake sneered at Tony with a look that said, Do you think this cheap trick could slow me down? You are dead. Suddenly, the snake turned around midway due to a bad premonition sent by his instinct, sharpened after many life and death battles. The furry snack that escaped earlier had jumped up and was in the air as he scraped his fingernails at the stone in his mouth, causing sparks. How could he not understand what the plan was? Those damn toads have a similar tactic. But by the time the snake was able to connect the dots, it was too late and the sparks touched the oil. The flame spread out at high speed and the oil-soaked snake began to burn and writhe in pain. Anko was speechless at the duo's performance. What she didn't know is that Tony would occasionally have barbecues at the Inazuka clan and the dogs there loved to light the fire in all sorts of cool ways. Akamaru was still a cub and had no means of competing with his elders, so Tony lent him a piece of flint to join in the fun. That's why when Akamaru saw what he picked up, she understood Tony's plan. You have less than a minute left, Enko verified. Don't you know how dangerous a beast is when cornered? Her, she laughed. Anko listened with interest, but she only watched as Akamaru pulled Kiba and Hinata away from the snake and Tony narrowed his eyes at the creature. What was he thinking? Gluttony liquid gold. Gluttony liquid gold. Tony's thinking had been reduced to unquestionable logic. If the snake didn't die with one mouthful of oil, give it two more. By the time the five minutes were up, training ground number 12 was silent but there was a certain scent in the air that caused those passing by to turn around as they wiped drool from the corners of their mouths. Where did that fragrant smell come from? Meanwhile, back to the training ground. All three four counting Akamaru members of Team 8 could be seen standing, although half of them were bruised. Congratulations! You have passed the test Enko appeared and threw some bamboo tubes with fresh water at them time has passed and you are all able to stand. We don't even have a dead. It's not fun. But I must point out that I did not expect you to end my summoning. We weren't expecting a fight against a beast, either, Tony said as he sighed as he sat down on the ground. I thought it would be something like the rattlesnake test. Anko blinked at the interruption and stared at Tony. Don't worry Tony raised his hands in surrender we'll share the snake's meat among all of us, we can eat our fill. Anko was speechless at Tony's statement. That was the creature summoned from him. Okay, I don't use their usual summons because it would be too much for them, so I use a normal snake, but come on. Don't worry Enko Sensei assured Tony after he tastes my food, he'll join my legion of evil, ahem. Admirers of my kitchen, I assure you. And where did the trust come from? The host has been officially promoted to Genin. Sending all Shokujiki no Soma cooking skills, experiences and techniques. Due to fulfilling the optional task, it has been delivered interdimensional travel ticket single-use item. Can be claimed later. Tony was about to get up to put out the fire and start working on the snake before Anko could think of an excuse to take all the meat with her, so he didn't expect the system to send him another warning at that time. Ding! The host has fulfilled a hidden achievement. Hidden achievement it's official, let's celebrate. Condition become a full-fledged ninja recognized by the village. 
hidden reward. Can be claimed later. Wait a minute. System, we have been together for years and at this point I know that there are achievements. It was as if an arrow suddenly struck his knee out of nowhere. As the host can read for himself, this is specifically a hidden achievement system. The system was instructed by Rob not to say anything until the first one is accomplished. Then show me the list of pending achievements and their rewards. Tony asked excitedly. No, then they wouldn't be hidden anymore. Rob was very clear about that. Tony clucked his tongue at the denial, but the logic was flawless to exploit. Still, it was interesting to know that such a function was there. He only hoped that there would be no achievements like walking 10 million steps, he couldn't stand achievements whose only function was to burn time for the most completists, without giving them the well-deserved spiritual consolation upon achieving them. Several minutes later, everyone had three snake skewers in each hand and Akameru was enjoying a buffet of eating whatever was left. Since the snake was fully cooked and he was a ninja dog, there was no problem in his diet. Kiba reassured Tony about it. Since you've passed and we're all more comfortable, I think we should start with the introductions Anko said as I already told you, I'm Anko Matarashi. I will be your instructor of the now teammate, I like dango, drinking and I am single. If anyone has anything to say about the latter, he can get up and start digging his own grave, she said with a Natsusinser smile. I am Kiba and this is Akameru, we are, obviously, from the Inazuka clan. We like meat and have a keen nose that will come in handy for tracking. I am good at taijutsu and I have the ninjutsus of my clan. I'm Hinata, from the main branch of the Hyuga clan she introduced herself later I like zensai rolls and cinnamon, I don't like seafood very much. I have a hobby of pressing flowers. My Byakugan will be very useful to keep an eye on the surroundings and I practice the gentle fist of the clan. I'm Tony and I was adopted by the Akimichi clan a few years ago. I really like to eat and I'm good at cooking, I don't like insects. I can guarantee that even if we get lost on an island in the middle of the sea or in the desert dunes, no one will go hungry thanks to my unique jutsu. I'm good at ninjutsu, I know how to use genjutsu, and I'm a sensor ninja. Okay, let's move on to your test evaluations, Enko declared as she took another bite of the best meat she had ever eaten. I'll start with Kiba and the furry ball. You are the worst of the three. Your timing with your dog is good, but your fighting mode reveals that you rely on each other too much. To which one of the two was knocked out, the other can only act passively and awkwardly. In this test, it is no exaggeration that Akameru has been more helpful than you. We'll fix that by practicing teamwork with everyone. She then turned to Hinata, who cringed a little at the look on her face. Your performance has been better. You carried out the orders because you well understood the importance of your role. You talk to your partner and try to collaborate to make each other's task easier. But at the moment of attacking, you hesitated. You also took a hit for letting your guard down while attacking. It was only a moment, but that moment could have cost you or one of your companions your life Anko's gaze averted and she looked up a burden on your conscience that she doubted you would like to bear she lowered her head to go back to looking at her I've seen your movements, I don't know much about the soft fist of your clan, but I can see that you have a good base to work with. Lastly, and most importantly, it's me, Tony. You stood out as the leader almost immediately and the others did not doubt your instructions, which saves us a lot of work and headache. Your techniques are weird as hell, but creative, I must give you that. It can bring a useful and unnerving wow factor. You also seem to have a lot more chakra than is usual for your age and your control over it is almost as good as Hinatis, who is a Hyuga. You are the most flexible of the three, but your weak point is too obvious. Which? Tony asked intrigued. He was pretty sure that he had achieved a good performance in all fields, satisfactory to say the least. You unconsciously avoid melee, Enko pointed out mercilessly. During the test, everyone touched the snake at one point or another, but not you. You only attacked from the safety of distance and although I can understand that your style seems to be focused on medium and long distance, it is no excuse for such a big flaw. Any enemy that manages to sneak up on you or evade your attacks will eliminate you in one move. Tony tried to open his mouth to refute, but found that he couldn't. Although his physical training was good, it was true that the only reason he managed to beat Lee was because of the motivation of the mission reward at the time. The truth was that he only met the standards that were asked of him, but personally he preferred to use chakra or his devil fruit before having to use taijutsu. 
And what do you propose? Tony asked somewhat depressed at the sudden truth. Choose a weapon and try to master it while finding a compatible style with the current one Enko told him the Kanai can save you from a tight spot, but there are better weapons for close combat. Swords, chakrams, spears, hammers, just pick one you feel relatively good with and I'll try to find you someone who can teach you how to use it. What weapons do you use? Tony asked pointedly. The rest of the team stopped their jaws and looked at Anko interested in the answer. They fought a snake, but they haven't seen what their sensei's fighting style is. I'm good with poison, genjutsu, fire techniques and snakes, Anko revealed without much mystery before the direct question. There was no point in hiding it for him, since the brats would end up finding out sooner or later. Do you use not only snakes, but also poisons? Tony tried to sound intrigued. Could you teach me about it? This time it was Anko's turn to stop chewing and she turned to look at him. Do you want to learn about poisons and make a pact with snakes? She asked surprised. It was the first time since Orochimaru left the village that someone was interested in those two topics at the same time, to hell if she wasn't shocked inside right now. And crafting antidotes and genjutsu too if possible, Tony added quickly. Why? Anko asked getting serious. I need to be prepared if someone does something to my food Tony answered with a solemn tone, full of seriousness and steely determination food is my strong point and I want it to be in all its forms, I want to get to the point where that no one would dare to do anything because they know it will be useless. The genjutsu can come in handy later on and of the summon contracts I'm aware of, snakes seem the most useful. What contracts do you know? Only the legendary Sanin. Tony looked down as if he remembered. Slugs, snakes, and toads. I don't like bugs so slugs are ruled out and between the remaining two I think snakes are better. I heard that the price for hiring them is to feed them and that will not be a problem in my case. I see Enko stared at Tony for a while in silence before taking a bite again and speaking first find yourself a weapon and then we can investigate the antidotes and the genjutsu. I want to see what you are capable of, putting too much on your plate would be counterproductive. Tony nodded but inside he was disappointed. Not because of the poison, but because of not getting the contract with the snakes on the spot, which was his main goal, as understandable as Anko's doubts are. He just needed to sign in and in the future he would at least have a chance to access sage mode. Apparently he will have to be patient. Should I have saved some meat for the clan? Tony mused as he looked at the remaining meat it doesn't matter, let's leave the rest for Anko Sensei, it's his summoning after all. It wasn't that he was lazy enough to carry the remains, not at all. The next time period for Tony was going to be a bit confusing. He knows that the next important event is the Chunin exam where Orochimaru will be able to help him eliminate Sarutobi. But he can't remember exactly how much time is left until then. Only that Naruto's team was going to go through the mission where Zabuza and Haku would appear. He considered saying something to them, but finally gave up. Naruto has the plot armor, Sakura needs to get off the pink clouds, and Sasuke loves taking a beating. That's how he got strong, right? Taking a beating. Yes, he was sure it was. Let's say it will be three months, he said to himself. Let's try to prepare well for then. The next thing he did for the next week were small-time missions within the village. Help clean, deliveries, chop wood, chase a cat. How he hated the bloody cat. That's what most genin would think, but Tony could catch him in less than a minute if he knew the area he was in. He just had to use his devil fruit to transform a piece of wood into smoked Norwegian salmon and the cat would lunge at him like it was in heat. Tony didn't understand why his team gaped at him, until he remembered the cat's infamous recognition as the Genin's nightmare. And that devil danced on Tony's palm as he directed. After several days of boring missions and miserable pay, Enko announced a few days of free time for them to rest before starting the serious training plan. Therefore, Tony returned to the Akimichi clan residence and was finally able to calmly check the rewards he got during Anko's test. It wasn't that he couldn't receive them sooner, he just wasn't in the mood for it. And now that he was comfortable, what better time was there? The host has claimed. Revealed Dragon King de Rouse's twin knives. Dragon King de Rouse's twin knives they are considered to be both weapons and cooking tools. Made from two fossilized fragments of the single fong of the Dragon King de Rouse, one of the legendary eight kings of beasts. Fun fact the Diraus was a giant beast with a length of 350 meters and a weight of 1,500,000 tons. 
Knives will never dull, food cut with them will have enhanced flavor, they can return to the host at any time with a single thought, and still bear a trace of the creature's intent. No matter what you decide to cut the host with them, be it enemies or ingredients, thanks to a powerful cleaning and disinfection ability that the system has applied. Well, that solves my dilemma with weapons, Tony commented after reading the description. Just from what it says here, it's already superior to the seven blades of mist. He took out the knives and fell in love with them at a glance. Straight but slightly curved at the tip. The grips fit perfectly in your hands and are styled to blend elegance and brutality in a subtle way. The edge is only on one side, but it has a beautiful snow finish. It is hard to believe that it belonged to such a fearsome creature. He kept them because he didn't want to be seen in the clan with the knives still and he would wait until he went to the training ground to test them. System, give me the other reward. Ding. The host has claimed interdimensional travel ticket single-use item. What kind of ticket is this? Tony wondered. I'm just getting used to this world and I'll be sent to another. Interdimensional travel ticket as long as the host breaks the ticket, he will be allowed to temporarily go to another world in search of unique ingredients, dishes, and species before returning to this one. The world visited is random and the host's form can change to suit the location. As long as the host is away, time in the original world will stop completely. Wait, so if I spend a month in that dimension, it would be like I only left for a second here? Yes, in addition, the host's age will not be affected due to the time mismatch. I see Tony thought for a while as he looked at the golden ticket in his hand, it looked very much like one he had seen in the past, with which you could access a very famous chocolate factory. Let's do it. Tony directly tore up the ticket. Since time would not be affected in Naruto's world, why wait? The host will be sent in five seconds. At the end of the countdown, Tony disappeared from the scene with the sound of a bubble bursting. What a strange feeling, he commented as he stood in what he assumed was the limbo between worlds. It's like being pressed all over by cold jelly with little shocks. He didn't know how long he was in this state, but for him it was only a few moments before he felt a tug and saw the light again. It took him a moment to reorient himself and look around him. Let's see what world I've ended up in. He tried to walk to explore, but he discovered that he was floating a few inches off the ground. He looked down at him and he was surprised to see that although he retained his appearance, it was now half transparent with a hint of liquid gold. System. What happened to me? The host has only taken the form that allows it to access that world. It is only necessary for the host to think of his identity and the information will appear in his head. Okay, I'll try. He stood still and tried to do as the system told him. A squeamish face emerged shortly after I see, I'm quite different but I could be described as a ghost. And this Plessis looked at the stone walls around him must be the ghost's castle. It took him a while to learn to move in the direction he wanted in his new form, but soon he could move and walk through walls like nothing. He even discovered that he could use his powers by transforming a stool into a pile of pancakes with syrup. This is kind of fun, but I'd better try to get more information somehow. I can't stay too long and I don't want to come back empty-handed. The corridors were adorned with statues and the patios with some fountains and plants. The place was well kept, he had to admit. But why is this place so familiar to me? Tony wondered, puzzled. It wasn't until he passed a tapestry of a man dancing ballet in front of some trolls that he noticed the abnormality. The images on the tapestry were moving. After staring at the tapestry for a minute, a name flashed into Tony's mind and he was able to connect all the dots. Barnabas the Nutty. Harry Potter. Tony exclaimed happily. I'm at Hogwarts. But the question now is when? He wondered. Before Harry came. Is he now he in school? Has he already graduated? That would explain why he didn't find anyone in the halls apart from a cat, which must be Mrs. Norris. They were all in class. Well, let's go to the Tower of Lions and find out. A few minutes later Tony located the fat lady and walked through the portrait like it was nothing. When he noticed that he entered the girl's dorm by mistake, he hurried out and searched the boy's dorm. At least I can confirm that Harry is still here, she stated after noticing his trunk at the foot of the bed. Since he's still attending school and the castle isn't wrecked, it's safe to say he should be in his early years study. I have no idea where he is right now, but I can either wait here or go to the Great Hall. 
Tony's intention was limited to seeing the famous magician in person, nothing more. Wait, maybe he thought after a moment. A few hours later. I swear Snape heard what we said about him in potions. A redhead complained, why else would he give us an eight-foot parchment homework assignment on the uses of Bezor? Shut up Ron. The girl next to her told her. Professor Snape has given everyone the same homework. If you keep saying things like that, they'll end up deducting points from us. The bespectacled boy between them just nodded his head showing support for the girl. Whatever, Ron grumbled. Let's get something to eat, I'm starving. The trio arrived at the table in the great hall and helped themselves to a heaping helping of roast turkey with apple pie and a glass of pumpkin juice. Oh. The girl suddenly yelled as she jumped out of the seat and fell on her back with her eyes wide. Hermione. Shouted the boy with glasses when he saw the fall of his friend are you okay? What happened? I have to go to the bathroom. She answered while she escaped like an exhalation from the place. What happens? Ron asked around a mouthful of food, splattering it all over the table. But the only response he got was a shrug, which he promptly mimicked and popped food back into his mouth. Meanwhile, Hermione entered an abandoned room and closed the door behind her. Good heavens! She yelled in disbelief. You're real. Little flashback. They're finally here, Tony complained. Don't you know how frustrating it is to watch all these people eat while I can't? He discovered that in his current form, he could not and did not need to eat and seeing the feast of the students, he could not help but drool with envy. Should he see if it's possible to get a house elf from the kitchens? Let's put the plan in motion. Tony approached the trio and after looking at them for a few moments to sate his curiosity, he smacked Hermione on the forehead with a snap. Oh. Before you try to say anything, Tony pointed out to the girl, let me make it clear that only you can see and hear me. If you answer me, you'll look crazy, so I suggest you find a different place for our conversation. Saying that, he stayed there floating while he looked at her with an amused expression. Hermione. Shouted the boy with glasses when he saw the fall of his friend are you okay? What happened? Perhaps only then did the girl believe what she was saying and she understood that she really couldn't speak here. I have to go to the bathroom. End of flashback. You are a Felici's pelt peral. Hermione yelled, still raising her voice. I clarify that I have completely invented the term and creature. Yes, I am that thing you said, Tony nodded with a satisfied expression, I knew a smart girl like you would recognize me and not mistake me for a painted ghost. She assured you that she is outrageous when it happens to me. Well, I read about beings like you in the Book of Untraceable Creatures, Volume 3, he answered unconsciously. Wait. Why have you chosen me? Can you still let others see you? What is the deal? What type of payment do you accept? How much time do I have? Because? Wait, wait, I tell you. Tony knew that Hermione might get a little excited at the sight of him, but he forgot that the girl was an ardent seeker of knowledge with an insatiable appetite. If I let her continue with her questions, she would never go anywhere I chose you because you seemed the most sensible to me after days of observation, I can still allow a few more people, my deal is information, payment is food and I will only be here for a few days. So, interested? Can I bring my friends? She asked, her voice growing sharper by the moment. Of course, you can also bring Minerva Tony agreed, assuming his role but. I won't make a deal if anyone else finds out about me, so I'd suggest bringing these people in discreetly and quickly. Have I been clear? Hermione quickly nods and is much relieved to know that Professor McGonagall may be present. She runs off again and after a few minutes she returns to the same place with two children snorting and an older woman trying to regain her composure. Well, Miss Granger? McGonagall asked. What is this important thing that she desperately needed to show me? Harry and Ron had the same question in their puzzled looks. Little did they know that Hermione could pull them so hard and run so fast. The girl looked nervously at Tony and he just smiled reassuringly at her before punching the teacher and Harry in the forehead. Hello. Tony yelled. By Merlin's beard. Harry jumped in fright at the sudden appearance of someone else in the room. On the other hand, Professor McGonagall stared blankly for a few seconds before reacting. A Felici's pelt peral. Ella she shouted excitedly like a little girl, shocking everyone present, Tony included. 
what are you talking about? Ron asked blankly as he stared at the empty space in front of him. Oh. Hermione remembered that Tony didn't touch Ron on his own initiative, so the Weasley couldn't see or hear him. Can you let Ron see you too? I was planning on doing it, but after remembering what he did to you, I decided to leave it out. Tony refused before acting as if he had inadvertently let something out. Don't listen to me, he hasn't done it yet, but he will. Hermione was suddenly puzzled by the answer. Hermione, what is it? Harry asked after recovering from the shock. It's a Felici's pelt peral. He replied as he forgot what he was thinking in favor of enthusiastically explaining what he knew it is a special creature even rarer to see than Thestral, unicorns, or phoenixes. It is said that the number of people who have been able to talk and even manage to make deals with them is no more than a dozen in the last two millennia. What's so special about them? Harry asked curiously. Just as the Patronus embodies the happiness of our memories, the Peral are what we could call merchants of truth, this time it was Professor McGonagall who answered, as long as you manage to make a deal with them, they can reveal truthful information that you otherwise you might never know. And they can, because they are able to move free from the shackles of time and space. And why can't I see it and you can? Ron asked, still taken aback by the situation. Those of their kind can choose who they reveal themselves to and who they don't, Hermione answered. It's their form of protection, as long as they don't want to be seen, nothing can notice, touch or hear them. Well, it doesn't seem that special. Ron's brows furrowed as he realized that the reason he was the only one who couldn't see the creature was because the creature itself didn't want to. There's one more thing they're known for, Professor McGonagall added, realizing from Ron's comment. Their moods affect their surroundings in a special way. How? Harry wanted to know. That's something that hasn't been figured out yet, because it hasn't been studied due to lack of contact with them, Hermione answered. We just know that if they're happy, good things can happen for years even after they're gone. While if they get upset, the opposite can happen. They are very spiteful at times, she then murmured softly. It is said that the lycanthropy of werewolves arose because someone tried to attack one of them. Yes, yes, we are the cane Tony interrupted after letting them talk a bit, he felt left out so, do you want to make a deal? Guys? Minerva? What do you want in return? Minerva wanted to know. Food, Tony replied. More specifically, food for witches and wizards. How does the deal work? You have to give me the food first, I won't say anything if you don't pay for it first, Tony explained. You can understand that the more variety you give me, the more points I will return to you in the form of information. Why can't we ask? Hermione wanted to know. Because there are certain things that could do us more harm than good if we knew them. Minerva replied as she turned to look at Hermione. It is always beneficial to the other party, even if it is painful or difficult to accept. Why do you want food? Harry asked suddenly and they all turned to look at him at once, intimidating the boy a bit. I mean, it doesn't look like you're going to eat them. I never said they were for me, Tony told him while he thought otherwise they are, all of them. Is there anything in particular you would like to have? Minerva asked. Chocolate frogs, jelly beans of all flavors, fire whiskey, levitating ice cream, exploding chocolates, ice cream mice, jelly slugs, peppermint toads, butterbeer, sugar feathers, lemon drops Tony mentioned absolutely everything. What he remembered that would be the basics, the more variety, the better. I only need two of each, more won't count. I think we'll go faster if we raid Honey Dukes and the Three Broomsticks, Hermione sighed. Oh, wow. I almost forgot, Tony added. And I need the recipe for Hagrid's rock cakes, not just the cake, the recipe. Okay, that last request did put them completely out of his mind. I told them I would walk around the castle and see each other again in three days. Also, I made it clear that if anyone found out what the food they were ordering was for, I would leave without a second thought. There's only one reason for it, he didn't want Dumbledore, that manipulative old man trying to do something stupid. If he does, I'll turn the sorting hat into an ice cream cone. I swear by dessert. And I never joked about dessert. As expected, the sudden increase in candy orders caught the attention of many people. Harry and Hermione had to keep a close eye on Ron to make sure he didn't let loose or eat the merchandise on the sly. Apparently, He's pretty pissed off at being rejected by such an amazing creature like me. 
but I don't care if he gets annoyed. When I found out that the boy put his sticky hands on Hermione to follow the Weasley heritage, he made an irreconcilable enemy for life. Think of all that the girl studied and strove to achieve, she could have been a scholar of her time or a great researcher. She could have become the idol of thousands of witches and the inspiration for her for decades. But then Ron came along. I mean, look at his current behavior. Just because I don't want to talk to him, he's willing to ruin others' chances without thinking too much just to make himself feel better. It is the shame of his family. Even Fred and George, despite being mischievous, prove to be enterprising. Thinking about it a bit, the Weasley family doesn't have to suffer because of that idiot. I'll do you guys a favor as a reward for having the patience to raise Ron. Anyone would deserve an award for that. Three days passed and I had fun making food appear out of nowhere in front of the students and teachers. Even teased Dumbledore by transforming his lemon drops into extra hot Tabasco drops. I think Usopp would be proud of me. Too bad I won't be here to watch. The moment of truth arrived and I could see boxes and boxes of sweets, snacks and drinks piled in a corner of the room where we met. I think the harvest will be satisfying enough. I can't believe you managed to put all this together in so few days, Tony told them. This will give you a lot of useful information. Harry and Hermione exchanged happy glances and Professor McGonagall straightened her posture a bit to show her pride. Tony snapped his fingers and they all turned into light particles that flew towards Tony's glabella and disappeared. Who wants to go first? Tony asked. Me. Hermione exclaimed. Harry was fine with her friend being hers first as without her she wouldn't have been able to participate and Minerva didn't mind waiting and being her last. As the only adult present, she had to demonstrate due patience. Okay, Tony agreed. Then I'll start now. If at any time the others can't hear what I say, don't worry. It's because it's about something more personal. They all nodded in understanding. I'll start with what puzzled you earlier, Hermione. What Ron Weasley did to you, Tony pointed out, he married you. Oh yeah. Don't put on that expression of horror, you fell for her tricks and convinced yourself that it was love. No matter how hard you study and how outstanding your grades are, you will end up a housewife. A new Mrs. Weasley. She paused briefly for the girl to digest the information. This will happen in a few years and I can see from your expression that you're not happy about all your hard work going down the drain. I'm telling you, you will grow up and you will have the ability to get someone infinitely better. As for how to avoid that future you don't want, I don't think I need to say anything more. Minerva and Harry could see the changes in Hermione's expression and couldn't hear what she was telling Tony, but they could tell it must be something dark and tragic. Now Tony's voice was heard by all in a few years, the school will go through a dark period and one of your friends will die. More specifically, I mean the Weasley brothers. George only lost an ear, but Fred was eliminated by a Death Eater blast. I'd recommend some magical protection gadget or you can think of something else. As Harry and Hermione were absorbing the information, Minerva's eyes widened at the underlying information in Tony's statement. Harry, this is of particular interest to you because it's about your parents, Tony commented. But it affects everyone else here as well, so he's sorry, but I won't keep it private. Harry nodded in understanding and paid attention to the information from his parents. I guess you haven't met Sirius Black yet. Seeing the boy's puzzled look, Tony shifted his gaze from him to someone else. Minerva will definitely meet the man. This person is locked up in Azkaban and is the one charged with the crime of having betrayed your parents and as a consequence, Voldemort eliminated them. What? Harry yelled. Well, it turns out Sirius, he didn't. He is innocent. What? This time it was Minerva who shouted. Everyone was fooled and Sirius didn't even get a trial. The real culprit is a Death Eater who is currently inside the castle. Not only that, Harry sees him almost daily. Severus? It can't be him. It's not, Tony brushed off suspicions. It's about Peter Petrigrew. And before you say anything Minerva, no, he didn't die. He cut his finger on purpose to fake his death and he is still very much alive. Where is the? Harry asked with bloodshot eyes. The culprit that Voldemort could eliminate his parents was at his fingertips. How could he keep his cool? Minerva, now only you can hear me, Tony continued, ignoring the upset boy. I am aware that Harry is impulsive and could do something stupid driven by his emotions. 
Peter is an animagus, more specifically, an animagus who takes the form of a rat. And his current identity is Scabbers, Ron Weasley's pet rat. You can verify it with the corresponding spell. Minerva's eyes widened at the revelation. A Death Eater has been living in the student dormitories and no one has known about it until now. Harry was very upset that he had been ignored and Hermione was trying to placate him. She had already told him that she couldn't ask, there was no point in insisting. I recommend that you act immediately when we finish the meeting and leave Harry in a safe place and locked up, Tony advised. If Peter sees and hears what happened to Harry without him knowing, I think you can understand what will happen. And he tries to catch him alive and take him to Dumbledore, it could be used to free innocent Sirius and Harry could be with his godfather. Now, his voice became audible to everyone again, Hermione, you should try looking in Ginny Weasley's trunk or desk. She currently has an extremely dangerous book that is slowly stealing control of her body and absorbing her life force, manipulating and killing her simultaneously and she doesn't realize it yet. Or better yet, she calls the headmaster to take care of the diary right away, because it's very dark magic. Also tell him that he will be able to find the same singularity in the Ravenclaw crown. Then Tony added. Go now. Hermione reacted and turned to run to warn the headmaster. The moment she knew it was dark magic, she immediately ruled out trying to deal with it on her own. Harry, there's one thing you're not entirely aware of, and that is that you speak Parseltongue. Parseltongue. Harry was momentarily distracted by the mention of an ability he didn't know about. Do you remember what happened with your cousin at the zoo? Yes, the conversation with the snake. That's Parseltongue, the ability to communicate with snakes. You can try to practice it in your free time. Lastly, and it just so happens that it's related to snakes. Tony turned to Minerva. The same thing will happen again fifty years ago. The Chamber of Secrets will open and the Basilisk inside will attack again. But, since you already have something to do I can take care of the Basilisk and eliminate the threat, you just have to do something for me. Do you want more food? No, I do not mean that. You've already given me so much and finishing the Basilica could leave us on even terms. What I wanted to tell you is that I'll call some helpers of mine. They are the ones who will take care of the Basilisk, but due to its peculiar appearance, it could scare the students of the school. So I'll wait for you to solve yours first and meanwhile, I'll gather them near the Forbidden Forest. The only thing you have to worry about is letting them in and clearing the first two floors of any students overnight. No one should get in your way. Have I been clear? For a single moment, Tony wanted to say that the route needed to be clear to the second floor bathroom, but that was equivalent to saying where the chamber was and who knows what stupidity Dumbledore would do then. He still had an experiment to run, and this world was ideal for his testing ground. He got a wide variety of both food and drink and when I returned to Naruto's world, he could create it using his devil fruit after eating a single specimen. During his first attempts to search for the limit of his ability in the past, he discovered that he couldn't transform everything he wanted at will, there were limits. For example, he could create chocolate frogs, but these would be ordinary chocolate figures. They would be delicious, but they would not move. And how to overcome those limits? Naturally eating. His devil fruit turned out to be able to also analyze, copy and improve any ingredient or dish he ate and he even suspected that everything he could transform to date was the foods that previous users tried. An accumulation of generations. In other words, the fruit acted as a gastronomic encyclopedia from which he took the information for his transformations. He could always add more pages. But although Tony fulfilled his purpose in this world, he did not leave he still had time left and he had some things he wanted to do. The excuse of killing the basilisk, was simply because he wanted to get the body from it. One part to test its flavor and another to see if it could be used for the crazy experiments that happen in the world of Naruto. How would Orochimaru or the snake sage react if he showed them the body of the basilisk? What would they be willing to give in return? Tony was still considering whether to remove the eyes and the poison, but he could think about it later. It also crossed his mind to try to get a thigh from Fox. I mean, phoenixes are reborn, right? Then it would be nice if he gave it a little bit before it bursts into flames, right? He could try making soup or something. Barbecuing phoenixes wouldn't be a wise move unless another complete phoenix hatched from that piece, but from what he understood of the Harry Potter universe, things didn't go like that. It was not a flaw that could be exploited. But even after spending days in the castle and entering the headmaster's office, 
Tony couldn't find the phoenix. He could only give up on the idea of him. So he moved on to the last objective pending for him revenge. System, how can I draw some blood in this form? Ding. Solution in progress. Tony watched as an image appeared before him as he stood on the edge of the forbidden forest and blinked like an owl twice to see what it was. Image provided by the system. A trickle of blood began to fall from Tony's nose and he could only give a thumbs up at the creativity of the system, for fulfilling his request in such a chivalrous manner. He wiped the blood away with his thumb and began gesturing with his hands. Summoning technique. Poof. A cloud of smoke erupted and several dozen creatures emerged from it. So they were really these kinds of ants. What Tony saw before him was similar to the first generations of chimera ants that the ant queen created in Hunter x Hunter. They had animal features and were still far from reaching a humanized form and possessing decent intelligence. They were probably the weakest type of ant in the entire nest, expendable pawns. But that's enough for me, he concluded after some thought. Even though I've become your contractor, I'm not sure I can handle high evil ants. I know the summons can backfire on me if I'm not careful, so using simple-minded ants is ideal until I get stronger. It would be terrible if I summon something at the level of royal guardians the first time. Hunger. Orders. Tony heard several voices in his head from the ants ahead of him. You may hunt as many of these beasts as you wish to eat. He sent the images of the acromantulas through his mental link. You have until I call you, then I will give you my order. The ants scattered after his instructions and entered the forbidden forest fearlessly. That was Tony's revenge. When he saw the huge creature that Hagrid had been raising in the movie, he was so startled that he couldn't calm down until two weeks later. He didn't like insects and since it was also his fault that they would end up expelling a good man like Hagrid, now that he was in this world, he would let the ravenous ants hunt down his kind. It was good to test his summon contract for the first time in another world and what better test than a battle. It didn't take long for a commotion to be heard in the forest. He lost contact with some ants that surely died, but they soon learned to deal with the acromantulas and the ants feasted on their bodies. It was a few hours before Minerva found him and told him that Peter's issue had been successfully resolved. I'll call my assistants then, Tony told him. Have both floors been evacuated? Yes, Minerva replied somewhat nervously, but Dumbledore has found out what's going on, she confessed. She knew it was best to be honest with an existence like him. Let me guess, Tony replied without changing the expression on his face. I use legilimency on Hermione. How did you know? Minerva asked in surprise. I expected him to do something like that, that old man only acts appropriately while it suits him, she replied. Has he impeded our plans? No, but he was hoping he could talk to you when it's all over. Fine, Tony agreed. How in hell was he going to do that? The moment he obtained the body of the basilisk, he would leave this world without looking back. He had already realized what he wanted, he had gotten his main loot and revenge from him. Meet the manipulator at Voldemort's height. Dream. Minerva left after warning Tony. Let's finish this once and for all, I want to go back to eat something and resume training. She called all the ants in the forest and led them to the entrance of the chamber in the bathroom on the second floor. She was careful to make sure there weren't any mischievous students in the way. After instructing them to destroy the obstacles, she ordered them to hunt down the basilisk. Inside you will find a large poisonous snake, she told them. I want you to eliminate it and give me the body. Start by attacking her eyes, but don't look her in the eye. Her gaze is deadly. After destroying her sight, attack as you like and eliminate her mercilessly. The ants were motivated because they had been able to eat enough and their task was hunting, their favorite. They rushed inside, and it didn't take long for the basilisk to notice the intruders and attack. Tony was waiting for the hunt to end, but he frowned when he noticed someone going down to the Chamber of Secrets. Dumbledore. What did you expect? Tony snorted. Your need to have everything under control is too much. As long as it doesn't bother my ants, let him do what he wants but he didn't let his guard down. He suspected that he might try to reclaim the basilisk to prove to the wizarding world that the school's mysterious monster was completely slain. He perhaps believed that he could give something in return without bothering him. He better not put his patience to the test. 
Dumbledore approached the area where the battle was taking place and discreetly observed what was happening behind one of the statues. Tony could tell from his expression that he didn't seem to like the strange creatures that were dealing with the threat of his school. This reinforced Tony's suspicions and he floated into battle. The moment the basilisk lost its life, he would store its corpse in the system and remove the summon from it. The battle ended after twenty minutes of fighting. The basilisk took out half of the ants, but ended up being knocked down with its blind eyes and many bleeding wounds along its body. Tony didn't even wait for the head to hit the ground and put the body away. After securing the loot from him, he sent the surviving ants back in a burst of smoke, but not before giving them some time to gather the remains of his mates to take back to the nest as backup food. These ants certainly know how to take advantage of everything within their reach, right? Besides, he wasn't even kidding about leaving any leftovers for Dumbledore or other wizards to experiment on. Who knows what kind of crazy things they would try to do. And speaking of the devil, Dumbledore seemed very surprised at the sudden disappearance of the basilisk and the ants moments later. He walked to where everyone disappeared and he stood still, waiting for something. I'm not talking to you, Tony sneered, and he floated away from the camera. That the man was left waiting, he is punished. He was about to return to his world, when he remembered something. He went to find Harry and Hermione to tell them that the basilisk would no longer be a problem for anyone, he said goodbye and remarked that that would be all they would know about him. If his director told them that he had left a message or something, he was lying to their face without blinking an eye. Only after clearing that up did he leave. That's right, knowing Dumbledore, it wouldn't be unusual for him to make something up as if Tony had said it to trick or manipulate children. Tony wasn't going to give him a chance on that. No way. Not at all. He rose up to have a panoramic view of the magic school and its surroundings, wanting to engrave the beautiful scenery in his memory. A few moments later, he vanished. Meanwhile, in the Chamber of Secrets. How strange, Dumbledore thought. Perhaps he is shy. Be patient Albus, let's wait a little longer. If I can get in contact and make a deal with him, maybe I can use it for my backup plans said the director, ignoring that the being he was waiting for had ignored him without thinking twice and left. I've seen the votes and will jump right into the exams. After Tony returned to Naruto's world, the first thing he did was feast on every food he got. He was happy to increase his repertoire and to have successfully experimented with summoning him. There was just something that was bothering him. Because I cannot. Tony protested in his room. Regardless of whether you are a qualified ninja or your body is more than ready for it, you are considered to be underage. You can't drink any drinks that contain alcohol as you like. Tony was upset that the system refused to let him get things like the fire whiskey that he got. He had gourmet cells. Tony didn't know if it was magic or something, but his body reacted to the unusual food and grew a little stronger. It was the first time he had such an intense and beneficial reaction. Common food never gave him this kind of reaction. But you never had a problem with me using alcohol in cooking. Him, he pointed out, believing he had found a flaw in the restrictive logic. That's because only the flavor remains in the dishes, while the alcohol content has completely evaporated due to the different cooking methods used. Can't you give me even a drop? He asked with a defeatist tone I only need that and I will be able to replicate it to sell it. No, the first thing you would try would be to transform more to drink and make fun of me. Do you think I'm that kind of person? He protested, puffing out his chest indignantly. Yes. Whatever, Tony gave up. Thinking about it a bit, he couldn't sell alcohol as a miner either. So he focused all of his energies on preparing for what he knew was coming. He completed the occasional missions with Hinata, Kiba, and Akamaru. He also shared with them some of his new candies with the idea of seeing if they also make them stronger than the usual ones. Hinata especially liked the sugar quills while the beastly duo loved the jelly slugs. He met up with Anko and showed her the twin knives he got from the system to tell her that he already had weapons he was comfortable with. After some discussion, Anko found him an ANBU ninja to teach him the basics of combat with those weapons, either dual or single. He did many more things during this time period, but one of them stood out completely. One of my main dreams since I came to this world and for which I constantly made preparations. I was finally able to open my ninja grocery store. I called her Cuckoo for various reasons. Of course, in honor of the fruit I ate, I couldn't have done this without it. 
The store's logo is a replica of the devil fruit with all its details. Plus, it's catchy, easy to memorize, and I couldn't think of anything more ideal. Heck, I even made sure to use fireworks that burst into a shower of edible confetti to get attention. I think you should try to imitate some Wonka-style creations. I got a venue near the stadium where I knew the third phase of the exam was going to take place, where many people from the village and foreign envoys will attend. I also made sure to get a sizable warehouse with everything I need to stock my business for a while if I have to go out on missions. The first day of free samples was a resounding success and brought awareness to my unique business. Currently the store has three sections. Half of it is occupied with ingredients that I have transformed and they are for both civilians and ninjas who want to cook. I have meat, fruit, vegetables and even fish. There is nothing missing. Everything is very nutritious and ideal to be healthy and strong. When I was working on it, I thought about whether it was possible for someone to use the seeds of some fruits against me, but the system made it clear to me that I didn't need to worry about that. And in the remaining half, I have on the one hand ready togo dishes for civilians. All made with my ingredients, of course. This is something that I have seen that nobody does in the village and I know that soon someone will imitate me when they see how successful it will be, but I don't care. I will be the reference and the origin for it. Finally, I also have an area where there are only special foods for ninjas. Remember the little storage scrolls I asked Ten Ten a while back? For pots, pans, cutlery and more. Well, I established a collaboration with his family. They supply me with these scrolls with my logo stamped on them and I will use them for the ninja groceries. Their function is the same as any parchment of the same type, the difference being that they are more comfortable to wear, less expensive to produce, can only be used up to twice before burning, and preserve food better. What? He wasn't going to sell storage scrolls so convenient they were permanent. It's good for my business and we make sure that when they are destroyed, they don't affect the environment or cause a fire. Ecological awareness. That's why I said that they are ninja groceries, even if a civilian tries to buy a scroll, he won't be able to open it. The truth is that this section is more like a library of jutsus, but each shelf has a label indicating the contents of the scroll. What dish is inside, if it has cutlery or chopsticks, if it has any allergens, if it is suitable for vegetarians or vegans, its expiration date, etc. I really put in a lot of effort. And no, I'm not going to limit my ninja groceries if ninjas come from other villages. The most I'm going to do about it is give the leaf ninjas a little discount so they'll look good on me. I've already hired some people from the Akimichi clan to help me restock, order, and handle sales. And it was only a few days later, when Enko called all of us. The time had come. So after seeing your performance during the last missions and the progress in your training, I decided to give you the opportunity to participate in the next Chunin exam Enko said while her gaze went over the three genin present. Needless to say Kiba was excited, Hinata decided to give it a try to be more determined and Tony thought to try and remember anything useful from the exam. The first part consisted of an exam where they have to overcome a small genjutsu and some fake bullies and then pass by simply sitting around doing nothing. Then it was time for the forest of death to get a pair of heaven and earth scrolls that shouldn't be opened until you're in the center tower. As too many people will arrive and there will be some rounds of combat to select the participants for the tournament a month later. And after a few fights, that's when Orochimaru carries out the attack on him. Those are the key points, although there are some things in between that he could try to do. I'm going to make this clear Enko interrupted Tony's thoughts I'm fine if you decide not to take the exam this time, after all, there is a risk of death. But I don't think you will because neither of you is a coward. If you sign up, you must beat the rest. It would look bad if not one of my genin team made it to Chunin. So would you give us a reward if we managed to become a Chunin? Kiba asked. Devil, he beat me to it. Tony thought. Anko rolled her eyes at the question. The fact of becoming a Chunin should be enough of a reward, but since you are so interested, let's make it more interesting Anko used a smile that gave everyone present the goosebumps except Tony, who was expecting something like that if any of you become a Chunin, I'll do a favor, anything as long as it's not against the village or my personal boundaries. Hell, I'll even treat you all to a barbecue to celebrate. Now is when a big but comes, right? But, if you fail to become a Chunin, you will have to spend the next three months doing triple my usual training regimen, not only that, you will have to double the number of missions during this time. 
Yes, that is certainly very Anko. After filling out the forms and giving them to Anko, everyone was going to leave to go do their things, but apparently there were other plans for Tony. Tony, stay. I have to talk to you about something else Anko ordered. Hinata and Kiba gave her a pitying look and hurried away. Traitors. What's wrong, Anko Sensei? There are a couple of things we need to talk about, she answered as she looked into his eyes. First of all, the third Hokage wants to know if he could order some dishes from you for the final exams when they happen. Not only envoys from other villages will arrive, but also merchants, important customers and more, so you want to impress them with your food. Sure, I just need to know how many people to cook for, agreed Tony. I'll even give you a discount, but I want my business to be advertised during the first break in the competition. No kidding was he going to miss out on the opportunity to introduce his food to other places. Well, I'll pass on your words later, Enko nodded. I also want to tell you that if you manage to become a Chunin, I'll accept that you make a contract with the snakes. This is a separate reward, you can still ask me for a favor like the rest of your team. Really? Tony exclaimed in surprise. Yes. There have been some rumors that you are a glutton who is not worth a ninja and with your talent, you should retire to be a successful chef. But I have witnessed your efforts. Sure, your techniques are a little weird, but the ANBU instructor I introduced you to has explained your determination and progress to me in detail. There are probably only two or three people who try as hard or harder than you in your generation. So he uses this test to shut these idiots up. Rumors? Tony's expression darkened when he heard that. Regardless of how insulted he feels at the moment, he also can't accept that being gluttonous is considered to be the same as not being a good ninja. He had been adopted by the Akimichi clan. Where does that leave his clan in the eyes of others? As he tried to calm down, he heard a sound in his head. Ding! New quest and who decided it? Task passed the Chunin exam flawlessly and overwhelmingly, without losing a single time, and give a figurative slap to those who dare to spread rumors about you and defend the honor of your new family. Mercy is not an option. Optional task find out who is behind these slanders. Reward official promotion to Chunin all Yakutate. Japan skills, experiences, and techniques. Optional reward. Chakra reserves will be doubled Nuka Cola Quantum Recipe. Note the system is furious and has increased the rewards. Sensei, may I know where you heard those rumors? Tony asked. Before Anko told him, he had no knowledge of it and it was very strange. Just leave them, people always say stupid things and there's no better way to shut them up than with actions, Anko advised him as he shook his head inwardly, imagining how angry the genin was at that moment. He had come to have a rough understanding of the abilities and personalities of his team members and Tony was the most straightforward yet complex. Her interest in food was evident, but what impressed her was not only the creativity of her jutsu, but the fact that she actually managed to create them. He was not as simple as he seems and when she investigated how complex they could be, she was impressed. In a way, she reminded him of Orochimaru. But in all the time they had been in contact, she noticed something special. Tony always had a calm demeanor, cheerful even, and the most negative thing she had ever seen was when he was bored or irritated. She never saw him angry. Perhaps Tony wasn't aware of it, but he released a trace of bloodlust for a few moments when he heard about the rumors. Something she had deliberately told him. The rumors existed, he didn't make them up or anything like that. But she was very curious to see how the genin would act when he gave 200% effort. She could see that even when she was facing the snake in her trial, she held back a bit. Now the question was had a monster just woken up? Time will tell. We reached 100 stones, but a little late. So instead of two chapters, I can only give you a chapter twice as long as a consolation. Even Hinata and Kiba noticed him for the next few days, but Anko stopped them when they tried to go cheer him up. Tony needed time to digest that and react. The day of the exam arrived and the team gathered to enter the assigned place. Tony got to see the scene where the Jonin dressed up as thugs and dealt with the rest, but not being in a good mood, he stuck them straight to the ceiling with a giant piece of gum and went into the correct exam room. Such a basic genjutsu did not fool him in the least. He even ignored almost all of Kabuto's performance, his ninja cards and his altercation with the sound ninjas. He just threw more gum when Kabuto was about to give the information about him. He was pissed off, but he wasn't stupid. 
Niji, Li, Sasuke, and the others looked at him strangely, because just like Anko, they had never seen him like this, but they didn't comment on it. Choji was the only one who understood what was happening because he and his father noticed Tony's mood and talked to him about it. Needless to say, they weren't happy with those rumors either and looked into it, but it all led to dead ends. Hinata sat up and tried to take several deep breaths to calm herself down. Kiba and Akameru were playing while waiting for the exam to start and Tony just took out some cookies and started eating them right there, which earned him a visit from Choji, who didn't hesitate for a moment to give him a couple of his ninja grocery scrolls. Again, he was angry, but he wasn't about to take his frustration out on his clan and friends. Ibiki Marino appeared and explained the rules of the exam, the papers were handed out and everyone began to act. Tony read the questions out of sheer curiosity, since he didn't remember his content and after finishing, he stood waiting with his arms crossed while his gaze was lost beyond the horizon. Ibiki was looking around him and gave a mental nod as he watched the performance of some of his genin. He pointed out the most clueless and soon noticed Tony's attitude. Isn't that boy part of Enko's team? He, he thought as he looked at him, he hasn't blanked out, it's more like he doesn't care about the test at all. Did Enko leak the content? Ibiki shook his head when he thought about it. Enko was only aware of the last test and it was only this morning that she was called to take charge of presenting the second test. He couldn't say anything, even if he wanted to and with his knowledge of her, he wouldn't have. Did she realize what was happening? The thought was certainly absurd, but it took root in Ibiki's mind. When it came time for the last question, she put on her act to intimidate and discreetly paid extra attention to Tony. He nearly spit out a bit of blood when he saw that instead of being horrified by his marks, he was looking at them with curious eyes. I think Enko has spoiled this child. And speaking of the devil, he came in smashing the window and throwing the kanai to hang a banner. When Ibiki heard how he was being criticized for letting so many genin through, he resisted his urge to point at Tony and raise an eyebrow. As everyone left and he started to collect the papers, he noticed that there were only two of them blank. No, it would be more accurate to say that one was blank, while the other had a message on it addressed to Ibiki. Senior Ibiki, I have noticed that you were watching me during the exam and let me clarify that yes, I am the amazing owner of the cooker store. As an apology for my sensei's awkward entrance, I've left a couple of my ninja grocery scrolls on your seat for you to try. I hope you like them and recommend them to your colleagues if so. If you want more, you know where you can buy them. He looked up from the paper and saw that sure enough, there were two small storage scrolls with the Cuckoo Store logo on them where Tony sat. Ibiki was even more confused now. He didn't know if Enko had spoiled the child or if the child was acting like someone responsible while he takes care of her sensei. Wait, Cuckoo Store. Ninja Groceries. Ibiki finally remembered where he had heard something about it if I remember correctly, the third Hokage always eats bentos from that place with smiles and food for important visitors has also been ordered there he picked up the two scrolls and put them in the pocket the food shouldn't be bad then, I'll give the kid a chance. Meanwhile, the genin who had managed to pass the written exam followed Anko to the forest of death as in the original story and signed the consents in case of death. Tony's team gathered after obtaining the scroll from him which was a heaven and waited at the gates for the next part of the exam to begin. What's the plan? Kiba asked as Hinata looked at Tony as well. By now, it was a fact that he was the leader of the team. Do you know that I have also written books and published them? Check out my profile if you're curious. At the moment, I have five books, including a trilogy, and right now I am on the sixth. Did you do what I asked you to do? Tony asked. Yes, Akameru and I have memorized the scent of all the other teams. Hinata. Him. He turned to see the girl nod. I also followed your instructions, she assured, every time someone went out after receiving the scroll from her, I secretly activated my Byakugan and checked which one they had in her possession. I know which teams have the scroll we need. Do any of the nearby teams have the scroll we need? Yeah, the next one heading south. Tell Kiba which team it is and we'll track it down, Tony instructed. The plan is simple. We're going to go after that gear and get the scroll to get a full set early. I'm pretty sure since the test will take five days, they don't expect to find anyone that early and will be able to catch them off guard. I want you to give 100% to keep it short and we can recover without accidents. After dealing with them and securing the scroll, we will head towards the tower. Should we try to fight more to gain experience against the other teams? 
Kiba asked. If we meet an enemy on our way, I have no objection to it, but it is better not to turn aside. If we can get to the tower early, we might have time to get in top shape for whatever comes next, Tony replied. With our speed, it should take no more than two days, three if we run into any problems. The team nodded and everyone entered as the doors opened simultaneously on the compound. Tony considered whether to warn Anko about Orochimaru, but remembering that she only got hurt a little and that this could cause variables for the third Hokage's death, he refrained. Not to mention the dubious knowledge of her. How would you explain how you know that information? They are not stupid enough to believe that Tony eavesdropped on Orochimaru. The San Nin would have found out and silenced him if so. He wasn't going to help the team of Naruto and company either, they have two characters in plot armor. Oh, and then there's Sakura. Thanks to the wind Kiba and Akamaru soon picked up the trail of the target as they approached in their direction, only when they were half a kilometer away did they begin to advance more cautiously. I didn't expect it to be this team, Tony thought surprised by what he saw. The team in front of him was from the grass village, more specifically, the team where one of its members is Karen. Which would later be abandoned by his team and would end up being almost a bear's dinner. Or something like that, Tony couldn't remember the exact reason. Sasuke is about to lose a fan, but he deserves it. His philosophy of reaching a woman's heart through her heart, literally, is weird to say the least. The team exchanged signals and Tony told them not to attack the red-haired girl, he would take care of her. The match was who am I kidding, there was no match at all. Just as Tony expected, the team didn't have their guards up in the slightest and they were giving Karen a dirty look. In less than 10 seconds, two of the team were unconscious on the ground and Tony caught Karen, who was the only one who could almost react and fight back. Almost. The scroll or the life, Tony wanted to joke, but stopped when he got a closer look at Karen. Karen's condition even when they had just entered the forest recently was already bad, it was clear that the so-called companions of hers had beaten her up and let's not talk about the bite marks on her. Tony believed that the poor condition he saw in the series was due to exhaustion after a few days of skirmishes, but it turned out that the reality was crueler. Hinata, take her scroll out of the bag, Tony said. Hinata walked over and checked the immobilized Kunoichi's bag. I have it. Kiba said as he showed the scroll in his hand. Well that makes sense. Knowing how Karen was treated, she would only be given her scroll if it was an emergency or something. What do we do with her? Kiba wanted to know. Should we knock her out too? Tony looked at the trembling and scared Karen and decided. No, she will come with us. That? That was an answer that none of those present expected, be it the team or Karen. Tony directed his gaze towards the Kunoichi and spoke seriously. I'm going to ask you some questions and you will answer yes or no, understand? Karen nodded after hesitating for a few moments. You're an Uzumaki, correct? Yais. Karen's eyes darkened when she thought she understood what was going to happen. They don't treat you well in your village and just use you as a convenient medicine chest, right? Karen looked up scared. Answer, Tony pressed. Yes. Karen's voice was low. Hinata and Kiba exchanged glances, they had a premonition of what Tony's intention was. Do you want to get out of there? Tony asked, looking into her eyes. Would you like to live in this village, without anyone using you for your ability and you don't need to be afraid? What? She the Kunoichi couldn't believe her ears. I'm not going to repeat myself, answer my question. Karen was going to reply, but when she noticed the two unconscious ninjas on the ground and she remembered her presence, she shook her head. I can't, she told him with her head looking at the ground. That's not one of the two options I gave you, Tony answered. Look me in the eye and say what you want, not what you think you should say. Karen held her gaze for several seconds and answered as tears fell from her eyes with a broken voice. Yes. Fine, Tony nodded. Stay back for a moment, guys, she said as she walked towards the two unconscious ninjas. Gluttony sweet dreams. Everyone could see how Tony released streams of honey that entered the unconscious ninjas through their mouths and noses. After a few moments, the two ninjas seemed to notice that something was wrong and woke up with their hands around their necks as their faces turned blue. It didn't take long for them to stop moving. Why did you do that? Kiba asked. He didn't say it in an accusatory tone, just curious as to why he permanently eliminated the enemy. 
If either of them manages to report that the redhead defected to the village, it would be troublesome, Tony replied as he extracted the thick honey he had used to coat the lungs of the bodies and tossed it away. There was no need to leave such, well, obvious evidence. What's your name girl? Your name I mean she had almost blurted out the Kunoichi's name unintentionally and that would have aroused suspicion in the girl, so it was best to make her expose it herself before she made an inadvertent slip. I'm Karen, she replied as she looked away embarrassed and her cheeks reddened slightly. The following conversation was very interesting. Hinata was outraged when she found out the whole story from Karen's lips. Kiba was impressed with Tony for his ability to defect a genin within two minutes of meeting. Tony was delighted and a bit embarrassed, because he actually completely forgot about the Uzumaki until he saw her. There were too many characters and events to remember it all, right? And why was he delighted? A few minor things aside, he had to admit that Karen was a great addition. Not only was she an extraordinary sensor ninja and clansman talented in Fuenjutsu, but she had a talent for administration and could become very loyal to those she truly cares about. After what she went through, he just needed someone to treat her like a human and truly take care of her. Her idea was simple, she would arrive early at the central tower before the others with her, then she would request an emergency meeting with the third Hokage through Anko or an ANBU and explain her situation to him as well as her desire to adopt her. Yes, he wouldn't ask the Akimichi clan to adopt her, he wants to register her as her own relative. More specifically, as her little sister. She wanted someone who was not blindly loyal to the village or a clan, but to him. She may sound sinister, but in reality she was just looking for someone she could trust. Someone she could entrust her life to in moments and could keep secrets. And Karen is looking for the exact same thing, someone to trust in this cruel world. So she doesn't see anything wrong with them becoming brothers. He gains a little sister to care for and adore, while she gains a trustworthy older brother. Everyone happy. The wife's choice. No, Tony didn't have anything like that in mind. He wasn't interested in romance at the time and he remembered what the future version of Karen's personality was like, it just didn't fit him. Of course, maybe her personality will change to a different one from now on, but that is something to be seen in the future. It will let things flow naturally in that sense. Maybe I ended up feeling a kinship with Karen or maybe I managed to connect with a completely different girl. What's more, he may not even be from the same village. Why worry about those things now? Let's focus on gaining strength, eating and prospering the business. Come on then, now that this situation has happened, I want to reach the tower before any other team. We will move as fast as we can and we have what we need to get through this round. They all nodded and moved on. Kiba was in the lead, while Tony and Karen were in the middle and Hinata brought up the rear. To avoid attracting attention with their speed, they made sure to go for the highest branches and by the time it got dark, they managed to cover almost half of the way. They found a place to spend the night and were preparing to eat something to regain their energy. Karen waited without understanding what was happening. Nobody was trying to start a fire, collect water or anything like that. Were they going to rely on soldier pills like her? Or did they forget to bring supplies? Well, what do you want to eat? Tony asked. Two big portions of beef and vegetable gyozas. We'll have some tea to go with it, Kiba said and right after that Akameru barked once in agreement. I'd like spring rolls with sweet and sour sauce and a lemonade, please, Hinata requested without thinking too much. I'm in the mood for something more Italian inclined, Tony muttered. I guess I'll go for a pizza and a cola. What do you want Karen? I she didn't know what to answer, she couldn't even understand why they asked for something so extravagant in such a place as if it were the most normal thing in the world. Since you're an Uzumaki, maybe some ramen is okay with you. After Tony saw how Karen nodded with a lost look, he began to work. He took the plates out of a small storage scroll and distributed them to everyone. Then she took some mud from the ground and began to transform it into the food and drink that everyone wanted. Five minutes later, everyone was eating to their heart's content. Well, everyone except Karen who was even more stunned at the absurdity of the situation. She subconsciously thought that she might have fallen into a genjutsu, so she made the sign to get out of the illusion, but everything was the same. The aroma of her ramen tickled his nose and the warmth she felt in her bowl were so real. One taste won't do anything for you, right? The others smiled as they watched her start to eat and fell silent as her redhead shed tears as the taste and warmth filled her. 
she couldn't remember when was the last time she ate something this good. No, perhaps it would be more correct to say that she never tried anything like that. Not since her mother left her alone in this world. Thanks, she said to Tony when she finished the ramen and wiped her tears with her wrists. You wanna repeat? Ella. She smiled back at him. Please, Karen said with a slightly flushed face. She couldn't help it, it was too delicious. That caused some genuine laughter and her mood improved a lot. Karen opened up a bit more to everyone and the team took turns keeping watch. They were all trackers or sensors, so they were able to rotate without problem until the next morning when they were back on the road. As they made their way between jumping from branch to branch, a notification sounded. Ding! The host has fulfilled a hidden achievement. Hidden achievement tears of hope. Condition you have become the light of someone who only knew the darkness of this world. Hidden reward puni jelly recipe atelier saga ability to turn tomatoes into magma yuki's law. Interesting, Tony thought. I didn't expect to get Marco Maldini's ability, this will come in handy. Just imagine, an enemy ninja sees a tomato being thrown at him and thinks it's just a distraction from the real attack. By the time the tomato bursts into magma, it will be too late. Sure, you can launch pretty damaging attacks using food like oil and flour, but magma will be a nice offensive addition. Kia. Tony snaps out of his thoughts after hearing the scream and turns his head to see that Hinata has been tied down by some wires. He stops and throws the two knives at her to cut them free. What happened? He asked as he looked around her and picked her up. Kiba. Karen. I don't smell anything. Kiba replied. They're down behind that tree trunk, Karen pointed out, trying to help. TCH. They reacted too fast, I couldn't take care of her a ninja with purple lines on his face and a bandaged object comes out from behind the tree. Tony muttered when he recognized Kankuro. He was one of the teams that he wanted to avoid the most in the forest, because of his involvement in the main plot and because of the crazy unstable sand. I'm more interested in knowing why there are four people and not three, a blonde Kunoichi jumped, the redhead with a mask doesn't seem to be a puppet. I think it's common sense to think about the possibility of running into other teams, it was unrealistic to believe that my plan would happen to the letter. So using my power, I made a cookie dough mask for Karen in the shape of a squirrel face. Childish? Perhaps, but I can tell, it was inspired by the local fauna. Guys, there should be a guy with dark circles nearby, be careful and don't get caught in the sand, Tony warned as he gestured to them. It doesn't matter if you know I'm here, your blood will help quench mother's thirst. Gara made his appearance and acted as sinister as he expected. Gluttony hidden flower art. Tony blew out a large amount of white powder that clouded the air in the area. Cheap tricks, Tamari scoffed as he used his large fan to remove the surrounding flower. What he didn't expect was that when the area was clear, no one would be present. They escaped. Tamari frowned in annoyance at the thought of missing out on a scroll. You shouldn't have gone too far, come on. The arena team tried to move, all to result in eating the dirt at their feet. What the hell? Kankuro looked down and saw that he had gum on his feet, just like the rest damn child. When did he do this? She moaned as he tried to free himself. Meanwhile, not far from there. Tony could hear Gara yelling in anger and throwing a tantrum, which was followed by falling trees and some commotion. His mission made it clear to her that he couldn't be defeated, but since he didn't fight them and was able to retreat easily, it wasn't considered a failure. In fact, avoiding an unnecessary fight would be more accurate to say is a smart thought. Kankuro is a nuisance due to the poisonous needles his puppet must have, Tamari could be too much trouble for him to deal with right now and then there's Gara who loves to squeeze things with his magic sand and automated defense. The gesture he made to the team was one that they had previously agreed upon, the meaning of which was that he was going to use a diversionary technique and they were all to leave without delay. Kiba and Hinata went along with the plan and Tony led Karen out into the middle of the flower. Was it really necessary to withdraw? Kiba asked somewhat annoyed. He believed they could have beaten them with some effort. I've been keeping an eye on the opponents and found out a few things, he replied as they continued on their way, only this time it was Tony who was in the rear. The boy with makeup on his face is a puppeteer who uses puppets and poisons, being the last thing. The most annoying. I don't want any of us to end up poisoned with something that can leave us weak or defenseless in this place. 
The blonde girl uses some aggressive wind jutsus with that giant fan on her back for ranged attacks and uses it as a heavy staff in close combat, which would make her an annoying opponent, but the worst is the boy with dark circles. What's so special about it? The only strange thing about him was the pumpkin behind him. Let's just say he's a walking chakra battery I didn't want to explain to them what a jinchuriki was in case the word slipped during the month of preparations for the last round he has much more than all of us combined and he has problems in the head. He will not hesitate to trap us in his arena and blow us up, he has very violent and murderous impulses. I even heard him threaten his two brothers to shut up or he would eliminate them on one occasion. Really? Hinata was shocked that there was someone so violent as to threaten to eliminate her own family like it was nothing. I'll tell you more details when we get to the tower, in case we have to face them later, Tony told them. They all nodded and continued on their way. After the scare they got, Hinata activated the Byakugan every half hour to check that they weren't being followed or when they heard something out of place and the team kept their guard up. A few hours later, they could see the tower. What do we do now? Karen asked, who was silent for the entire trip since they escaped. They were only a few meters from the tower, but they needed to get out of the cover of the trees and through a clear area before entering it. Kiba, do you and Akamaru smell someone nearby? Tony asked. There are some odors, but they are faint, he answered after a short time. They are old traces or they are well hidden. Hinata. I'm sorry, my eyes are too tired, she replied in a tired voice. I understand, Tony agreed. Tony reached out to the tree closest to him and put his hand on the bark, digging his fingers in and transforming the wood with his power as he drew out a dark substance. The substance molded and four exact replicas of those present appeared, plus a smaller one of Akamaru. Then the colors changed and they were tremendously realistic. You know what to do, Tony told them. The clones nodded and ran to the door, entering it with no problem. Come on, Tony smiled, looks like we're not only first, but I think we even broke the record. They all entered the tower and could see how the Belgian chocolate clones waited inside in silence. This was one of Tony's latest creations, inspired by HP's chocolate frogs. Hmm, I see, Tony said after reading the words written on the wall, so we need to open the two scrolls and make them overlap now. A puff of smoke appeared and Guy appeared. Congratulations youth, thanks to your efforts and youth you have passed the Guy blinked and rubbed his eyes why are there four of you? Mr. Guy, so we've officially passed the test. I need your confirmation before answering your question. Of course, you have even set a new record. That shows your youth. He, he exclaimed as he gave a thumbs up and used a dazzling laugh at the team. In that case, would you be so kind as to notify the third Hokage that I have something important to discuss with him? It's quite urgent, I need to know if we can see it before the other teams arrive. A life depends on it. Tony told him with a very serious expression. Okay, Guy put aside his usual behavior and nodded, I don't think it's a problem, it's on the top floor. Wait in the rest area next to it and we will inform you. We walked into the rest area and Karen was about to take her mask off, but I stopped her. Wait until we finish, just to be sure. He didn't know if the cameras in the place showed the images to the representatives of other teams and he didn't want them to know that it was Karen who was with them. Sure, maybe her hair and clothes may be obvious, but as long as you don't see her face, you can deny everything and argue that it was just a transformation technique or a clone to confuse the enemy. Fortunately, Sarutobi was freer than he thought and agreed to see us in private. Well, as private as it gets with him, three umbus, me, and Karen. What's the emergency about, young Tony? He asked as he puffed on his pipe. Hell, and we're in a place with no windows. I hate tobacco. Frankly, those who smoke seem retarded to me. What's the point of spending money to poison yourself and passively poison everyone around you? There are literally thousands of ways to deal with stress and relax that are healthier and better. But they choose the gray zone where one step further would be considered drug abuse. He had to be patient. Third Hokage, the thing is like this I explained in detail the mistreatment of Karen in her village, the elimination of her companions, my idea of adopting her and everything I considered necessary. An Uzumaki. Sarutobi blinked a little in surprise at the revelation. Since our village had such good relations with them, I think it shouldn't be a problem I made sure to highlight the word AURS to try to play with the will of Firecard I already talked to her and she agrees to leave that hell. I see, 
Saratobi nodded. Just as Tony expected, by mentioning the village in this way, he gained a favorable impression of the manipulative Hokage. He turned her gaze to look at Karen without her mask. But I want to confirm it with her. Are you sure you want this? He, he asked solemnly, could try to adopt you into a clan or find you a civilian family who is willing to do so. She assured you that you will be received with open arms. I don't want to be separated from Tony, Karen responded nervously as she grabbed the corner of Tony's shirt to try to feel more secure. He already told her privately about the possibility that Saratobi will try to change her mind and they agreed how she would react accordingly. Hinata and Kiba didn't know anything about it. If you're determined, I won't say anything more. We will honor the friendship of the Uzumaki clan and I promise you that you will not go through anything similar in the village Saratobi nodded and promised. Tony resisted the urge to roll his eyes. Saratobi should be inwardly jumping for joy that he has managed to get another Uzumaki to join the village. He was sure that he would keep Danzo at bay so he wouldn't have any thoughts about it, at least for a few days until his death. I'll have to think of something to prevent her from making her move on her during the chaos after Saratobi's death, Tony thought seriously. Maybe he should try to join me in the search for Tsunade. I mean, if he taught Sakura, why not Karen? In that case third Hokage, could you start the papers now? Sure, I'll take care of it personally and they'll be for the following week. Until then, Karen needs to remain unnoticed, he warned. Hell, of course you'll hurry up with the papers, old man. Surely if a word was enough, she would have done it on the spot officially. Thank you Tony thanked with a bow to improve the act of sincerity I have some chocolates, I hope the third Hokage doesn't mind my show of sincerity. Ha ha ha. Looks like Karen is in good hands, Saratobi said with a laugh, appreciating that Tony has already started tying Karen to the village. Heh, if only he knew the truth. Happy Halloween everyone. By the way, you just got cursed. To free yourself, share the fanfic with your friends or leave a picture of your favorite Naruto character. I can hardly believe that the third Hokage agreed to the adoption arrangement so easily. I spoke with Karen before meeting him and we raised various situations from best to worst and in the end it turned out to be an unnecessary discussion. Although at least I warned her of the danger that Root posed and she knows that she must be vigilant and avoid dark alleys. Since there were still a few people from the grass village left in the exam, Karen had to wait until we got out of the forest to be safe. Well, as safe as you can be in a village with a danzo. So to avoid trouble, she used the transformation technique and assumed the appearance of a male ninja from the leaf village. Using my advice, she assumed such an ordinary appearance that no one paid any attention to her. The perfect filler ninja. We had to wait for the rest of the teams to arrive at the tower, which gave us a chance to recover to our best and explain to Kiba and Hinata everything I knew about the rivals they might encounter. From there, the rest happened little by little as it should. Gara's fight with Lee. Tamari vs. Ten Ten. Kiba vs. Naruto, with an embarrassing loss for Kiba. Not necessarily in that order, but I think anyone who has seen the series understands what I mean. I was thinking who I would face and was very relieved when I dodged the bullet that was Gara. I could beat the rest, but not him if I want him to freak out in the finals. And that's when things went wrong. Next opponents. Tony vs. Niji. Yes, I couldn't believe it. I was drawn against the Lord of Fate, which means that unless he loses, Naruto won't face him and he won't start getting recognized. He was debating whether to fake it and narrowly lose, to do it for the greater good and the fate of the world, until I saw Niji's smug look. Do you know what? Damn, I don't care about him. It's clear that Niji needs to have his destiny slapped out. Who am I to prevent him from opening his eyes and understanding that destiny is not written? And if his eyes have to end up purple and puffy, I will. In the name of friendship. Naruto has the plot armor, as he demonstrated in the fight against Kiba. I'm sure they'll find a replacement for his moving story, I'm not going to lose or fail the mission. I went up to the arena and got into my position. Niji started talking about how my defeat was an undeniable fact and how he likes to wear a pink tutu while he's at the beach. Or so I think, the truth is that I disconnected. He was sure that if he paid attention to his talk, Niji would not end well. Begin. Declared the judge. I think he should have that cough looked at. I won't be long. Niji stated confidently. 
I stared at him for a second as he assumed his stance and waited for him to pull me closer. A mistake you would regret. Gluttony egg machine gun. Tony stomped his foot hard and dozens of eggs started shooting out of the ground at Niji. As he expected, he tried to avoid the attack using this technique of spinning around at high speed. It wasn't the smartest choice. Where is your honor as a ninja? He protested as the whipped yolk and white mixture splashed down on him, drenching him from head to toe. It was laughable when he tried to run towards me and slipped on the egg on the floor. If he will use a fire technique then he would have Niji's omelet. Feel the arrogance, feel the destiny. Gluttony liquid gold. What followed was a humiliating few minutes of Niji trying to get to his feet in a mixture of egg and premium olive oil. Should he try using the hidden flower technique? Niji's cake. That's enough, the judge declared when he saw that Niji was unable to continue and urgently needed a shower, Tony Akimichi is the winner of this match. Three of them had to take Niji away as he screamed with a flushed face. Now the question was why is everyone looking at me that way? Why are the other teams sweating like this? He could even see Tamari with a pale face and bewilderment in Sakura's eyes. Wait, the latter is normal. I mean, I defeated my opponent with minimal effort and being a fellow villager, I didn't hurt him, break any bones, and didn't even bruise his skin. It just needed a rinse and a lot of soap. It was the perfect victory. The fighting continued and soon the third Hokage spoke again. All of you present have shown great potential beyond what would be expected from a genin and you are one test away from being able to become a chunin. But I also know that you are exhausted and you need to regain your strength and conditions, so the finals will take place in a month he passed his gaze over all the finalists take advantage of this time to think of countermeasures for your possible opponents and do your best of you for the honor of your respective villages. Fired. Finally, Tony sighed. The store's merchandise must be nearing completion, he needed to go tomorrow and restock. I also need to take care of Karen's business and talk to the clan. He paused for a while. And maybe I should also prepare myself for the events after Sarutobi's death. Fortunately I remembered to stock the store, when the clan employees saw me, they almost burst into tears. Apparently the period of time between the opening and my arrival was long enough for my business to become quite well known in the village and the store to be almost completely emptied. Food enthusiasts were elated by my ingredients, people living among papers and documents were moved to tears when they found out about my ready togo dishes, and ninjas discovered that using my grocery scrolls didn't just result in tasty food during lonely mission nights, but allows them to train more intensely and effectively thanks to accelerated recovery. I was also advised that a certain Tucci would like to get a steady supply of my ingredients for his ramen business from him. Where did I hear that name, I swear it rings a bell. Tucci. Okay, I'm retarded. How the hell did I forget to visit the Ichiraka ramen? I mean, in all of damn anime the number of known foods can be counted on the fingers of one hand. I already have the curry of life, but the ramen that was Naruto's main diet should not be forgotten either. I'm happy because with the rate at which the shop is prospering, I'll soon be able to be independent and not need to live in the Akimichi clan. Be careful, I have come to appreciate them very much during the time I lived with them, but I am aware that there is a bit of tension because they treat me like family, but their laws prevent them from teaching me their techniques and secret recipes because we are not connected by blood. I never really cared, I have the gourmet cells which is a superior version of their legacy and from my point of view, they already did me a big favor by adopting me upon my arrival. Otherwise, maybe by now he would be an emotionless root. The reason why she mentioned becoming independent is not only to remove that tension, but also because strictly speaking, Karen can't live in the clan because she adopted me. So I need to have my own home, I am thinking of a two-story house with a garden and a basement. By the time the finals are over, he should have enough money to buy a place. Yeah, I'm not going to buy anything until after because I don't know what buildings will be damaged and speaking of which, I also visited an insurance company to have a backup in case the store is damaged during the finals. I know that later pain will destroy the village and that includes my future home, but since there are years left for that, it is not a worry that I should drown at the moment. I can sell the house a few days before then and empty everything out by then. For now, Karen agreed to live in the store temporarily. And when I say live, I mean that he sleeps there and nothing else. I think I underestimated the sudden importance that I have in his life, because apart from sleeping, showering or going to the bathroom, he spends the rest of the time following me. 
Anko Sensei has taken a little leave of absence after what happened in the forest, so there was no problem from my team for Karen to join the training. I bought her some books on human anatomy and medicine so she could start studying to be a medical ninja and it seems to interest her. I guess she thought she was a great alternative to being bitten. A few days passed and Saratobi called me and Karen to her office to have the adoption papers signed. The third Hokage blinked twice when he saw Karen, it must be said that a good shower, along with days of eating my healthy and nutritious food plus a round of clothing stores and hairdressing do wonders. Although she was still a little thinner than someone her age should be, Saratobi was able to witness not only how well cared for the new Uzumaki of the village is, but how happy she is. When we got out of there, we were officially brother and sister. Now we just have to wait. I will be patient, like a leopard stalking its prey. I'll hear her call me Onayakan at some point. But I must be prepared. I need to make sure my blood sweetness levels don't spike. Wow, I think he could be a much more protective older brother than he expected. To celebrate that we are now family, I took her to the only place in the village that is a source of life for any Uzumaki, that's right, Ichiraka Ramen. As Karen immersed herself in the endless battle between broth and noodles, I talked to Tuchi about her request to supply ingredients to her business and we reached an agreement without a problem. Among other things, I asked her that when I or Karen came to eat, it would be free and after calculating, she agreed because I offered her a very good price for the ingredients. Call it favoritism and sorry for forgetting about it. From his point of view, he is actually taking advantage of me, maybe that's why he accepted while happily watching Karen enjoy her food. Meanwhile Tony couldn't help but smile to himself. He had just given Karen a lifetime supply of ramen, what a good big brother he was. Wait, was he doing it again? Perhaps it turned out that these days together made them a better fit than he expected. Karen was very obedient, she was well behaved, she was starting to gain a little trust and she opened up to Tony completely. She even asked him to sleep together a couple of times, which he agreed to because he found out that Karen was having nightmares and she would wake up alone in the tent, crying quietly. Mental note, raise the grass village to the ground in the future. As the date drew closer, more and more people came to the village and discovered the cooker store, which meant more sales and more visits from Tony to the store to restock. His account numbers were growing so fast that he suspected he would end up exploding. He was seriously considering whether, after the finals, to acquire a second warehouse and expand the store. With less than a week to go, Tony remembered a key issue and visited the third Hokage. Do you want to go find Tsunade after the finals? Asked the third Hokage surprised by the sudden request why is that? Are you okay? I think Karen has a talent for medical jutsu and I want to find her the best teacher, Tony answered matter-of-factly. I want to see if I can convince her to go back to the village for it. Even if she failed, I'd like her disciple, Shizun, to take her place. Then added, I also have a new dish that I think might pique your interest and I want your opinion on it. Saratobi didn't answer right away. The situation with Tsunade was a bit tense and he didn't want to upset her unnecessarily. But she thought about it from another angle. If Tony was successful, not only would the village regain a formidable Sanin, but the village economy would be booming from Tsunade's losing bets and he would be able to tie Karen further into the village. There were also other political benefits involved. He wasn't worried if Tony didn't come back to her, he was sure that by the time Tsunade tasted the boy's food, any bother would be a thing of the past. The risk was actually almost non-existent and the rewards of success were too overwhelming. Okay, I'll allow it, she agreed and signed an authorization document for Tony and Karen, but I won't let you go alone, I want someone to go with you. At last it was time for the last part of the Chunin exam. Tony spent most of his time helping Karen adjust, restock the store, train, and a few other things. He just took the day off a day before to get enough rest and relax. Remember to find a balance point between effort and relaxation. If he remembered correctly, the original finalists were Niji, Naruto, Shikamaru, Temari, Gara, Sasuke. He had to eliminate Niji after his trauma covered in mayonnaise. He was so outraged that he sought out Tony for days for a rematch, but luckily his clan noticed his behavior and locked him up until he calmed down. It seems that in the end Hei 8 was eliminated by Baki just like in the original Tony thought after seeing the referee change. He didn't remember much of it, so he just forgot about it until it was too late. 
By now he had set up a barbecue in the waiting area and was nibbling on some ribs. He gave the store employees the day off to attend the finals and went out of business. His biggest concern was who would take Niji's place in the confrontation with Naruto. Welcome to the last part of this year's Chunin exams. Said a presenter as he began to make a presentation of each participant. Was there a presenter in the original? Never mind, they didn't even draw numbers for the matchup as expected after the Forest of Death fights. Now we'll call an innocent hand to draw the numbers that will decide the matchups. Tony could see how a girl of about five years old took balls out of a box and gave them to her mother so that she could show them to the presenter. In agreement. The matches will be as follows. First match Tamari vs Naruto. Second match Shikamaru vs. Sasuke. Third match Tony vs. Gara. The crowd began to cheer as the matchups broke out and the betting shops opened. Tony nearly spit the delicious marinated meat at the point of it into his mouth when he saw that he had to fight Gara. He expected to face Tamari or Shikamaru. Innocent hand. Lies. Tony smelled the scent of conspiracy miles away. The others couldn't tell because they were too distracted by the aroma of juicy meat on the spice covered grill next to him. Surely that was why. A shiver ran down his spine when he saw Gara's smile when he found out that he would be his rival. Or as the Tanuki boy probably thought, the sacrifice of him. Should I just make him see his blood from the start and save me the fight? Tony considered seriously. If he remembered correctly, Gara's original opponent was Sasuke and what made him go mad was not the battle or the stress, but the sight of blood, his own blood. He had some good knives, he could make her bleed easily even with his automatic sand defense. He had a plan for it. But if he does that, he won't be able to put on enough performance for them to consider that he can become a chunin. In other words, he had to act for a while before forcing Gara into a rage. As the members of the Nara clan would say, that he annoys. While Tony went over his plan in his head, Naruto and Tamari went down to the arena and took their positions. By the time he snapped out of his thoughts and turned his gaze to the confrontation, he could see Naruto come up from the ground and punch Tamari in the jaw, defeating the Kunoichi. Applause from the audience followed. Tony blinked like an owl at the ridiculous similarity of his victory against Niji in the original. Was this the power of the plot armor? Really worrying. If he had chosen to act like a villain, he would have spit out a liter of blood when defeated by the power of friendship. That, or by the sudden power-up taken out of nowhere in a completely illogical way. That was a heartwarming showdown. Said the presenter what incredible power those wind techniques had. What a cunning way to reverse the situation. I am moved beyond tears. Geez, I don't know where the presenter came from, but it's clear that he knows how to do his job. You call that powerful wind techniques? Naruto was smart. Since he's making stuff up, why doesn't he say it's the beginning of a forbidden love between two villages stemming from rivalry? Shikamaru and Sasuke, please come to the arena, it's your turn. The Nara clansmen calmly went downstairs and after waiting a few minutes, Sasuke was nowhere to be found. I think he barely made it in time to face Gara back then and it was the third match, Tony mused. Does that mean Shikamaru will win because of his opponent's absence? That was Shikamaru's dream, to win without doing anything troublesome. Looks like Sasuke won't be able to attend due to some unknown reason, the announcer pointed out when the time limit was up. Shikamaru wins by default. Shikamaru's smile was really hateful at the moment. Gara and Tony, it's your turn. Said the presenter. By the way, our young local ninja runs a ninja grocery store in the village with tremendous success due to the top quality ingredients, delicious dishes, and convenient scrolls. Remember to visit the Cuckoo store located in XX sometime starting tomorrow, you will have an unforgettable memory on your palates. Tony smiled when he saw the interest the audience showed at the unexpected announcement. It was especially evident in the tourists and foreigners, who seemed to take note of the address. How about this, if you declare your surrender I'll give you a coupon to get a free meal at my store. Deal? Tony asked tentatively. They were both standing on the stage and Gara gave him a very unfriendly look. Your blood will satisfy mother's hunger, she replied with her arms crossed as she narrowed her eyes. Tony sighed acting defeated. He was actually just teasing Gara as she refreshed the idea of visiting her business to the onlookers. Let's do it then. 
he put on a serious stance as he drew his two knives and partially removed the restraint he usually had on them. Since he would have to put on a good show, let it be unforgettable. The civilians didn't notice a thing, but many faces in the audience changed their expressions as they felt the brutal presence of a beast coming from the knives in Tony's hands. The veteran Jonin as well as the censor ninjas flinched for a moment and Anko couldn't help but lift her lips in a smile that reflected interest and a hint of pride. Heh, the boy really knows how to hide well, she thought. Meanwhile, some clans such as the Inazuka and the Aburame had the most intense reactions and unconsciously entered a combat-ready state as sweat broke out on their foreheads. What the hell is that? They thought as they tried to calm down. Even the Kage present raised an eyebrow of interest at the sudden display of aura. This kid seems more interesting than he thought, the Kazakage mentioned when his eyes lit up. It's always been a box of surprises, the third Hokage replied with a satisfied expression, although inside he was also somewhat surprised. In fact, he's the one who prepared the food for today. If he hadn't become a ninja, he would have hired him as my personal cook. Tony usually didn't use the knives to their full capacity because he preferred to use the power of the devil fruit. Also, Kiba and Akameru were on his team and it was clear to her how intense his reaction to the traces left by the Dirous could be with his animal instincts. Gara, on the other hand, was actually excited. He just wanted to get his blood out of spite after what happened in the woods, but now he thought it could be exciting. Noticing that both contestants were ready, the referee gave the start signal and jumped out of the way. Tony was waiting for Gara to take the initiative and so it happened. He sent out a stream of sand to try to catch it and Tony only sprung into action when the sand was within range of him. Gluttony purification of the desert. He yelled. He spun at high speeds and sliced through the sand that was about to hit him. Gara had a teasing expression. What was the point of cutting sand from him? But his expression quickly changed when he noticed something strange. Because he couldn't feel more control in the arena that Tony hit. And the next scene left him speechless. He could see the sand he had sent change color to a pure, pristine white and surround Tony just as he himself had sand around him. What have you done? Gara was upset and didn't understand what happened. Tony just smiled at her in response. That same smile seemed much more mocking in Gara's eyes, so he sent out more streams of sand and the strange transformation happened again. This was repeated a few times until he gave up when he realized that he was only acting as his opponent wanted, which made him more furious. Gara wasn't worried about running out of sand, he could get more by drilling underground. But whatever Tony was doing, he was irritating him. And his irritation changed to a very interesting expression when he noticed Tony's next move. My turn, he said as he sent the strange white sand at Gara. The next thing viewers saw for the next few minutes was a constant clash between arenas of two different colors. And they were tied. Hayashi Hyuga watched as her daughter Hinata tried to contain her laughter at the stage show. She was paying attention to Tony because he was friends with his daughter and also because of Niji's recent scandal with mayonnaise. Hinata, do you know what your teammate is doing? Shishi asked him what is that white sand? Dad, Hinata replied to her father's question, Tonikun is imitating his rival's style but instead of using sand, I think he's using sugar or salt, but knowing his personality, I'm sure it's what he is. First. Sugar versus sand. Hayashi's jaw dropped at the revelation of his daughter. Not only him, everyone who was around and heard the explanation of the Hyuga heiress reacted in a similar way. The Akimichi clan on the other hand, were the only ones who were cheering Tony on strongly. After all, whatever glory he might win in the exam reflected back to his clan. Ha ha. Choza and his wife laughed without holding back in the least that boy and his jutsu are the best. Gara, for his part, was getting more and more angry. Even when he tried to use some waves of sand, his opponent did the same with that strange white sand. Although he managed to destroy part of it, for some reason his sand was getting slower and harder to handle, as if sticky. I think that should be enough. Tony mused. He was mixing the sugar into Gara's sand and dissolving it to slow down his reaction times. But if he continued like this, he might start taking more drastic action. During the next clash between the sand and the sugar, one of his knives shot out from inside the wave as Gara couldn't see it and rushed towards the sand ninja. Gara noticed the incoming attack but didn't move as usual and hoped the sand would protect him. Two seconds later, blood stained the stage for the first time since the confrontation began. 
I think I underestimated the sharpness of the knife. Tony grimaced as he saw that the knife instead of making a small gash on his shoulder as intended, went cleanly through Gara's arm and came out without a single drop of blood on its surface. The arm was still in place, but the wound was not pretty to look at. Blood? Pain and reality took a while to hit Gara. It's my blood. Well, it seems that it was the hour of the crazy raccoon. My hand still hurts, so I'll bring you tomorrow's episode in advance because I think I'll go to the doctor to have it looked at. It all happened too fast for most of those present. Before anyone could react, most of the spectators fell into an illusion caused by Kabuto. Only the most capable ninjas and ANBU members noticed what was happening and broke free, rushing to survey their surroundings and helping to wake up their comrades. A few seconds later, the attack began. Tony wasn't stupid enough to wait for Gara to do the transformation act while Kankuro and Temari led him out of the village. As Gara's face began to show the features of a one-tailed beast, he left the stage and ran up the wall to the spectator area. A sound village ninja tried to attack, only to be greeted with a splash of boiling oil in the face and a kick that sent him hurtling toward the stage, snapping his neck as he fell. Let's see, where is he? Tony looked around and spotted the unconscious Karen. Well, I guess that was to be expected. It still has to grow up, he murmured as he moved closer to her and woke her up as her chakra flow burst. Hey. Karen opened her eyes and looked around her in confusion, not remembering when she fell asleep. We're under attack, follow me and help me wake people up, Tony instructed. Karen took a few seconds to process the information, she nodded before following Tony's orders. Both of them quickly came to the Akimichi clan and the Inazuka clan to help wake up their members who were not yet aware of the situation. Tony was no saint, he would certainly prioritize waking up those close to him so that they could act and ensure his safety to some degree. He looked up and found that the Hyuga clan members were almost all awake so he moved to help others. They needed to evacuate the civilians so that they would not be a burden to them. But while he was acting, Tony felt something and stopped to take out a burning talisman. It was a security measure that he had put in place when he closed the shop and it would only be activated in case someone entered it without going through the entrance. It only took him a moment to figure out who could take advantage of the situation with such timing. Danzo and his route. In fact, he didn't recall seeing Danzo and his crew helping out during the attack on the village, most likely they only showed up after learning of Sarutobi's death to try to make a good impression. Tony had been on his guard all this time because he knew that Danzo is the type of person who knows how to wait before acting, but he believed that his attack would be directed at him. Why would he raid his store? What Tony didn't know was that Danzo wanted to have a backup plan in case he couldn't get his hands on the gourmet ninja. The delicious taste of his dishes aside, Danzo was much more interested in the effects they had. The recovery enhancement and others would allow root of him to be able to reduce the training time from three months to just one, they could learn jutsus almost twice as fast and anything related to physique could be sped up. Tony's food was no longer considered medicine, but rather a strategic resource. So he ordered two teams from root to infiltrate the store and take samples of everything there was. He wanted to set up a secret field where he plants the fruits and vegetables, while his researchers would try to grow the meat and fish in tanks. Tony thought for a moment and shook his head. He realized what Danzo's intention might be, but he wasn't going to go to the store to stop them. The talisman only warned him of the break-in, but had no function to tell how many thieves entered, and since they were members of Root, ninjas whose emotions had been stripped away through in human training, he wasn't arrogant enough to believe that if he went there he could stop them. He would only give them the opportunity to kidnap him on a silver platter. He sighed somewhat ruefully and made a seal with his left hand as he activated his emergency backup plan. Since Tony became a genin, he gained access to various ninja tools at the village store and there was one in particular that he found very useful despite its high price. Explosive Labels Everyone in and around the stadium heard a loud bang as the cuckoo store blew up out of nowhere. Amid the flames and smoke, charred human-shaped remains could be seen. Danzo if you want to get my things you will have to pay a price, like everyone else. Who would be crazy and paranoid enough to put explosive labels on their own business? Tony didn't, not at all. It is clear that the invader took advantage of the chaos to sabotage his store, which was a booming economic point of the village, he was just a victim. Luckily he had secured the store, just before the Chunin exam finals began for a hefty sum. What a coincidence. Ahem, what bad luck I mean. 
I'll really have to leave the village with Karen for a few days to lessen the attention on my back, Tony thought as he pretended not to know about the explosion. Even though he had Saratobi's document authorizing him to go out looking for Tsunade after the exam, he now had an additional reason to leave temporarily. He needed to wait for the store to be rebuilt before resuming business. He also didn't know how quickly Danzo would discover the death of his men, since he would be partying after learning of the death of his rival and lover. But she didn't want to give him the chance to target him or his little sister. He could order them captured in a fit of rage, which was not exactly rare in man. It wasn't a good idea to be in Kanoha without someone pulling Danzo's leash. So after the attack, he will take Karen to the Akimichi clan and await Jiraiya's arrival. After all, why would the two of them go alone when they can have a Sanin as a bodyguard? But since Jiraiya tried to do something to Karen, he will have to put out a book based on her experience after becoming a eunuch. The third Hokage's funeral was held and several days passed while Tony waited for the signal that would indicate Jiraiya's arrival at the Leaf Village. Itachi and Kisame should pay Sasuke a visit and cause a ruckus. But in the meantime, he put on a bit of theatrics when he went to his destroyed store before ordering its rebuilding with the insurance money. Not only that, he checked various real estate agencies and ended up buying a house in the village that had been damaged due to the attack, so he got it for a reduced price and used the remaining insurance money to repair it. The Akimichi clan accepted Karen's temporary residence when Tony explained that she would only stay a few days before she would leave with him soon and upon her return she would live in the renovated house. Choza accepted her decision and reminded her that she could come back for a visit whenever she wanted and the clan would welcome him with open arms. Only after attending to the most pressing matters was he able to sit down and breathe a sigh of relief. He took a few moments to relax his mind before making a call within his mind. System. He called. The host has been officially promoted to Chunin. Sending all culinary skills, experiences and techniques yakitate. Japan Breath of Endoro Hitero Demon Awakening Medallion 12. Due to completing the optional task, the following has been delivered Turkey's Alive Dolls Technique Modified Doro Hitero Chakra Reserves will be doubled Nuka Cola Quantum Recipe Fallout. What is that medallion? Tony asked after he finished upgrading his chakra reserves. Demon Awakening Medallion 12 Given the special way the host obtained the gourmet cells, you need to collect the two pieces of the medallion so that the gourmet demon is successfully awakened and does not devour the host's consciousness immediately. The process. I see, he agreed. I didn't expect waking up the gourmet demon to be so risky. He rubbed his hand thoughtfully on his chin. And what is the breath of an about? Grants the host the ability to exhale smoke through the mouth with the ability to transform anything into mushrooms. Only smoke itself can remove the transformation, so the host must be careful not to affect allies if he wishes to use it. The mushrooms the host will get from the transformation are all random but edible. Great whistle Tony with this and transforming tomatoes into magma I have two more ways of fighting. The system recommends that the host pay special attention to Turkey's modified live doll technique. This is one of the best assets the system has, it can be very useful for the host. Show me. Turkey's Technique Living Dolls modified version and improved by the system. Capable of recreating any character out of this world. They will be 100% loyal, able to speak, vivid and with a part of the force of the host in real time. They won't look for the real person, because they don't exist in the world of Naruto. Ingredients needed. You need to use. Jar of smoke provided by the system. Barbary duck. Some pork. A fine slice of bacon. Back calf. A glass of cognac. A bottle of port. Some minced onions. A little bit of salt and pepper. Kite string. Follow the instructions below. Mix the onions while adding the cognac, port, and a little salt and pepper. Deb one the duck, flatten it, and garnish it with minced meat and a little bit of salt and pepper. Tie the meat with a kite string and bake it in a special oven made with chakra. Provided by the system. Pour smoke and melts of calf every 10 minutes while it is baking, let it roast. Tony was stunned after learning what he could do with the technique. Wasn't this giving him employees and subordinates almost for free? He could bring Yukihira Soma, Harlequin, Alice Nakiri, Kamatsu and more. He would open a food chain the likes of which had never been seen in this world. Tony took several deep breaths to calm himself. 
he already knew what he was going to do after returning from the trip with Tsunade. He would keep the Akimichi clan employees at the counter and create living legends for the kitchen. Money would not be a problem for him anymore. System, what do you mean they'll have a part of my strength in real time? It means that no matter if they are created now or twenty years from now, they will all have the same level of strength, using the present host as a reference. If the host weakens, they will too and vice versa. That's great, I won't have to worry about her safety too much then. Although I could actually do more if something bad happens, I prefer them to have some strength. Tony, Mrs. Akimish is calling you for dinner. Karen knocked on the bedroom door and came to notify her older brother. I'm going. Her, she replied. The next day, while Tony and Karen were walking through the streets of the village to digest lunch, they heard an explosion in one of the buildings and saw a hole with some black fire burning. Come on, Tony said to Karen, did you prepare everything I told you? Yes, Karen agreed as she showed the storage rolls she had her luggage in. Are we going to pick up Sonade today? We'll wait for a man at the entrance to the village, she replied, it will be easy to recognize, he's ugly, he has white hair and he'll come out accompanied by Naruto. He's from the Uzumaki clan too, right? Karen asked with interest. She had heard of Naruto during the days he stayed in Tony's village. Yes, he confirmed before pausing and adding, but his father's genes and other things spoiled practically any talent in the child, Tony explained calmly. Hope he can use Fuenjutsu as fluently as you. He just keeps me from dragging you into his shenanigans and you'll be fine. Karen nodded as she made a mental note of everything. It seemed that this Naruto was a troublesome character, but the curiosity to meet someone else from the clan was not small. She would try to meet the boy and see if they could be friends. As long as he didn't say anything bad about her older brother, they should be able to understand each other a bit. The two waited at the entrance for an hour before they could see Naruto following the man Tony described. He was ugly, white hair and for some reason, Karen didn't like the look on his face. She knew it was wrong to judge someone based on his appearance, but he seemed like a pervert. Jiraiya V.O.P. Those damn council elders almost tricked me into becoming Hokage. It was already a big shock for me Sensei's death at the hands of Orochimaru and I've been a bit nervous ever since I met Naruto. But not for a second would he accept that position. Not only do I know he wouldn't make a good Hokage, I refuse to be buried in paper and not have more time for my research. It is too much responsibility and too many consequences for a single mistake. So it immediately occurred to me to suggest that Tsunade take the position in my place. He has been out of the village for too long and I think he should be able to convince her somehow. He is much more responsible than me and he has a lot of experience in leading, but I don't know if he is over what happened back then. I'll take Naruto with me. He bears a certain resemblance to Tsunade's little brother and I think he can be of help. He keeps talking about wanting to become Hokage. The boy tries hard, but he doesn't seem as talented as Minato. Although he loves ramen like Kushina, but I think that's because of the Uzumaki genes. I met Naruto at the gate of the village ready to leave, when suddenly two children approached me as if they had been waiting for me. I admit I was a bit surprised when I saw the red-haired girl. I don't remember my informants notifying me of the arrival of someone from the Uzumaki clan in the village. Is it the backup plan in case something happens to Naruto? The boy next to the Uzumaki brings me out of my thoughts when he hands me a scroll that he says is from Sensei. After reading the content and verifying that it is genuine, I can't help but look twice at the child. I remember that the Akimichi clan adopted a child out of nowhere and by the looks of him, it must be Tony, the one who faced the Jinchuriki from the arena in the finals of the exam before he got out of control. That shows that he has some talent, maybe he could give him some advice so that he feels more attached to the village. I'm already going to have to go with a brat, so taking two more doesn't make a difference and I don't have good reason to refuse since Sensei authorized it. Also, I know the look on the boy's face, even if I refuse they'll probably leave on his own. That being the case, better keep them in sight. Vop MC Karen and I waited at the entrance and it didn't take long to see Jiraiya and Naruto. I walked over to talk to him and hand him the Sarutobi document while Karen and Naruto talked amongst themselves. I never liked Jiraiya. His perversion and lack of respect for people's privacy aside, he didn't return to the village to take up his responsibilities to Naruto when Minato and Kushina died. Mind you, he didn't mind spending time with three orphans in the rain country. He didn't even send him any subsistence money, 
which he urgently needed and I know for a fact he doesn't lack. He made Tsunade suffer in the past for his reckless decisions. He is an idiot who believes in the will of fire so much that he threatened to eliminate Tsunade if he betrayed the village, to this day I still don't understand how Tsunade didn't try to eliminate him after hearing his threat. Not to mention that he is like a puppet before the prophecies of an old toad, with insanity and ulterior motives. And that is only part of the whole. Honestly, he considered Orochimaru a better person. Luckily for us, it seems that he is willing to accept the will of his sensei and instead of letting us go alone, he agrees to let us accompany him and Naruto. We traveled pretty fast, but it still took us a few days to reach Tsunade's whereabouts. During the drive, Karen and I have spent most of the time talking to each other and to Naruto. Jiraiya barely said a few words from time to time and he seems to prefer to listen, probably to try and get to know us better and gather information from us. During the first night we rested outdoors, he was completely stunned when I took a couple of watermelon-sized field stones and cut them in half with one of my knives, revealing freshly prepared ramen inside. It turns out that when I ate at Ichiraku ramen, a hidden system achievement was fulfilled that rewarded me with the ability to recreate that and more types of ramen. I have no intention of using this skill for my business, as Tenzin is a valued customer and we get along well. Also, I remember that he had a daughter who depended on him. I handed over the stone bowls to the Uzumaki duo to fill their stomachs and I created some chocolate frogs to eat my favorite way by biting off the heads. I offered some to Jiraiya out of courtesy which he accepted, but while we ate I think I try to figure out why the frogs seem alive instead of eating them. The next morning when we woke up, we could see from the bags under his eyes that Jiraiya hadn't slept all night trying to get the secret out of the frogs. He perhaps believed that since it was something he could do as a chunin, he could easily unravel and replicate the trick. My mood improved a lot for some reason and I gave him a few drops of lemon, in the purest Dumbledore style, so that he would forget about the matter and we resumed the trip. Every meal I made with my ability baffled him, I acted like it was nothing, but made sure every transformation was shocking. He also did not understand why the others were not surprised with what he was doing, they even asked for specific dishes. Naruto was already used to my magic tricks since the academy and had no interest in knowing how he did it as long as he could take advantage and eat. Karen knew this was my ability because I told her about it, but she was tactful and didn't ask for specific details. I think she considered it something of a secret between brothers. Jiraiya was too proud to ask me for food so he could only eat his rations in silence as he talked about the ninja way and acted like he knew what he was talking about. I think he didn't realize that those present were too excited about the food to pay attention to him. When we arrived at the right place, the first thing we did was rent two rooms. One for Jiraiya and one for the others, before he ran off to the first restaurant he found. I think he got a craving for something other than rations. Anyway, Naruto decided to wait for Jiraiya while he took a nap. For my part, I called Karen and told her to go for a walk. Not only to see if we could find the slimy old lady, but also so Karen could see more of the world. After all, she had only seen two villages in her entire life and it was the first time that she had been able to wander around a village without a care in the world. I let her pick the trails, we shopped and saw a few sights before heading back. And just on our return, we could see two women who seemed very familiar to me. Thanks to her personal technique, it was hard to believe that Tsunade was over 50 years old. Anyone seeing her for the first time would think that she was barely in her twenties and if she remembered correctly, Shizen wasn't even thirty right now. She could only see them out of the corner of her eye for a second before they entered an inn, but she immediately identified them because not many people walk around with a little pig in their arms who has pearls on their necks. Tony contemplated for a moment whether to approach immediately, but he didn't know Tsunade's current mood. He wasn't about to take an undeserved hit from her if she was upset for any reason. Ding! New quest, may luck be with you. Task convinced the legendary loser to accept Kunoichi Karen Uzumaki as her apprentice. Optional task place a bet with her. Reward? Mega pack. Optional reward depends on the result of the bet. Let's go look for Naruto and the pervert, Tony said to Karen, we already know where he is, let's not waste time. Fortunately for both of them, Jiraiya barely made it out of the restaurant with a satisfied expression as she gently patted her stomach. We have located Tsunadesima, Tony addressed him. Well, it seems you haven't been sitting idly by like Naruto. Jiraiya nodded. Let's pick him up before we visit her. 
Naruto was woken up and Tony led the group to the inn where he saw the target enter. Jiraiya asked the front desk and the man just sighed at the number of people looking for this particular guest. He repeated the same thing to them as to the rest. After Jiraiya thanked him by leaving some money, they went upstairs and knocked on the door. Yes. A black-haired woman cautiously opened the door. Shizun, it's been a while, Jiraiya told her. Jiraiya Lord? She she exclaimed in surprise, even more so when she saw that three children were accompanying him are they his new apprentices? She asked intrigued. Tony refrained from rolling his eyes, because he understood the confusion. It was easy to believe that they were a team under the Sanin's orders because they were exactly the right number for it. No, not at all. Jiraiya waved his hand in denial. Is Tsunade here? Mrs. Tsunade is down to drink, Shizun informed him. Should I let her know? It doesn't matter, just take us with her. Good. Shizun scooped Tonton into her arms and after closing the door, she led everyone to a local just two streets away, where they could see the legendary loser enjoying herself while she drank sake. Hey Tsunade. Jiraiya sat down in front of her without hesitation as he greeted her. Jiraiya, what are you doing here? Tsunade's smile waned as she spotted the uninvited intruder. And what do you do with all these brats? Shizun sat next to her teacher, while Naruto took the place next to Jiraiya followed by Tony and Karen. It's a long story. Jiraiya didn't beat around the bush and told her everything. Orochimaru's attack on the village, Sarutobi's death, and the need for him to return to assume the position of Hokage. I'm not going back, so you can go back the way you came, Tsunade replied as he played with her necklace absent-mindedly. Naruto had no patience and the same thing that Tony expected happened. He refused to believe that Tsunade deserved the position and ended up making a bet with her, before leaving with Jiraiya to complete her training. And why haven't you two left? Tsunade asked seeing that both Tony and Karen didn't say anything during the conversation. I'm not going to invite you to eat. Even though we're from the same village, we didn't come with them for the same purpose, Tony replied. And what would that be? Tsunade asked as she took another drink of sake. I would like to ask you to take my little sister as her disciple and teach her the medical arts. And who is your little sister? Tsunade asked. I can be sure you're not related to the Uzumaki girl at a single glance, so don't try to lie. Tony didn't hide anything from her and explained the situation since the Chunin exam, Karen's mistreatment in the previous village and her adoption. I see her, she agreed, but why should she take her as her disciple? There are other medical ninjas in the village who could do the same. Because I don't want her to learn from someone who will only give her minimal attention for money, but from someone who is truly capable and who can really care about her, Tony replied. I understand, Tsunade agreed. And what did I get out of it? She asked in a disinterested tone. A talented apprentice, I'll do my best to cover the supplies you need and you can enjoy my food when you come to visit our house. She then added, I'll also be able to give you some free spirits that you won't find anywhere else. Of the world and I will teach you a new way of betting. Your food. Tsunade blinked at Tony's offer. Don't you think you're overestimating yourself? I guess you haven't been back to the village in years, otherwise you wouldn't say that, Tony commented. Anyone in the village wouldn't refuse any of my meals. What about the liquors? Even with Tony's explanation, Tsunade still thought it was an exaggeration, so she focused on finding out more of what piqued her interest. I have exclusive liqueurs of my invention and preparation, but I won't sell anything until I'm of age, since it coincides with the time needed for the first batch to be ready. Like fire whiskey, butter beer. Tony named various drinks he obtained from the world of Harry Potter without batting an eye. I can give you a few bottles often for you to enjoy. I also have some more surprises planned for the future. Tsunade gulped as she heard Tony's description, it was too detailed and vivid to be an invention. She had to take a few more shots of sake before continuing the conversation. And what about the new way of betting? I can show you that right now if you want, but you have to be mentally prepared for it, Tony warned her. Although it doesn't cost much money each attempt, there will always be people who will regret trying this. Tsunade's interest grew when her hands began to itch from this strange betting method. Shizun sighed in defeat as she recognized her teacher's change in attitude. She hoped it really wouldn't cost much, because they already had enough debt on top of her. Stop being mysterious and show me. Tsunade demanded. 
If it's really like you say, I'll give the Uzumaki girl a chance. But if you disappoint me, you'll pay my drink bill for today. Tony didn't lose his composure at Tsunade's words, which only showed how confident he was in this betting method, which indirectly made Tsunade's excitement grow a bit more. Oh yeah, Tony has been preparing for this moment for a long time. He reached into his pockets and pulled out a circus-themed box with red and white lines that said Birdie bought Dragé's all flavors. Question what flavor would you like me to touch you and what would be your least favorite? In the end Tony didn't have to pay for anyone's drinks. After explaining how it worked, Tsunade tried three pills and had no luck. He gave her an old leather shoe, rotten egg and beeswax. His expression wasn't pretty as he forced Shizun to taste, which he had better take two of which turned out to be apple pie and roast beef. Even Karen took one out of curiosity and it turned out to be orange sherbet. Tony took one, two, and pouted when he handed her a coal armpit flavored lozenge. It could be any flavor really, Tsunade complained as she washed her mouth with more drink. But she admitted it's more fun than she thought. Her eyes roamed between the sweets, trying to discern a good one by color and smell. Shizun almost prayed that her teacher would substitute her visits to the casinos for a box of these pills. The price was cheap and she had enough to bet on the flavor for a few days. Then, Tony asked. Okay, I'll put the Uzumaki to the test, Tsunade reluctantly agreed. Not even ten minutes had passed and he had already bet with two people from that clan. It was just a chance, he could still turn her down later if he wasn't up to the task. He took out a scroll and tossed it to Karen. This is more basic information that anyone who wants to train as a medical ninja should know, just like Naruto, I'll give you a week to assimilate it before I give you an exam. Thank you for the opportunity. Karen thanked with a small bow as she smiled. Tsunade's impression improved a bit seeing Karen's honest attitude. Um, she agreed. See you in a week, she said before taking another sip of sake. Thank you Tony also thank you can come and get me if you want more pills. And Shizun, she turned her head to look at the woman who had discreetly kept out of the conversation until now, you and your teacher can come to eat anytime and I'll prepare my best dishes. I'm good at anything you want, from meats to desserts. Maybe we'll give it a try, thanks. Shizun really wanted to directly accept the invitation due to his meager funds. Okay, tonight we'll eat with you. Tsunade ignored his disciples' attempt to keep up appearances and bluntly accepted the invitation. Tsunadesima. Shizun complained. Tony and Karen laughed before bidding them both goodbye. Focus on learning what you can from the scroll, I'll take care of everything you need during this period, Tony said to Karen. I'll make sure the others don't bother you. Yes. Karen clenched her fists excitedly. How could she not be? Her older brother got her the opportunity to become a disciple of Tsunadesima, the idol of thousands of Kunoichis. People would eliminate for an opportunity like this. It's good that you're motivated, but remember to eat and sleep properly, Tony reminded her. Otherwise, it could backfire. Karen nodded, she really appreciated the opportunity and wouldn't blow it. She also understood that one of her older brother's goals was so that he could get powerful support for her, to prevent certain people from having thoughts of her. After Tony walked Karen back, he leaned against the wall as he watched her begin to study and pondered. According to the plot, Orochimaru must have already offered him Tsunade's deal before they arrived. In exchange for him healing her arms, he would bring back Nawaki and Dan. It was later that Jiraiya would make the threat to avoid betraying the village. Tsunade ends up drugging him with a sleeping pill and goes to meet Orochimaru pretending to accept the deal, before Kabuto stops her sensing her hidden murderous intent. Then follows a fight with techniques, Jiraiya's arrival, summons, and the appearance of Naruto in his plot armor. And a kiss. Tony wasn't going to get into that crossfire, not at all. They would all go home alive and with life lessons learned, there was simply no need to bring it to anyone's attention. Jiraiya and Naruto came back later and were surprised by Tsunade and Shizun's sudden visit at dinner time. While looking for a suitable place to eat under the stars in the open air, Jiraiya found out what happened after they left and looked at Tony as if he had two heads to find out that he managed to get Tsunade to give Karen a chance. To his delight, this time it wasn't him who gaped and bewildered at Tony's food. Tsunade and Shizun watched with wide eyes as he chopped firewood into juicy pieces of steak and flamed them with some kind of alcohol with tangerine skin. 
He would then take some stones to turn into onions which he would finely chop before mixing them with other things to prepare a sauce for the meat in a pan. They felt like pinching themselves when at Karen and Naruto's request, he stabbed a nearby tree and a cola gushed out. Not to mention when he cut off a piece of the crust and turned it into a fluffy brownie with walnuts. It was only after tasting the food that they understood what Tony meant earlier when he said that no one would turn down a meal from him. No matter what dish they ordered after the steak, Tony transformed it from inedible materials with a few practiced moves. He even prepared some simple things for Taunton. Shizun was lost in delight at the endless free buffet, but Tsunade still retained a shred of rationality and noted the changes the food made to her body. Small continuous improvements here and there that could only be achieved with strict training or specialized drugs, all happening naturally and without any side effects. He even felt that some secondary effects that had been left permanently and hopelessly in his body during the fight against Hanzo the Salamander, recovered somewhat against all medical logic. If he could eat this daily for a while, he might not need to use his technique to look young. Maybe it wouldn't hurt to do him a favor, Tsunade seriously considered for the first time since he'd met Tony. The drinks and pills were certainly interesting, but the benefits of this type of food were the real issue. Shizun had already come to understand 70% of his medical teachings and the rest could only be acquired with experience and constant practice. Something that he would only get in a war or in a hospital. Accepting a second disciple was not entirely impossible. And so, for the next few days, Tony's job was limited to guarding Karen while she studied and cooking every meal. As well as providing some extra pills to Shizun when he came looking for them on behalf of his teacher. When one day as he was returning from the bathroom he found Jiraiya asleep in an awkward position, he realized that Tsunade must be on her way to meet Orochimaru. He shouldn't be long in waking up. Karen, I brought you a glass of water, he commented as he entered the room, have a break, this afternoon is the exam and you won't want to be tired from reading too much. But no matter where she looked, Karen was nowhere to be found. She thought as she frowned and realized what could have happened. Although he was aware of Kabuto and Orochimaru's presence in the vicinity, he ignored them because he didn't want to draw their attention unnecessarily and wanted the plot to proceed as in the original. But Karen was an Uzumaki. And that Orochimaru was interested in her. Rare bloodlines to study. Perhaps they hadn't made a move because they had been spying, but today they decided to act just as Tony was gone for a moment. After the meeting with Tsunade, they would leave and take an interesting specimen with them. Since I happened something to Karen, I'll give Orochimaru such a beating that he won't know where her soul begins and ends. Tony gritted his teeth and ran towards the place he knew would be the meeting point. He didn't bother waking Jiraiya up because he knew she would soon be on her own. He arrived just as Tsunade started to fight Kabuto as Orochimaru watched. And just as he suspected, he could see Karen unconscious next to him. Looks like we have company, Orochimaru said when he saw Tony. He remembered the peculiar genin from the exam finals. You brat, get out of here. Tsunade yelled worriedly when she saw Tony appear. I won't let you take her. Tony yelled and started running towards Orochimaru. Kabuto didn't miss the opportunity and passed Tsunade to try and hit Tony. Take out four eyes. Tony yelled at him. I'm not in the mood to play with you. Gluttony red rain. He stomped on the ground and dozens of tomatoes were thrown into the sky before they began to fall en masse on Kabuto's path of approach. Are you in this situation and still resort to these stupid tricks? Kabuto scoffed. Tony only responded by making a gesture with his hand. Kabuto, dodge. He suddenly heard Orochimaru yell at him. Although confused by the sudden warning, he stopped moving closer to focus on dodging the tomatoes. It was only then that he noticed that the tomatoes gave off heat and when they hit the ground, they turned into magma. The mere thought of how he would have ended if he let them beat him sent a shiver down her spine. He jumped up and away from Tony. That's when Jiraiya arrived with Naruto and Shizun. Orochimaru. Jiraiya yelled. Where did that magma come from? Naruto asked confused. Tsunadesima. Shizun looked at the craters around her and sighed in relief seeing her teacher. Looks like we'll need reinforcements, Orochimaru commented. Kabuto. Yes. Kabuto walked over to Orochimaru and lifted his sleeve to reveal a tattoo where he took blood from him and traced a line before starting to make seals. Summoning technique. With a burst of smoke, 
two large brown spotted snakes appeared, carrying Orochimaru, Kabuto and Karen on their heads. Naruto couldn't help but get angry and tried to respond with another summoning technique which was useless as he summoned two small frogs. I'll take care of Jiraiya, you take care of the rest. Orochimaru yelled at Kabuto. Too bad, I also wanted to fight a San Nin. Kabuto responded excitedly. The veins on Tony's forehead throbbed at the sight of him being ignored. Summoning technique. He yelled. Did he want to fight Pokemon style? Let's go. Another burst of smoke occurred and a dozen chimera ants appeared that despite displaying animal features, possessed a human-like build. They were a higher rank than the ones he called last time in the world of Harry Potter and they had more intelligence. They had features of crocodiles, koalas, cheetahs, octopuses, birds, etc. What is your request, contractor? Asked the one who seemed to have the highest rank of those present. Bring me the red-haired girl safely, Tony said. The only enemies present are the man with the glasses and the man with the pale face. The snakes are all yours. The ant looked at the size of the two snakes and nodded. That will be enough, come on. Orochimaru had a bad feeling when he saw the strange creatures and wanted to take some insurance. Kabuto, grab the girl. Yes, Orochimarusuma. Kabuto held out his hand to Karen but before he could hold it, the cheetah-like ant kicked him in surprise almost knocking him off the snake and whisked her away. Damn! The cheetah ant reappeared next to Tony and placed Karen on the ground. She seems like she's unconscious from some drug, from the smell of her she should wake up in about five or six hours, he commented. Thank you Tony crouched down and verified that indeed, it seemed that Karen was under the effect of some strong sleeping pill. The cheetah ant nodded and excitedly returned to his group, which had already started hunting the snakes mercilessly. You could see them tearing at their flesh, slashing at them and thrashing in pain as they tried to defend themselves. It didn't take long for the first snake to drop dead as the ants, now covered head to toe in his blood, turned their heads in unison towards the remaining snake where Kabuto and Orochimaru stood. Orochimaru was feeling wary of the chimera ants but he couldn't suppress a hint of fascination when he saw their body structure and the variety of features they displayed. His investigative instinct screamed at him that he might get interesting samples if he could just dissect some of them. He would have tried to make them change sides, but seeing how the creatures had negotiated before acting, he considered that it was very possible that his contract was similar to the one he had with Manda, where he had to prepare some kind of payment for the services of the the strange thing is that despite knowing about the three wise places, he had no knowledge of these beings. He hadn't read anything about them either during his forays into thousands of scrolls. A new chakra beast or a hidden clan? No, it seemed too organized to be new. It is much more likely that it was the second case. Looks like we'll have to retreat, but I'd rather get some benefit. She shifted her gaze from him to Naruto. A Jinchuriki will be enough to make up for my lost time. He stepped on the snake's head and it rushed with Kabuto towards the orange boy. Orochimaru, do you think you can ignore me? Jiraiya's face darkened as he understood his former teammate's thoughts. Yes, Orochimaru stated as he licked his lips, I guess Tsunade drugged you before you came here, otherwise you would have acted sooner. I'm pretty sure whatever he gave you is interfering with your chakra somehow. Damn, he found out. He thought annoyed Jiraiya, he believed that he had managed to act naturally enough that he wouldn't notice. Tsunade was still recovering from the injuries caused by Kabuto's chakra scalpel, but between her and Shizen's help, he had almost recovered. As she stood up to try and restrain Orochimaru, she saw the blood covering the ants and her legs and hands began to tremble. What a sad sight Tsunade! Orochimaru shouted. One of the best-known medical ninjas and look at you now, with nothing less than hemophobia, one of the worst fears someone who heals can have. Orochimaru suddenly dodged as Jiraiya tried to sneak attack using Taijutsu. Suddenly, it turned into an exchange of constant kicks and dodges. The snake stopped its advance abruptly before the attack of the ants and Kabuto had no choice but to jump and face Naruto on his own. Tony watched the development as he stood by Karen's side. After several monologues and declarations about the way of the ninja during the fight, Naruto ended up hitting Kabuto off guard with the Rasengan, sending him into a rock. The only difference with the original story was that Naruto had not been seriously injured and only had a few less wounds that began to heal thanks to the nine-tailed fox's chakra. 
Shizun and Tsunade breathed a sigh of relief as Kabuto fell to the ground, spitting blood and unable to move. Or at least they were until he burst into smoke, revealing that he was just a clone. A bad feeling came over Tony suddenly and he tossed the unconscious Karen toward Tsunade and Shizun before trying to move but it was too late. Pa! A hand covered in chakra pierced him from behind causing a terrible wound. Tony had no choice but to jerk his head around to see an injured Kabuto looking at him with a smug look. You shouldn't let your guard down in the middle of a fight, he told her, withdrawing his hand in a single movement, covered in blood. The ant smelled their contractor's blood and turned to see the scene, several retreating from the assault on the dying snake and running towards Tony. I think that will be enough for today. Forming a seal with his hand, Kabuto disappeared in the midst of a whirlwind of leaves and appeared near Orochimaru, who, seeing him, gave a strong kick to reject Jiraiya. I guess I'll have to resort to the last alternative, he commented as he revealed a piece of skin on his face, revealing a completely different eye. Bye. Kabuto put a hand on Orochimaru's shoulder and the two vanished in a cloud of smoke. Tony. Naruto was the first to react without showing caution in the face of a possible false withdrawal. Tony's condition was not good at the moment, the wound on his body was already quite serious and added to the accelerated blood loss, he lost consciousness shortly before Naruto's arrival. The moment that happened, the ants and snake bodies disappeared in another burst of smoke. Shizun. Tsunade yelled. Yes. Shizun knelt down next to Tony with a serious expression and ripped the clothes apart to better examine the wound. The more damage he found out, the paler his expression became. He began treating him immediately by coating his palms with green chakra as sweat broke out on his forehead. Naruto wanted to speak but Jiraiya immediately blocked his mouth. He had been in many battles and had seen older ninjas die from smaller wounds than Tony suffered. They couldn't afford to disturb Shizen's concentration at these critical moments. Barely two minutes had passed and the chakra in Shizen's hands doubled. What's his status? Tsunade asked when he managed to work up enough courage to approach. I. I don't think he can make it in time, master. Tears began to fall down Shizen's cheeks as she struggled to keep Tony alive. He moved in time to avoid damage to his spine and major nerves, but he has a completely pierced lung, several places with blood blockages, the organs they are moved. Naruto froze at Shizun's words. Jiraiya shook his head ruefully, knowing the boy's chances of survival were slim to none. Unless. A trembling Tsunade knelt down beside his disciple and taking several deep breaths, took over. Stop shaking. She screamed at his hands internally as he used all of his medical knowledge to get Tony in good enough shape to be taken to the nearest hospital. His cells are behaving strangely. Tsunade suddenly noticed that Tony's body seemed to be reacting to his treatment. This is. Autophagy. Before everyone stunned eyes, Tony began to lose weight at such a rate that he could be discerned with the naked eye. A few minutes later, he stopped. She's stable. Tsunade said as she stepped away from Tony sighing in relief that she managed to buy time for a proper operation. We must take him to the hospital immediately. Hunger. That was the first sensation Tony had when he regained consciousness, followed by thirst. It took him a few seconds to remember Kabuto's attack and he struggled to look around him. He was in a bed next to a window and a curtain. It was a hospital, there was no doubt about it from the smell of disinfectant in the air. He looked down and blinked twice as he saw that his entire torso was bandaged like a mummy. Only now did he notice Karen sleeping against her mattress. She probably fell asleep expecting her to wake up without realizing it. He tried to wake her with his hand, but froze in mid-motion. Why am I so skinny? It was skin, bone, and the occasional vein. He didn't want to imagine how zombie-like he must be right now. A nurse came through the door at that moment and seeing that he was awake, he turned around running while calling someone. Tony sighed as he watched her walk away from her, not even giving him time to order something to eat. He would do it himself, but he didn't feel like he had the strength for it. It's good to see you awake. Tsunade walked into the room. Let me do a quick exam for you. Karen woke up from the movement around her and saw that her older brother had regained consciousness. She would have lunged forward to hug Tony if Tsunade hadn't grabbed her by the collar of her shirt. Where we are? She, she asked hoarsely, how long was I gone? We're in Kanoha, Tsunade replied as she took his blood pressure. 
It's been a week since you passed out. I guess I missed your appointment, sorry. What makes you so sure I accepted the job? Tsunade raised an eyebrow at the statement. You still have ink on your fingers, I guess you were in the office before you came when they told you I woke up, she reasoned without giving too many details. He turned to look at Karen. Can you get me some water? I'm halfway to being a mummy. Karen nodded and left the room to buy a couple of bottles of water. How am I? Tony asked Tsunade. Understanding the implications of the question and being aware of why he found an excuse to take Karen out, Tsunade answered him. We barely managed to stabilize you and we had to take you to the nearest hospital, but we lacked too many tools and medicines, so we had no choice but to return to Kanoha. Tsunade. Your chances of survival were only 1 in 40, she sighed in exasperation. You drain dry in less than 5 seconds. He pointed to the barrel Tony had just realized he was connected to. And you know what? We still had to change the keg every half hour. I had never come across anything like it before. Tsunade looked at the slim body as he frowned. What I still don't understand is that with the amount of nutrients you've taken in, you should have gained some weight back, but you're still exactly the same as before. Do you understand what is happening to you? Can you enlighten me? I need to eat at Tsunade's stern expression, she elaborated a little more my body already requires a lot of food to maintain itself, in order to recover to how I was before I need to eat much more than usual. In fact, your cells were particularly active when you connected to the concentrated solution, before they moved at normal levels. Tsunade rubbed her chin with her hands. And before you interrupt me again, you're fine and you can recover for complete. I have been able to put everything in its place and have patched you up from top to bottom. Your natural recovery has helped your punctured lung to an insane level, you reminded me a bit of my grandfather. So what's next? I won't let you go until you've regained at least two-thirds of the weight you lost, no matter how long it takes. When you achieve that, I'll give you another physical to make sure there are no hidden injuries he instructed her I'll call someone to bring you some food so you can regain strength. I'll be going now, I still have a lot of paperwork to do and you should have some visitors when it's known that you woke up. Do not make unnecessary efforts. He warned her with a murderous look. He left the room just in time to greet Karen who returned with the water bottles in her arms. He handed them to Tony and watched as she drank four liters of water like it was nothing. The next few days were a parade of visitors and each time they arrived, the first thing they saw was Tony eating a quantity of food large enough to make the members of the Akimichi clan recoil in surprise. And in fact, the first visitors were them. Choji, Choza, Mrs. Akimichi, and several clansmen who he got along with or worked for him brought all kinds of snacks and dishes to wish him a speedy recovery. They were in shock when they saw how skinny Tony had become and Mrs. Akimichi nearly passed out on the spot. Then his team members Hinata, Kiba and Akimaru arrived. It wasn't a very quiet visit, it mostly consisted of Hinata trying to calm down an angry Kiba who kept ranting about Kabuto while Tony laughed. Although he did love petting Akimaru during all the fun. Later other companions arrived like Ino, Sakura, Naruto, Shikamaru, Niji and even Lee came over despite having to walk with a crutch. Tony couldn't help but laugh in Shikamaru's face at the news that he too had become a chunin. His face revealed an expression of hilarious impotence. Even Karen couldn't help but cover her mouth to try and contain her laughter. Sakura and Naruto didn't stay too long because according to what they said, Sasuke was going to get treatment from Tsunade soon, so they said their goodbyes. The rest stayed a little longer before saying their goodbyes as well. Tony noted Lee's distracted expression and remembered that this must have been when Tsunade gave him the option to have surgery in order to heal, but it was risky and he was contemplating. Since Lee appeared in the series later, he was sure that the operation would go well. After everyone left, he also sent Karen to her new house after learning that she had been living all week in the hospital, taking care of her. He hasn't even had a proper shower since he came back. This warmed Tony's heart and he felt more than ever that he really did right at that moment. When he was finally alone and finished eating, he was going to sleep to speed up his digestion when a sound appeared in his head. Does that mean Karen officially became Tsunade's apprentice? Tony scoffed amused it seems that my little sister wants to give me a surprise. Well, I'll have to remember to put on a surprised face when he tells me. The host has got Pokemon Mega Pack. Includes the following ingredients and recipes. MOMO Milk. Vanilla Shaped Ice Cream. Appleton Cakes. Small of Oil. 
Lechon Cam. Malasaladas. Melek Berry. Zyder Berry. Berry. Additional Reward Acquired Alchemy Summon Contract. Description A scroll that allows you to make a summoning pact with all 70 varieties of alchemy, a confectioner's dream. They are capable of producing cream and other flavors that are sweeter the greater their happiness. If it is in danger, it will launch jets into the eyes to distract or blind its enemies. In addition, the cream and other flavors it produces have a calming effect and make opponents lose the desire to continue fighting. All summons are female and if a large number of them are summoned, they can temporarily combine to assume their gigantamax form with a height of up to 30 meters. Milsery cannot be summoned. Condition of hiring treat them with kindness and never try to take a bite out of them. To Tsunade's complete shock, she had to release Tony after only a week. After eating the first day and recovering a bit, he started creating his own food and his recovery rate skyrocketed. Even if he wanted her to spend another week for observation, Tony refused because he had too much to do. To begin with, his business could not be resumed due to lack of merchandise and he urgently needed it to open to start earning money. In the Akimichi clan he always had the necessities covered, but now he had his own house and someone to take care of, he needed to pay the bills. The next step was to report to the Hokage's office to have a serious talk with Tsunade about an incident that occurred during his stay in the hospital. It turns out that the two village counselors, knowing of his absence, decided that their ninja food scrolls could not be sold and sent people to the Akimichi clan to try to force their creation method to be given to the village. Not the one with the scrolls, that was something that was in charge of Tenten's family. What they wanted to find out was to know the proportions and cooking methods to be able to produce the dishes with special effects. Tony didn't need to worry about any leaks because the employees literally knew nothing about it. His only job was to replenish stock from warehouse to store, collect cash, and keep watch. He was the one in charge of making the ninja groceries and they only had this effect thanks to the system recipes and the ingredients obtained by his devil fruit. What had infuriated him was that the two counselors were aware of the document that he agreed with Saratobi where the village could not touch his business, but according to them, since the current Hokage had not confirmed the agreement again, it was not valid. When Tsunade saw the document that Tony handed her, she felt very upset. Putting aside the two advisors' abuse of authority and the fact that they hadn't told her before acting, she saw that the document specified that the third Hokage was entitled to bentos for life. She tried to ask for the same thing, but Tony knocked her off her game with a single sentence. You're my little sister's teacher and you can come to eat at my house whenever you want so that I can cook personally, didn't we talk about it before? That was the answer she got along with a puzzled expression from Tony. In the end Tsunade wasn't able to swallow her pride and continue ordering the bentos. She confirmed the document again and added a specific clause that would make it permanent regardless of whether there is a new Hokage, whether the document will be passed down to Tony's descendants, etc. But when she was left alone in her office, she made a mental note to ask Shizen that from today she should buy her bentos at the cooker store. She also needed to have a long boundary talk with the two counselors. Solving the most urgent thing on her agenda, Tony prepared some supplies and tried to use turkey system modified technique on living dolls for the first time. Following the recipe and using both the smoke and oven provided by the system, Tony decided that the first living doll he was going to make would be Brock. Were there other much more suitable options? Sure, but he had gotten a lot of Pokemon related stuff and Brock was a good cook. And from the first generation. He needed to understand exactly how it worked in detail, so he would become his test guinea pig. Two hours later, he opened the oven and on the tray lay a completely naked Brock in a fetal position. After dressing him, he waited a few minutes for his head to start working and began his tests. The results were better than he expected. His personality was so vivid, that if he hadn't been the one who took it out of the oven, he would think he was a real person. He even perked up when he talked about women, almost like a Sanji. When he ordered her to stab him, he looked at him blankly. After several tries, he noted that he would follow any order he gave as a matter of course, but if it involved causing her harm, his mind couldn't seem to process that idea. He also asked her to reveal information that he previously told her he shouldn't and she adamantly refused. I checked his head using a simple probing technique that I managed to learn as a sensor ninja, I can't read memories or anything like the Yamanaka clan, it's just a basic technique to check if there's a seal or something in his mind. And indeed, there was a very complex seal that, from what the system explained to me, is really only for show. 
The brain of the living doll is actually blank, empty perhaps would be a more appropriate expression. What had the doll going alive was the smoke that was used during the baking. The living doll can learn very quickly, and after teaching her the Pokemon food recipes, I asked her to imitate it. He managed to do it on the first try and the taste, appearance and effects are the same. What does that mean? That as long as I have enough dolls alive, I no longer need to cook personally and can delegate this task. I will be able to open multiple store branches with different themes. For example, I can open a Pokemon Center themed cuckoo store and give the store to Brock to sell the Pokemon food. I can open a version of the Yukihira restaurant, open a gourmet hotel, a baratai, etc. I just needed to recreate the characters and have the recipes. So many possibilities. It could spread outside the village. To establish the most exotic and successful food chain in this world. You could even turn it into your own secret spy ring. What determines success in this world? Power, money and information. After snapping out of his cooking fantasies, Tony decided to test Brock's strength. It seemed that he could only do some basic taijutsu, but not use chakra. The current level was roughly at the strength he had during graduation from the academy. It could be said that he took some self-defense classes for his safety without raising too much suspicion. Lastly, he checked what would happen if someone decided to remove one of his living dolls. He burst out in a cloud of black smoke and turned into a roast turkey, which actually contained some kind of toxin that acted as a laxative. Fortunately, he discovered the last part as a reminder of the system. He spent the next few days with Karen in his new house and began deciding which characters to bake after reviewing all the recipes he had. He acquired a few more locations and after two weeks remodeling the locations as specific, he would open new food stores. Not only that, he considered making Alchemy the mascot of his brand. He was adorable and could lure younger children into the business, along with his walking purse as a hem. Parents, he meant that they could come with their parents. He sure would appreciate a sweet and soothing cup for the most restless little ones. He didn't forget to make a clone out of chocolate and send it to watch the roof of the Kanoha hospital from afar. He knew that after the Team 7 fight, he would probably be called to go after Sasuke as one of only two Chunin in his class. Apparently Sasuke's recovery ended up taking longer than it should in reality due to his indirect intervention. Given the opening of multiple stores and the need to explain the secrecy of his new employees to Tsunade so there would be no suspicion of espionage, the Hokage had a lot more paperwork to do and delayed the treatment a bit. He seriously considered revealing the trick of using clones to speed up the work, because this way he could spend more time teaching Karen. But she dismissed it remembering Sasuke's escape. If she could get out of his position, then she might decide to personally intervene and knock the boy out. This would lead Orochimaru's envoys to unleash chaos in order to kidnap his target. He would consider revealing it after the incident and after Naruto's departure from the village. He was preparing the ingredients to bake another character, when he received the memories of one of his chocolate clones. Looks like the four sound ninjas have already reached the village. Tony caught a glimpse of Taiyuya and company on the rooftops. What are the Jonin watchmen doing? They shouldn't be able to pass the barrier so easily he frowned unless Sarutobi won't change the configuration of the barrier after Orochimaru's defection, but he couldn't be that stupid right? But for some reason, he didn't doubt for a second that this was probably the case. You really weren't a good Hokage Sarutobi, he sighed in exasperation. He put away the freshly prepared ingredients, prepared his kit, and waited at his house. It didn't take long for a member of the ANBU to arrive indicating that he should go to the Hokage's office in a hurry. Upon his arrival he saw Shikamaru, Sakura, Naruto, Niji, Kiba and Choji. Are we going to have a party? He pretended not to know what was happening and looked around before frowning. What's with this tense atmosphere? Sakura explained Sasuke's escape again before Sasuke knocked her out. Right now it's impossible to send ninjas to chase Sasuke, Tsunade explained as she looked at everyone present Tony and Shikamaru, both of you are the only Chunin of your generation, so I will appoint you leaders and you will go after Sasuke for his capture accompanied by the genin present except for Sakura he ordered Shikamaru will be in charge of Naruto and Niji, while Tony he will be the one to lead Choji and Kiba. He gathers the necessary and leave in less than 10 minutes. Yes. They all answered. They left the Hokage's office and scattered. Tony left a note at home so Karen wouldn't worry and knew that she was out on a mission. 
He then went to the entrance and waited for the rest. Everyone arrived and even Lee and Sakura came to see off the two temporary teams. Tony looked at the clouds as he ignored the scene of Sakura asking Naruto to bring Sasuke back. He was one of the least liked parts of the series. Fortunately it didn't last too long and they got going soon enough. Shikamaru, do we have information from the other side? Tony asked. According to Sakura, there are four ninjas with the emblem of the village of sound. Two of them seem normal, but there is one that seems to have two heads and others with several arms. We don't know anything else. I see. As they continued to jump from branch to branch, Tony wondered. Should I tell them about the skills they have? Tony knew that Sasuke would be fine even after he ran away, but revealing what he knew could cause the Sound 4 to be defeated more quickly and Naruto would not face Sasuke alone in the Valley of the End. After recovering, it was the thought of bringing Sasuke back that motivated Naruto to leave the village for three years to train with the perverted sage. Also, reinforcements from the Sand Village should be on their way. He remembered that Gara should appear against Kimimaro while Tamari would help Shikamaru. As for Kankuro he doesn't remember. But by elimination, he should appear with Kiba. Tony, what are you thinking? Shikamaru noticed that Tony was too quiet and his instincts gave him a pang. Nothing really, he sighed. I'm just surprised how far some people are willing to go for power. Her comment of his caused Naruto to grit his teeth, but he couldn't refute what he had said. Choji, Kiba, and Shikamaru exchanged glances. Knowing Tony closely compared to the rest, they were sure there was more on his mind than he was saying. One shouldn't be fooled by Tony's fine culinary skills, they knew that despite his usual cheerful demeanor, his thought process was a bit frightening. There was a reason why he was the one calling the shots in Kiba and Hinata's team. Shikamaru sometimes talked to Tony and noticed that he had knowledge far beyond what he believed in some subjects. He sometimes made the occasional unconscious slip that left Shikamaru thinking for hours. Choji was the one who knew him best of the three and found out that Tony seemed to have an incredible capacity for analysis and creativity, many things that he said were going to happen really ended as he had said. If it wasn't for their knowledge of his past, he would have suspected that he was a missing member of the Nara clan. We found the trail. Kiba and Akamaru reacted when they were close to the border of the Country of Fire. Look like they're tired. Niji looked around and was surprised. Tony knew that the Sound 4 must have met Genma and Reido. By now they should have sealed Sasuke in a barrel and found a place to rest. It's possible they ran into some deserted ninja or something and had a fight, Tony said. If so, they must be exhausted by now and it would be our chance to get closer. Let's do it then, Shikamaru came to a similar conclusion. After advancing a few minutes more, they found the four of the Sound resting in a corner of the forest. They had to hold Naruto down so he wouldn't move forward driven by his emotions. Where's Sasuke? Choji asked without being able to see the ninja. He's inside that barrel, it looks like he's in the middle of some kind of transformation. Niji scanned the place with his Byakugan and found his target. Then. Watch out. The four sound ninjas suddenly attacked his position, revealing that they were aware of his presence. Shikamaru tried to trick them into trapping them in his shadow, but failed and they were all trapped in Jirobo's Dome of Rocks. The rest of the sound ninjas leave while Jirobo stays behind to delight in absorbing everyone's chakra. Now what should I do? Tony wondered as he gazed at the Dome of Rocks. Being aware of the plot, he had switched his position with a chocolate clone before he was caught. He could either wait for Choji to break the dome for the others to escape or... Ding! A critical point in the plot has been detected. New Quest Heavyweight Battle Choose one of the three tasks. Task 1 Refrain from participating in Sasuke's rescue and let everything happen as written. You know the team will survive, albeit just barely. Just rescue them after their fights and make their recovery more enjoyable. Task 2 You are not a mere spectator, the honor of your village is at stake and your hands itch defeat the six sound ninjas. Kimimaro 01 Sakan and Yukon 02 Kidamaru 01. Jirobo 01. Tayuya 01. Task 3 Ambush Sasuke after the battle with Naruto and take his life. He is a traitor to the village and his thirst for power is out of control. Who will know it was you? Reward depending on the chosen task and its level of completion. Note sometimes you can't choose your path, but this is not the case. 
Tony almost feels like swearing. One option is to do almost nothing, another to do too much, and the last task was suicidal to say the least. Surely Itachi or someone else would find some way to find out what happened. Like using the Edo Tensei, for example. You can think on your toes which one will give a better reward. I choose task 2. Noted, good luck host. Thank you. Given the huge task and amount of fighting that should occur next, Tony prepared some food using his recipes that have temporary buffing effects. He still had some time until Shikamaru came up with an escape plan. Accelerated chakra regeneration, skin hardening, resistance increase. Meanwhile, Jirobo was having the best meal of his life. Why does the chakra I'm absorbing taste like chocolate? Him, he thought as he licked his lips. It was the first time it happened to him and he was delighted, after finishing with the brats, he should take the bodies and study that he made the chakra take on that flavor. Inside the dome of rocks. It's sucking chakra out of us, Niji explained. Let us out. Naruto yelled. Damn. The wall is recovering on its own, Kiba complained. As they complained non-stop, Niji noticed that Shikamaru, Tony and Choji were calm. Have you given up? Don't you smell it? Choji smiled and replied. Smell. Niji was taken aback as he put his hand to his nose. Was the enemy injecting poison gas? It's chocolate, Kiba suddenly said. You mean? Yes Shikamaru put his finger to his lips to indicate that they should not say anything so that the enemy could not notice. Before everyone's eyes, the Tony next to them turned into a chocolate clone that broke pieces of himself for the others to eat. They all took a piece because they understood that the intention was that they will recover the lost chakra with the special food. Outside the dome of rocks. That will be enough, Tony looked in his direction. If I give them more chocolate, the clone will disappear and Jirobo will notice his absence. Let's get started. He put his hands on the ground. Gluttony bitter swamp. The ground around Jirobo started to change and he couldn't stand his ground to keep up the technique. He jumped up and walked away from the area to watch as he turned into a large puddle of coffee. Is there anyone else? Jirobo peered around him as the dome of rock partially dissolves into coffee, giving the team inside an outlet. So bitter, Naruto complained. Couldn't you use milk chocolate for the clones, Tony? Dark chocolate is too much. You just don't know the taste of grown-ups. Tony came out from behind the trees and looked at him with a look of contempt. Dark chocolate is much better than milk chocolate. Kiba laughed at the dispute. Hinata actually asked to use milk chocolate clones as well, so she knew Tony could do it if he wanted. He could even add almonds and other things. Mind you, you should never be asked to make white chocolate. Anko Sensei once asked out of curiosity and the look Tony gave her made her and everyone in the team shiver. No one ever brought that subject up again. Looks like I have another dish on the menu Jirobo commented I'll take care of you and then I'll eat the chocolate that's left on you the strange thing is that when he made that statement, everyone turned to look at him as if they had grown two heads and six wings. Did he just say he wanted to eat something from Tony without paying? And she had said it in front of him. Shikamaru, don't forget our goal, Tony said blankly, we don't have to face this brute, go chase his companions and bring Sasuke back to the village. I take care of him. Choji and Kiba, you follow Shikamaru. The group looked at each other and waited for Shikamaru's decision. He was the only one besides Tony who had decision-making power. Okay, he agreed after thinking about it for a few seconds, but promise you'll catch up with us soon. Sure, Tony promised, I'll treat you all to a barbecue with my special sauce. Shikamaru nodded and took the rest of the team to leave. Here's. Jirobo tried to intercept them, but stopped to avoid a magma projectile lava release. Tony was holding a tomato as he tossed it up and down his hand. Come on, get out, he told them. Jirobo could only watch as they ran away as Tony threw more tomatoes at him that burst into magma. Damn child. Jirobo looked at him angrily. My food is leaking. I'm going to give you a painful lesson about not getting into other people's food. Tony waited for him to finish the speech and watched as dark lines began to appear on the surface of Jirobo's skin. Cursed Seal Level 1 Tony looked around and when he confirmed that they were alone, he nodded and looked at Jirobo. Let's finish this, I still need to eliminate your companions and Kimimaro. Do you know about Kimimaro? 
Jirobo was surprised by Tony's statement and narrowed his eyes. There aren't many people who know of its existence, it seems that instead of killing you, I'll have to settle for drying up your chakra, crippling your limbs and taking you to Mr. Orochimaru. Let's go. Tony rushed towards the enemy. Let's see how long you can last. Jirobo charged at Tony with a violence-hungry smile and prepared to strike him. Don't worry, it'll be quick, Tony exclaimed when they were about to hit each other. He opened his mouth and exhaled a large amount of black smoke. What's this? Jirobo frowned as he stepped into the smoke. A smoke screen. Tony jumped back and waited for the smoke to clear. All that was left where Jirobo was was a pile of mushrooms. If you thought we were going to have a great battle, you overestimated yourself a lot, commented Tony looking at the mushrooms. You were just the perfect test subject to try the breath of N. How long did it take to remove it? Should I wait a few minutes before trying to catch up to everyone or should I just go now? Decisions. In the end I made the decision to continue, but when I was close to the place, I would wait a bit to intervene. These matches were quite necessary for everyone's personal growth and the only reason why he intercepted Choji's match was because he had already partially fixed the attitude he had over time. The next one should be Kadamaru, he's the one I like the least of all the sound guys he complained I mean, who in their right mind signs a summoning contract with spiders. Not to mention that most of his attacks are spitting of some kind. He is just gross. He took a while to follow the marks left by the equipment and hear the sound of the fight and made sure to stay more than a hundred meters away. Niji's Biakugan has a range of fifty meters and he couldn't trust that there weren't a few spider webs to warn Kadamaru of the arrival of reinforcements. He took out a spyglass with an anti-reflective lens from his ninja bag and watched the battle from afar. Damn, that huge spider is really disgusting. A shiver ran down Tony's spine as he saw Kadamaru summon the creature. Oh, now it's activating the second level of the cursed seal. What is the point of the third eye? Maybe it will help you aim. He waited for Niji to paralyze Kadamaru by sending chakra through the arrow thread that pierced his body and rushed in to steal death. Niji, watch out. He yelled as he threw Dirausa's two knives at Kadamaru's heart and head. Niji was about to jump in for the finishing blow, when he heard Tony's convenient arrival and decided not to risk it. He was hurt enough already. Kadamaru's three eyes narrowed at the sight of the two sharp knives. Sha Sha. Tony landed near Kadamaru and summoned one of the knives back to his hand to decapitate the ninja. Although in the series he was supposed to be finished, he never hurts to be sure. When we get back, you should make an appointment for the hairdresser. You don't look very good. Tony teased as he examined Niji's injuries. Just shut up and give me something to eat, I may not be able to go on but I'll take it. A vein bulged on Niji's forehead at Tony's foul mood. Sure, take it. Your favorite cucumber sandwich. It's not my it doesn't matter, give it to me. Niji was too tired. He just wanted to eat and get some sleep. While Niji ate, Tony took a few minutes to dress his wounds and apply first aid. Summoning technique. With a puff of smoke, an alchemy appeared at Tony's side. Take him back to the hospital in Kanoha. I can't stay because we're still in the middle of the chase. Alchemy waved her hands and disappeared with Niji in another puff of smoke using reverse summoning. There are two, there are four left. Right now, Taiyuya should be carrying the barrel with Sasuke, but with Shikamaru and the rest's trickery, they should temporarily get the barrel back. Then Yukon and Sakan should fall off the cliff along with Kiba and Akamaru, before Kimamaro's arrival. Should he try to go after Taiyuya first or go off course and take care of the twins? Hmm, but if I run into Taiyuya and Shikamaru first, I have no reason to go back and deal with Yukon and Sakan. It would be strange if I rescued him and instead of chasing Naruto, I went in the opposite direction he pondered a little let's go for the twins first then. It took him a long time to find where they fell, but the explosive tag trails came in handy. He made sure to pass a good distance from where Tatuya and Shikamaru were facing each other and carefully jumped down the cliff. That looks like it hurts. Tony winced when he saw the situation. Kibo was stabbing himself to get one of the twins out of his body. He made it, but his condition is pretty bad. He had to hide while he rescued Akamaru and lost his gaze for a moment. Flashback moment, for sure. Too bad I don't remember what I was seeing right now Tony looked from him to the twins it seems that Yukon is quite tired. 
Oh perfect, they have been combined again. Let's not give them time to think, I think Akamaru was pretty bad right now. Wait, is that unconscious there Choji? Tony was startled when he noticed his clanmate behind one of the rocks it seems that he also fell with Kiba here, he's a bit bruised, but I can see that he's still breathing. Okay, no more delays. Gluttony Great Red Rain he cut a large number of stones from the cliff walls and hurled them at the twins, who when they noticed the shadows on the ground, raised their heads to see a thick rain of tomatoes falling on top of them. An illusion. Sakan says before the strange scene TCH, they have only managed to make him fall in one because Yukon is recovering. Besides, who has thought of such a ridiculous illusion? Surely that fat boy will be hiding somewhere. Is it to buy time and for the boy and the dog to leave? He made a hand seal. Release. But the tomatoes kept falling and they were getting closer. Are they real tomatoes? The absurdity of the situation stunned him for a moment. Did they throw a storage scroll full of tomatoes at him to distract him? But it was already too late to dodge and he couldn't summon the gates to block an attack coming from above. He could only bear the humiliation and make them pay later. Why is it so hot all of a sudden? Sakan noticed that the tomatoes were beginning to glow and change abnormally. Aha! So it is now that you have trapped me in an illusion and the tomatoes were just to make me lower my guard, he scoffed as he laughed maniacally. Liberation. That was the last word he managed to shout before being buried in a magma rain along with his brother. They didn't even have a chance to scream before losing consciousness and being cooked alive. Have they fled? Tony doubted that he could have really defeated the twins, he suspected that they were just acting and would appear at any moment. Just to be sure, he checked the task panel. Task 2 You are not a mere spectator, the honor of your village is at stake and your hands itch defeat the six sound ninjas. Kimimaro 01 Sakan and Yukon 22 Kadamaru 11 Jirobo 11 Tayuya 01 Wait, really? Tony wasn't going to complain about an easy win, but he found the situation a bit anticlimactic. Shaking his head, he went down to Kiba and Choji and sent them back to the village with Alchemy just like he did with Niji. Let's see, by now Shikamaru should be holding Taiyuya's hands and Lee should have caught up with Naruto, taking his place in the confrontation against Kimimaro. Now the question was would he get there in time to see Lee drunk or would Gara beat him to it? I can't believe I got more tired climbing back up the cliff than fighting Yukon and Sakan. If it can be called a confrontation, Tony snorted as he looked around and located the direction in which to move next. Let's see. I think it was that way. Five minutes later. No, it's clear I went in the wrong direction, half a turn. He didn't recognize the trees at all or see the markings. Fifteen minutes later. Aha. Tony was pleased to find Shikamaru and Taiyuya locked in a contest of will and determination. Hey Shikamaru. Do you mind if he dances with me now? All yours. Shikamaru told him as sweat trickled down his forehead she's too energetic for my liking. System, the specific mission that I must defeat and not necessarily eliminate. So if I knock her unconscious it should be enough, right? Correct. Cool. If, unlike the rest of the sound ninjas, he wanted to try and catch Taiyuya and bring her back to the village, not eliminate her. She was a character he liked a lot when he watched the series and was the only one of her group who seemed to still have a measure of moral sense when he criticized Shikamaru for sacrificing her teammates to reach her. He could try to work with it. Her character was arrogant and cruel towards most people, but Tony wanted to see what reason she had for following Orochimaru and see if he could change her mind. Her hair also gave away that she was from the Uzumaki clan and who knows, maybe she will get a sister for Karen although he should think of some way to contain the remote control of the cursed seal. He didn't want Orochimaru to find out about her capture and remote control her only to be forced to die. Gluttony Dragon Beard Hey! What are you doing? Taiyuya saw how they wrapped her body with candy threads, turning her into a cocoon from which only her head peeks out I don't have those tastes. Let go of me you pervert. Her strings covered her mouth to shut her up and keep him from biting her tongue. Tony took a tag out of her ninja bag that said seal and attached it to the candy cocoon. Taiyuya noticed that she suddenly lost control of her chakra and the cursed seal deactivated on her own. She could only try to free herself from it with what little physical strength she had left. Do you want to catch her? 
Shikamaru asked as she knelt down and tried to collect herself a bit. Tony offered her a vanilla cookie. Thank you. So you want to take her to the village to be tortured and get information out of her? That might get you some credit. Nah, I want to take her home, Tony answered normally. Taiyuya stopped struggling when she heard that and looked at Tony in disbelief. What had he said? What are you talking about? Shikamaru almost fell off the branch when she heard that. Did she hear wrong? Did she want to take this crazy woman to her house? Did she have such strong tastes? Exactly what I said, Tony stated. Tayuya, right? He he turned around to look into her eyes I like you. How about if I offer you a place in my family? Tayuya's eyes widened when she heard Tony's offer. What the hell was going on? Who is this guy and why is he telling you this? Tony, you can't joke around like that, he's the enemy. Shikamura spoke when he noticed that Tony was serious. Try to put yourself in his place. I deduced that she was kidnapped or found as a child and was subjected by Orochimaru to a hellish level of training where only the best survive he turned his head to look at Taiyuya again when you find yourself in a situation like this, you adapt or you give up and you die she made it this far and until now she was tied to that life with no other options, she didn't have the opportunity to choose nor the power to decide. Now, I have the power and I give him the choice. Shikamura tried to speak, but Tony cut him off with a raised hand. I know what you're thinking, he assured. The village won't accept a fugitive Kunoichi who was under Orochimaru's orders for nothing. No one will choose to trust her or believe she's worth taking a chance on because he can get stabbed in the back by her. He raised a finger and pointed at himself. But I will. Do you want something from her in exchange for letting her stay in the village? If she's willing, I'm sure she won't mind revealing the information she knows about the sound village and Orochimaru. It is not the first time that a village has welcomed a deserter from another place. If she is willing, I will give her a place to live that she won't need her to be constantly on the lookout for her life. If she's willing, I can give her a human life and people to trust. Heck, I can even find her a regular job if she wants to. Taiyuya fell silent after hearing everything Tony said. She was smart, very smart. She was so smart that even Shikamaru praised her during her confrontation and she could tell if someone was acting up, if someone was lying to her or trying to influence her. But no matter where she looked, all the micro-expressions and gestures of the boy next to her revealed that she was only telling the truth with complete honesty. Did she really she could she choose her for once in her life? This made her feel lost. Anyway, you're in no condition to continue and I can't leave her alone like this. She took out a scroll and quickly wrote a few sentences before sealing it and giving it to Shikamu. I'll send you back to Kanoha for now. Give this scroll to Tsunade and she will understand everything. Also, remind her to locate some AMBU with her. I'm pretty sure a certain Danzo will try to do something foolish and no one will like it if I find out he succeeded. Tell him those exact words. Are you sure you can on your own? Shikamu took the scroll. I'll do what I can, he shrugged. By the way, I've already eliminated the other four from the sound and sent the wounded back to the village. Since Naruto and the barrel aren't here, I assume someone else joined the game. Ally or enemy? Enemy, Shikamaru sighed in relief knowing that the rest of his teammates were safe and out of danger. A white-haired ninja took the barrel with Sasuke and Naruto is chasing him, they went in that direction, he pointed out. Nodding, he again used Alchemy's reverse summon to send the two of them back to Kanoha. Oops, I better get going quickly he felt another chakra signature approaching Temari will be here any minute and I don't need any more detours and events, let's go find Kimimaro, Lee and by now probably Gara. Tony left, and in a few seconds, Temari reached the combat zone and looked around. I could have sworn there was someone here a moment ago. Is it my imagination? Meanwhile, somewhere far away in the forest. Damn it. Where I am? Kankuro swore. I've been going around in circles for two hours. Looks like you're late, Tony muttered as he watched the fight taking place several feet away from him. Gara and Lee were fighting Kimimaro. Lee seems to have been snapped out of his stupor, so he will no longer be able to see the drunken fist technique. He also doesn't see Naruto or the barrel with Sasuke, so he must have finished the transformation and both of them have run to the valley of the end. System, I remember that Kimimaro is sick and at this moment his body is at the limit, he moves by sheer will. 
He will die on his account in the middle of the fight, can't the mission be considered completed with this in mind? He questioned. If the host does not interfere in any way, then it will be considered that he has not come into contact with Kimimaro and the record will be incomplete. Also, you shouldn't continue to rely so much on your prior knowledge of this world. What do you mean? As you said, Kimimaro is at his limit and about to die. But your intervention in this world has already started to generate the butterfly effect of it. What are you talking about? Tony was confused at the sudden statement. If you told me that I affected Naruto, Tsunade, Karen and the others, I could still understand it. But Kimimaro? I never met him. I didn't even remember him until Sasuke started running away. It's your food. Me? Tony took a moment to understand what the system was referring to do you mean that somehow Kimimaro has been eating what I supply in my store and that has made his body last longer? He will still die, but he won't necessarily die during the fight, is that it? Yes, according to the system's calculations, he can still live three more days. So I can only defeat Kimimaro the old way, I understand Tony sighed as he watched as the enemy activated the second level of the cursed seal and grew a tail among other physical changes and there goes Gara. thank goodness he has the armor of sand in the face. Lee tries to intervene but is thrown off by Kimimaro's tail strike. Wait, is he serious? They are standing by and watching as the enemy pulls out his spine as a weapon. Don't you know that you should never give the bad guy time to do his number? Although I can't complain either, I'm doing the exact same thing. Oh, he just spit up some blood. He really he is still sick. I think Lee should try to escape, his body is not in condition and he will only be giving trouble in the fight. It's not about whether he's a coward, he's the smartest thing he can do. No more being a spectator, if I keep waiting Gara will try to sink Kimimaro to the ground and the only thing he will achieve is that the battlefield will change for the worse for everyone. Tony wasn't going to let Kimimaro use his fern dance technique to turn the meadow into a forest of bones. What if he had the idea to blow up the bones like a frag grenade? No way. Lee. Gara. What are you doing here? Tony appeared as if he had just arrived in the combat zone where is Naruto and Sasuke. Lee, bring me up to date, do I only have to worry about the white-haired boy or Gara too? Tony. The enemy is only the bone ninja. Garakin is helping us replied Lee cheerfully when he saw that more reinforcements arrived. At least Tony thought he was trying to smile, he had his body so bruised that one of his eyes was half closed. How can he even stay on his feet? You're Tony, Gara said when he saw their arrival. One of the things he did after what happened in Kanoha was to find out who the ninja was that led him to defeat to the point of having to free the Shikaku. Naruto only mentioned his name after the fight once, but it was enough for her to pay attention. No hard feelings, googly eyes, taking care of the Kagaya clansman comes first. Googly eyes. Tony. Lee was a little alarmed by the nickname that his partner gave Gara. Do you know that I am from the Kagaya clan? Kimimaro secretly raised his guard when he saw someone else arrive, but seeing that he was just another child, he reverted to his previous state. Having to take out three enemies instead of two made no difference to him. But he was a little surprised that someone so young could recognize his clan, since he was the last survivor and would soon perish. White hair, bone manipulation, and those two red dots on your forehead, Tony pointed out. If you're not from the warlike Kagaya clan, then you're pretty good at cosplaying. So you've been able to recognize the features of my clan Kimimaro and nodded when the small doubt in his mind was resolved but that won't change anything. I will make sure that Oro Kimurusuma gets what he wants and I won't let you bother him or hinder him. Really? Tony raised an eyebrow as he looked at the dying Kimimaro. We could escape and resume pursuit in, say, three days. Right after you die from the disease you have your clan is pale, but not that pale. Is he sick and he's so strong? Lee was surprised to find that out and clenched her fist subconsciously. That's why he was coughing up blood for no apparent reason. Gara frowned. He thought he was holding his own against Kimimaro, but it turned out that he could barely hold his own against a dying ninja. My life is not important as long as Oro Kimurusuma's goal can be achieved, Kimimaro declared. And if I have to die here, then my mission will be to take each and every one of them with me to the afterlife he assured as he adjusted his stance to resume the fight. Sure, but let's fill up the fuel tank first. Tony reached into his ninja bag and tossed to Gara and Lee what he pulled out of it. 
They both took the flying object and looked at their hands, widening their eyes. That is. Wrapped in paper, there was rye bread, tomato, lettuce, cheese, tender meat, onion. Crescent moon burger, Tony told them. Eat it while it's still fresh. Let's see who understands the reference. What series is it from? Since Kimimaro wouldn't die mid-fight at a critical moment, it was best to try to be in the best possible state to face him. This hamburger should help Lee move normally for a bit and it would also help Gara. Lee knew full well how useful Tony's meals were, so he said nothing and gave it his all to send the appetizing burger all the way down his stomach. Try not to choke, Tony reminded him when he saw his enthusiasm. His warning came late when Lee suddenly began to beat his chest as his face turned red. He had to throw the canteen of water at her to help him. Gara next to him, stared at the burger for a few moments, before taking a cautious bite. Her eyes widened imperceptibly and she continued eating calmly, as if she had nothing to do with him. But she did not leave a single crumb. Kimimaro did not attack during this time, because he assumed that he was throwing bombs or some kind of weapon at them and it could be a trap. When he saw that it was hamburgers, he felt somewhat annoyed. It smelled and looked so good and they didn't offer him any. Nope. It has to be a tactic so that they lower their guard and they can attack, sure. Focus Kimimaro, this is all for Orokimurusuma. Don't make fun of me. He, he yelled as he swung the bone whip at Gara. The sand wrapped around him preventing an indirect grab of the weapon. Kimimaro smiled and began to grow the bones in his left hand until it formed a bone drill. Gara didn't take chances and created the best defense he had. Desert Tanuki Shield While they were both immersed in their own world competing between the strongest defense and the strongest attack, Tony watched speechlessly as the two faced off. Why did they seem to continue as if their arrival will not change anything? Didn't they take it seriously? And why was Lee just standing still after eating the burger? Or was a rivalry brewing out of pride and respect? Nah. Hey. Tony was not willing to be ignored do you know what time it is? He clasped his hands together and began to rapidly make seals. Adventure time. Ahem. I mean, it's time for the cooking lesson. Gluttony white vinegar. Gara, Lee, and Kimimaro's eyes widened as a large amount of water clear vinegar rushed toward them like a tsunami. Lee was able to jump in time to avoid the impact, but Gara had to withstand the collision with his sand and Kimimaro was unable to evade in time. The battlefield changed and now it was as if they were standing in the middle of a lake of vinegar. The smell was. Why did you do that Tony? Lee asked, standing in the top of one of the nearby trees. Gara wasn't too happy either after getting out of the vinegar as he floated on a sand platform, he looked at him aggrieved. He now he couldn't keep drilling the ground to replenish sand. Like I said, it's time for the cooking lesson, Tony replied as he walked on the liquid surface using chakra in his feet. Did you know that bones can be softened with vinegar? He he explained with a smile acetic acid together with calcium from the bone forms calcium acetate. While the bone is immersed for several days in vinegar, the bone becomes depleted of calcium. I just have to increase the acidity of the vinegar to reduce that time, he pointed to the point where Kimimaro was coming out. Gara and Lee noticed that the bone spikes on Kimimaro's back no longer seemed as strong and were even slightly sagging, as if they had lost their rigidity. Kimimaro was the most sensitive, noting firsthand the changes the vinegar from his surroundings was causing to his bones. Although his expression was still fierce, inwardly he was quite stunned by the development of events. His Kagaya clan, a clan that on its own could threaten a small country despite its low numbers thanks to its battle potential and powerful bloodline, was it weak against vinegar? How is that possible? He had only been submerged for a few seconds and his bones had softened by 10%. Not only that, the vapors caused progress to continue in a slow but steady fashion. Now it was a real race against time. The longer it takes to eliminate Kanoha's ninjas, the less strength his bones will have. He raised his hands and pointed the fingertips at Tony and Gara before starting to fire bone projectiles as fast as he could. Both were the biggest threat right now. I didn't expect him to realize what a bad situation he's in so quickly, Tony admitted as he dodged the flying bones. Lee, are you planning to join? Yes. Lee replied. Perhaps his chakra control is lousy, but after much effort he had managed to walk on water. Everything for when situations like the one now arose. 
The match turned into an exchange of physical blows between Lee and Kimimaro's tail, with Gara backing up with his sand from the harder blows and protecting the green ninja from bone projectiles. Tony on his side, was limited to dodging and controlling the vinegar-like whipping tentacles and coating Kimimaro with more acetic acid, which accelerated the weakening of the bones. The fight lasted for about half an hour before Lee couldn't continue any longer and had to withdraw. Gara was also tired and was only holding out for the benefits of the hamburger he ate. Tony was also feigning exhaustion, after taking care of Kimimaro, he had no intention of revealing that he could still move. May the fight between Naruto and Sasuke happen as it should. He initially wanted to see the matchup firsthand as a spectator, but he couldn't remember exactly when Kakashi arrived at the venue. What if he blamed him for not helping Sasuke get back? Is that all you have? Kimimaro was puffing a bit, he could still fight for a few more hours if necessary. By now, the clone boy must have he couldn't finish his statement as he spat blood due to the two knives sticking out of his chest. Without prior notice. Startled, he struggled to turn his head to see Tony at his back, holding the knives. You finally let your guard down, he said with a sigh of relief. Tony dropped the knives into the vinegar during the fight and created a vinegar clone and made it approach Kimimaro as if he was using the Hozuki clan's hydration jutsu. Only when he noticed the tiny lapse of relaxation after several minutes of waiting, he quietly got up and stabbed into his vital points. Oro Kimurusama Kimimaro muttered in a barely audible voice before collapsing into the vinegar. Tony sealed the body in a storage scroll before it sank and went with the rest to sit in the tree branches to rest. Do you still have another one of those burgers? Gara asked suddenly. Tony smiled. We reached 600k. Let's see if before the end of the year we touch the million. There was a problem, a big problem that he didn't think of until an hour passed after finishing the match with Kimimaro. The rain came and there was no sign of Kakashi or anyone from Kanoha. She knew that the ninja dog should be following the trails left by the fighting, but since he had sent everyone to Kanoha for treatment using reverse summoning. Maybe he interrupted the tracks. They're really going to force me to go there, huh? Tony thought somewhat frustrated if something happens to Naruto because Kakashi doesn't rescue him in time, to hell with the whole plot. Too variable then. Lee, how are you? I'm much better, he replied with a thumbs up. Your arms are shaking, Gara commented. I'm going to send you to Kanoha for treatment, but I need you to tell me first which way Naruto went. Tony had no idea which way to go from here. I can still move. Lee, I'm the only captain left on this mission and my order is for you to retire and rest. You don't want to overload your body again. Understood. Lee resigned himself. No matter how much he wants to go, he is still subject to the rules of the ninja world. Do you also want to go Gara? No, he refused. My brothers must be wandering around aimlessly by now, I'll gather them up and we'll go back to our village. Okay, thanks for your help. After getting the information from Lee, sending him back, and saying goodbye to Gara, Tony ran in the indicated direction. Wait, didn't Black Zetsu show up at this point? He remembered as he jumped through the branches of the trees he must be watching the chakra of Indra and Ashura. I better make a cookie mask, it would be a pain to have that manipulator breathing down my neck. After reaching the big statues, it wasn't hard to find a bright orange dot. Wow, he's messed up, Tony thought. Naruto's bruises, cuts, and wounds had already started to heal from the Kyuubi's chakra, but it was better to send it quick and retreat. He took Sasuke's striped headband next to him and put it away to leave for him later. He hit the ground to set up the reverse summoning seal and with a puff of smoke, the two of them disappeared. A few seconds later, a plant man with a split face and a black robe with red clouds emerged from the ground and silently looked at the place where they disappeared. Back in Kanoha. I see, so you didn't find Sasuke, Tsunade wanted to confirm. No, Tony assured with a tired face, the place reveals that they had a fight, but I couldn't see any clues to continue tracking his whereabouts and despite knowing that he must be weakened and not far away, I decided to prioritize Naruto's safety since I didn't know how bad was his condition. And why did you come back with him? Tsunade asked. You could have sent it and tried to search the surroundings. For two reasons. The first was that I was tired, I don't know if you were able to talk to Choji and the rest, but instead of a onion-owned battle like they did, I had to face six sound ninjas almost consecutively. To continue searching in this state seemed too dangerous to me. 
And the second reason? I had a bad feeling, it was like someone was watching me, Tony said honestly as he scratched the back of his neck with his hand, with Naruto unconscious and me weak, the last thing I needed was for a seventh sound ninja or someone else to show up. I would like to take advantage of the situation. Actually, it would have been dangerous, Tsunade agreed, you never know, maybe Orochimaru got impatient and sent someone else. You acted well. How's everybody? Tony asked after a moment of silence in the office. Tsunade explained the general situation to him. Choji was hospitalized, but he was not in a bed covered by talismans and seals on the verge of death as in the original version since he was not forced to take the third pill. Kiba and Akameru were also safe, they just needed to recover for a while and Akameru wouldn't be able to walk for a few days due to muscle damage in his legs. Niji had to go through the operating room that looked like a voodoo circle with the number of seals and the formation they used to heal using his hair. Shizun took care of that, so there was nothing to worry about. Shikamaru only had to cast a couple of fingers on one hand, he was the one who received the fewest injuries. But it was that he received a greater emotional pressure. Naruto is basically a bandaged mummy and in a few days he will be as good as new, although his reaction to waking up will not be pleasant. Lee is also recovering from the effort. Do I have permission to withdraw? Tony asked. I want to get checked out too. No need, sit here, Tsunade pointed out as he stood up, I'll check you out myself. He had spent several hours working between papers and a short break would also do him good. Tony nodded and sat up after removing his shirt under Tsunade's instructions, before Tsunade placed both hands on her back and began to examine Tony's condition. You're low on chakra reserves, you have some slightly damaged muscles Tsunade commented on everything she found while he treated her simultaneously in summary, you only need to rest for a week. Don't take quests during this time and everything will be fine. You have one of the best builds I've ever seen in my career. Thanks, Tony thanked him as he dressed, was there a problem with Taiyuya? The redhead in the sound. I have placed her under surveillance by my ANBU and she seems to be. Confused, yes, I think that would be the word Tsunade declared trying to be precise and just as you wrote in the scroll that Shikamaru gave me, it seems that Danzo and his route tried to sneak under the pretext of getting information from the enemy. It was unsuccessful Tsunade raised her hand to reassure Tony seeing him narrow his eyes although Shikamaru told me what plans you have for her, let me clarify that if I don't consider her worthy of a second chance, you can forget about her. I will not risk the village to a possible spy. Of course, Tony agreed. He knew that Taiyuya's matter would not be easy once she returned to the village, but as long as she hadn't been tortured or Danzo had time to reach out to her, there were opportunities. Seeing that she didn't have any bad reaction, Tsunade inwardly sighed with relief and continued explaining. He talked to her as soon as you can and try to get something useful so that no one can say that she is receiving different treatment than she deserves from her. My ANBU will be present during the entire conversation, so you don't need to inform me afterward. Understand. Tony wasn't naive enough to think that the ANBU would only be there to record the conversation and report back. No doubt they were also psychologically analyzing Taiyuya, trying to detect any lies, micro-gestures, etc. One last thing before you go, Tsunade suddenly remembered, your team will officially disband starting today. What do you mean? The news caught Tony off guard. There are several reasons for this. Your promotion to Chunin, the fact that the Aburane clan has finished dealing with the dangerous bees, Kiba's temporary discharge said Tsunade to be honest, I have seen your information and you are quite ahead of the rest of your companions, so that I will form two other teams. Anko will continue to be your superior in the new team while Hinata and Kiba will be assigned a jonin named Kurinai. Shino will take your place on the old team. I was thinking of Karen joining you and Anko, but I don't have the last member in mind. How about Tayuya? Suggested Tony. Not only would he be under the surveillance of a jonin who knows Orochimaru's tricks, but he could also demonstrate his intention to change by doing missions for the village. He has to be able to start from somewhere, right? It's not impossible Tsunade considered in any case, we'll see how everything develops before making any decision. You can withdraw. Tony left the Hokage's office relieved. The story had unfolded more or less as it should and had about three years of time to unfold once Naruto left with Jiraiya for training. He took his return home in stride and claimed the system quest rewards along the way. The rewards are being delivered. 
Reward 3 servings of Limit Break Macedonian A large jar of Jewel Jam Dungeons Gobblers 3 servings of Great Achuan Turtle Egg Omelette Discworld A gourd of flavored sparkling heroes water to lemonade No side effects cold drink and hot drink recipe Monster Hunter Detected that the host managed to complete task 2 in full. Reward for completing the task without failure Interdimensional Travel Ticket Single Use Item Demon Awakening Medallion 22 the two parts of the Demon Awakening Medallion have been automatically combined and now has the full version, the host can awaken his gourmet demon whenever he wants. The next thing he saw was a red system notification blinking much more intensely than usual. Caveat. It is strongly suggested to make certain preparations before starting the awakening or the consequences are unimaginable. Wow, it's been a while since I got another ticket. He asked me where I'm going this time he commented as he examined the rest of the rewards there are quite a few good things. System, what kind of preparations do I need to do before using the Demon Awakening Medallion? The host is recommended to find an isolated, secret and resistant place, since once everything is finished successfully it will enter a period of temporary weakness where even a child could take down the host. He will also need to have a huge amount of food within his reach to supply the nutrients that the body will require during awakening. It is better that there is no one in the vicinity for your own safety. Lastly, the host needs to be mentally prepared, as awakening involves a great deal of pain and should not, under any circumstances, lose consciousness. How long will my weakened state last, because no one can be around, and exactly how much food do I need? The host will not be able to move for two days. After that period, he will regain mobility but his strength will be reduced to that of a civilian for a month until the cells adapt the precise amount of food cannot be calculated, but it is estimated that the host will need about 5 tons minimum, and all must be of the best kind. As for why it's better if no one is around, it's because if food isn't enough, hunger can drive the host to devour anything around it rocks, trees, and even humans. I see Tony was somewhat perplexed, but considering the leap in strength that he would obtain after the awakening of his gourmet demon, he understood that there is no gain without sacrifice still, it is better that I prepare myself. A month of absence will be easy for many people to notice, he murmured somewhat worried. He wouldn't try to wake up now, he needed some time to work out the situation with Tayuya. He also wanted to spend time with his little sister and prepare his business for a long absence. Should I involve Tsunade? He could use the excuse that he needs to go away for a month somewhere as a cover, but that might cause someone to try to track him down and ambush him. The absence of him in the village could also give some ideas. It's not like this world is peaceful, he sighed tiredly as he reached his house. After a nice dinner with Karen and a couple of days of well-deserved rest, Tony visited Taiyuya every day for the next few days in the prison where she was being watched and talked to her. All before the inevitable presence of Tsunade's Anbiu. Taiyuya during this time had expected to be tortured or even considered having her memories violated to get information out of her and when Danzo tried to make the move on her, she mocked herself for believing in Tony even if she was a little. What did she really expect? But the confrontation of the masked people caught her off guard. Based on the words they exchanged, she understood that there was a faction trying to take her away while the Hokage faction defended her. Tony's name was mentioned several times and it was clear that each side had a different attitude towards him. She tried to get information out of the ANBU after the event with some kind words, but all she was told was that Tony would visit her in a while and the rest of her was silent. Her treatment was kind, more than she should receive with her identity. She didn't pressure her to loosen her tongue or use subtle mind games. They didn't even drug her food. Not only that, the food was the best she had ever tasted in her life. She only found out from the container that it came from a store called Cuckoo. And all because of one person, Tony. Was it someone with some influence apparently? The silence helped her calm down and really consider if she had a choice. She replayed her encounter with Tony in her mind dozens of times and tried to extract as much information as she could from her memories. She ignored the ANBU watching over her and was unaware that she occasionally subtly changed her expression and her gaze, revealing part of her thoughts. Hope, worry, restlessness, fear, anger, doubt. Everything was noted down by the ANBU and reported to Tsunade, who felt somewhat surprised by the conclusion. Taiyuya displayed all the traits of someone she was struggling with internally. In other words, there really was a possibility that she would betray Orochimaru. What did Tony see? 
Tsunade couldn't help but take out the document with the information she had on Taiyuya and she once again read the part that would probably be the most problematic, the cursed seal. Even before she took office, she was already aware that another ninja in the village had the same seal and she just so happened to be Tony sensei Anko. Perhaps she was a part of what influenced Tony's decision. If her teacher could be accepted into the village even with the seal, why not Taiyuya? But Tsunade knew Orochimaru's methods better, so she studied a way to contain the seal during her absence in the village, but she didn't spend enough time on it and it was still in the early stages of it. Maybe it was time to pick it up again. 1010. Oh, there you are. I almost didn't see you crouching behind the counter, Tony greeted as he entered the gun store. Tony. How can we help one of our best customers? 1010 smiled happy to see him. It wasn't an exaggeration to say that 15% of the current income from his family's business was related to the scrolls they made for the Kukin Ninja groceries. He adds the friendship they formed during their time at the academy and got along quite well. I've come to make a special request. How big is the space you can make on a storage scroll? I don't mean the small ones that use my store, but with the scrolls of more than a meter, the big ones. MM1010 put a finger to her chin and thought before answering it depends on what you want to store, besides, there is also a strict limit regarding what we can sell since it is considered a strategic resource. I have a huge order of several tons of ingredients and food, Tony told him, so I need scrolls that can carry as much as possible. It's okay even if they're single use. I see, in that case we can prepare some 4-ton scrolls, but it won't come cheap and we'll need a few days to finish them, 1010 calculated. How many tons do you need to bring? 20 tons. Then you will need 5 scrolls. We will make them in 6 days, single use and I will have to accompany you to see how you store the food inside then he added I trust you, but it is the rules of the village. All good, see you when you come to pick up the order. Of course. 1010 waved her hand goodbye. That solves how to carry the food, now where should I hide? Tony's thought was simple. Since the system had suggested a minimum of 5 tons of food, he'd quadruple that amount to be sure. It would be an insult to his pride if, having the ability to transform things into food, his gourmet demon would go hungry during his awakening. The next few days consisted of stockpiling the food he would use and continuing to talk to Taiyuya, who was slowly opening up to Tony and Karen. Yes, Tony considered it unwise to interrupt Taiyuya's visits for a month, so he made Karen accompany him during a few visits and asked her to continue coming to talk to Taiyuya in her absence. He got Tsunade's permission for it. Perhaps it was just her illusion, but the first time he came to see her with Karen he had the feeling that the curve of Taiyuya's lips moved imperceptibly to form a smile before returning to a hard expression. What Tony didn't know was that taking Karen, who Taiyuya knew from her conversations that she was considered as her little sister, to see her, he gave Taiyuya a great show of sincerity and removed a lot of the remaining mistrust. Was it a smart move to introduce your family to an enemy? Of course not. Karen's shyness and inexperience were very amusing to Taiyuya, especially seeing that she wasn't really afraid of her or looked at her with hate or disgust. Although that confidence was perhaps because she was locked up, there were ANBU around her and she had her older brother by her side, she didn't take away from liking the girl. Maybe it was because they were both redheads. Who knows, but he would take advantage of Karen's visits to try to find out more about Tony. He noticed that Karen loosened up a lot when she talked about him. Tsunade still didn't believe that Taiyuya was being good and making friends so to speak. He even gave out a few crumbs of information inadvertently, almost all of it was irrelevant and already known to the village, but he showed his attitude a bit. Tony stopped by the Akimichi clan, Hyuga, Inazuka, Nara, Yamanaka and others during a few breaks to visit them and bring them some edible gifts. He superficially commented that he was going out for a few days and would appreciate it if they took a look at his business and his family. He even told Karen that he could throw a slumber party with Ino, Hinata and Ko. All after a great meal, of course. The place that Tony decided to use during his awakening was a ravine about 20 kilometers from the village. He was far enough away to avoid prying eyes, but close enough to return to the village if necessary. He left at sunset after making sure everything was tied up and nothing was forgotten. After wandering off along the main road for an hour, he created a large number of chocolate clones and scattered them in all directions without hiding the action from him. A minute later, five ninjas appeared at the dispersal point. Has he discovered us? Asked one of the masked men. 
It's unlikely if he was so careless, maybe he's just taking precautions. 7. Can you follow it? His technique is not perfect, the ninja who was called answered, most of the clones are very similar, but there is one with a slightly different chakra signature. In agreement. 7 and 12 will follow that chakra signature, for, 20 and I will go in three different directions to cover the rest just in case. If we don't find anything in three hours, we'll catch up with you by following the hidden signs. Remember, Danza-sama wants him alive. Yes. X4. The five ninjas dispersed as arranged and several minutes later, the dirt on the ground swelled up to reveal Tony. Idiots, he huffed as he pulled his body out of the ground, just because he has a preference for using gourmet ninja techniques doesn't mean he can't use normal techniques. That reminds me, I'll have to use the chakra paper when I'm done with this to see my affinities. It's always good to know what elements I'm in tune with and I have a few years to learn some related techniques. The ravine where he wanted to go was not even in this direction, he had to go back half an hour and change direction again. When he reached the ravine, he didn't jump down, but instead focused chakra into his feet and walked up the wall until he stood face down on the ledge and carved a hole, turning the stone into salt. He dug carefully and by the time he got inside, he closed the hole with more naturally formed crystals of salt. He dug a chamber well into the night and stored the leftover salt in a storage scroll. He made some discreet holes for ventilation and stuck some torches for light. He took out everything he had stored in the large scrolls and his field of vision was covered by food, only the ceiling could be seen and it was only a small part. System, use the medallion. Ding. The host requests to start the awakening of the gourmet demon, will you confirm the order? Yes. Command confirmed. Reminder to the host, you must not lose consciousness at any time. Initiating the stimulation of the gourmet cells. The gourmet demon is waking up. The pain came in different waves. First it was a constant itch all over his body, then it became a dull ache, and before Tony could readjust his mind, he felt as if his body was collapsing. His bones began to crackle like popcorn, his flesh burst, and his blood turned thick as jelly. Tony wanted to scream, but it wasn't his voice that came out of his mouth. Can I go out to eat? His body began to change and the clothes he was wearing were destroyed in the process. His hair fell bald, his eyes turned completely white and his ears got a little smaller. His nose grew and his mouth widened. His arms gained muscle and grew disproportionately large reaching to the thighs, while strange markings emerged from his shoulders to his wrists. Her tongue lolled from her mouth and a strange bloodred symbol took shape on it. I'm hungry. Tears began to form in his eyes as he rubbed his stomach with a childish expression. His nose twitched as he smelled something in the air, he looked up and was surprised at everything around him so much food. Is for me? Can I eat it? Yes. Tony's voice came out of his mouth. All the food in this place is for you. Enjoy. Hurrah. He reached out with big hands and began to throw all the food into his mouth. It's very good. I like it. A few drops of drool trickled down while he was eating and when they hit the ground, they dissolved some holes, as if it were a powerful acid. He started with fruits and vegetables, going through meat, fish and pasta dishes. Cheese, lemonade, desserts, the only condition in his food order was proximity. After eating seven tons, he saw that there was still a lot of food left in the room and stopped eating momentarily while he stood up. His jaw dropped to the height of his waist and his ribs bulged on both sides as a large purple eye formed in the darkness of his wide mouth. A strong suction gushed out and the food was sucked in. Minutes later, there was no food left in sight and his jaw returned to normal. I'm still hungry he rubbed his slightly bulging stomach as he looked around him in disappointment, isn't there more? Crack. At that moment, a crack echoed through the chamber, and several masked ninja entered. Seven, is that him? His chakra signature is going through a strange process, but it's definitely him. Twelve was right, you actually tricked us with a modified clone and went a different route. It hasn't been easy tracking you down. You will not fool us with this disguised Tony, you better give up. Danza-sama is getting impatient with you and gave us clear orders. Hey, can I eat them? He applauded excitedly there are two women, they are my favorites. Hey can I? Tony's consciousness was somewhat fuzzy after the whole process so far, so his mind only processed half of the words as he tried to stay awake. Was he still hungry? 
he said something to eat, do you want to eat some stones? Anything to get this over with, he won't be able to take much longer. Sure, make it your dessert, Tony's voice responded. I promise. Meanwhile, the root were observing his strange behavior. 13, I think she's in the middle of some kind of ritual. Maybe it's part of his Kekiai Genkai, should we wait for it to finish before capturing it? He seems to have a conflict of identity, Twenty pointed out. No, I think we should capture him now, for opined. If we wait and his strength increases, he could be troublesome and make it difficult to capture. I'm in favor of what Four said, Seven confirmed. Let's do it. The sounds of banging, crashing, and exploding followed before eerie screams and cracks ensued. Soon only a few chewing sounds were heard and a loud belch caused a dead silence in the place. One hour later. Awakening completed successfully, the host will now enter a period of temporary weakness. It's finally over Tony thought after returning to his body I don't know what the hell the gourmet demon ate, but the aftertaste is unpleasant, it has some kind of strange metallic taste he complained while spitting I wish I could move to drink something of water and wash away this bad taste, but I'm too tired. I'll just sleep for a while. Tony didn't wake up until three days later and could barely move properly. His whole body felt stiff and numb, he drank and ate something to get the bad taste out of his mouth and leaned his back against the wall. He tried to feel the changes in his body, but other than feeling less restricted for some reason, he found nothing out of place. System, show me my status. Condition. Name Gluttony, nicknamed Tony. Current World Naruto. Ability Devil Fruit Kuku Kuku no Mi no Weakness and Breath Transform Tomatoes into Magma Modified Technique of Turkey's Living Dolls. Weapons Twin Blades of the Dragon King de Rouse. Traits Gourmet Cells Awakened Gourmet Demon Gluttony Homunculus. Summoning Contract Chimera Ants Alchemy. Description A Chunin not to be trifled with, he is halfway to becoming a powerful Jonin. He is loosely known for being the owner of the successful Cuckoo chain of stores and his strange gourmet ninja techniques. His body contains fully active gourmet cells and the gourmet demon has been successfully awakened, allowing additional traits to be gained. He possesses the mysterious ability to transform things into food. Additional note temporarily weakened. Gluttony homunculus. System, is it from Full Metal Alchemist? Correct. What are the additional traits you mention? A great increase in strength permanent, acidic saliva at will, development of the sense of smell at will, accelerated digestion permanent, and the ability to activate his second form temporarily. Strength and smell, good. The saliva. I can try copying some of Turumi's techniques. Tell me the last two. Accelerated digestion permanent the host can digest any food instantly and use the nutrients to recover from most injuries. Includes limb regeneration, expulsion of poisons, etc. Second form activation temporary the host can temporarily open a dimension between reality and non-reality in its abdomen to suck anything in. Everything that enters will be digested and will not be able to come out once the dimension is closed. Warning certain space moves can evade this move. Can I regenerate limbs? Tony yelled in surprise. Limb regeneration is a slow process that demands a large amount of nutrients the stronger the host's body is. A missing arm can take a year to grow back under normal conditions. I guess regenerating arms like Piccolo would be a bit too much of a stretch, he nodded in understanding. Being able to regenerate lost limbs was already pretty good. Well, what can I do for the next month? Tony had a really boring month. Every few days he would gather the necessary amount of chakra to summon an alchemy and this would update him on what was happening in the village. He didn't understand anything he was saying, so he had to engage in mime games to communicate. The rest of the time he spent sleeping, eating and thinking about what to do for the three years before Naruto returned. Leaving training aside, he would like to go visit the other villages and open businesses to increase his portfolio and expand his information network but he was not confident of leaving the village for too long because of Danzo. He even wondered if he should just eliminate him. But he didn't know where he had his base of operations and eyes on his arm would be a headache. Maybe he should talk to Tsunade at length? He knew of Danzo's collaboration with Orochimaru, some of his covert operations in the series with Hashirama's cells, how he undoubtedly had a hand in the decline of people in the Senju clan with Sarutobi's ignorance and the attack on the Uchiha clan. And that wasn't even the first page. 
but he had no evidence or documents to back up his words. And Tsunade could have a certain level of trust with him, but she wouldn't go to the point of acting against a high-ranking person from the village just because of his words no matter how much she wanted to. Besides, bringing up the subject of the Senju clan could be touchy. Was there any way to get the documents? Actually, maybe there is a way, he murmured as he realized a possibility that he had been there all this time, I can't just go and try, it would be. But I know someone who would gladly lend me a hand. She raised her trembling hand. Although I can't contact him in this state, I'll have to wait a little longer. Would removing Danzo from Kanoha change the plot much? To be honest, at this point he lost his patience. Danzo had been after him for too many years and he was sick of him blowing down his neck. He had secured Sasuke for three years and Naruto would have time to power up him away from the village, the world saviors were sure. Let the frame armor do the rest. What can alter his death? Would it prevent Sasuke from reaching Karen's heart on the bridge? Whoops, it looks like there's no Karen on his side anymore. Danzo was giving her too many headaches to continue being patient with him. Until now he had been very cautious, but he only needed one cunning move to hurt her. Decided therefore, before leaving the village on a world trip, Danzo must die. Also, it has to be a clean eliminate. Not the painless kind, but the kind that leaves no traces that can be used for, say, Edo Tensei. As for who would take his place, he cares little. It couldn't be worse than now. In fact, should he try to eliminate the two blood-sucking counselors as well? Tempting. His thoughts did not stop and at the end of the month he left the place directly through the roof. Fresh air at last. Tony took a deep breath after freeing himself from that place. There were drafts thanks to the ventilation holes, but that didn't stop the air from turning vicious after a month. Not to mention that he needed a shower urgently. He searched for the nearest river and after removing the smell from his skin, he sunbathed himself dry and got dressed to return to the village. The gate guards greeted him as he entered and in less than two minutes, both Tsunade and Danzo knew of his return. He's finally back. Tsunade sighed in relief. He's been in the position of Hokage long enough to see the considerable income Tony's chain of stores brought to the village and they were pretty much in need of that money for a while tell him to come see me later. Meanwhile, in another dark place and underground. So he really has returned. Danzo frowned. After not hearing from the route he sent for so long he had his suspicions, but he didn't expect that sending five Jonin elites would be insufficient for the task. He seems like he needed to reconsider Tony's strength. Is there any news in the investigation? I asked the ninja who was half kneeling behind him. They're still at the same point, the masked man reported with an emotionless voice. They insist that the seeds and everything else has been modified with an advanced technique that they don't know and it's impossible to use what we have to start a plantation. Not only that, the moment they try to manipulate a single strand of DNA, there is a complete genetic collapse. If it weren't for the discreet purchases made at the cuckoo store, they wouldn't have anything to work with by now. Danzo rhythmically tapped his fingers on the table as he thought silently. He picked up a scroll and wrote a few lines on it before tossing the document to the ninja behind him. Contact the noble in the land of rice who owes us a favor and have him request a quest from the village with the details of the scroll. Hurry up. Yes. I can't wait any longer, Tony. You added to my forces are a must if I want to become Hokage in the next decade. It's my turn. Danzo murmured. He could already imagine the rapid growth of his forces thanks to Tony's food, enough elite squads to take control in less than one night. A power capable of silencing the voices of the clans and realizing the true potential of the village once and for all. Knock. Knock. Ahead. Tony opened the door to the Hokage's office and poked his head in before stepping inside. He only had one day off before being called for some unknown reason. Did you call me, Tsunade? Tony. Tsunade almost let out an amused sigh. Most people call her Hokage or Tsunadesima, but Tony never formally called her, even if she was her little sister's teacher. She got used to it without realizing it until now and she was too lazy to remind herself. As long as he used etiquette at formal times, he was fine. How was your trip? Her, she asked as she looked up from her documents. Her pupils constricted at the seeping bloody aura for a few moments before the sensation disappeared as abruptly as it came. Tony looked at her blankly at the change in her expression. 
did he have a place on his head where the hair hadn't grown back? But when he looked at her reflection in the river there seemed to be nothing out of place. Tony, Tsunade called, adopting a serious tone, have you eliminated anyone recently? Not that I remember, she answered him honestly, not knowing how accurate his answer was. Some insects tried to bite me, but I scared them away with no problem, he said, referring to Danzo's roots. Why? Tsunade frowned as she studied Tony's puzzled look. His instincts and experience told her that he wasn't lying to her, or even hiding something. Maybe she was just too tired from not being able to drink comfortably these days. It doesn't matter he shook his head trying to dispel her doubts I made you call for two things. The first lies in Taiyuya, after a month of observation, we have come to the conclusion that it is no longer necessary to lock her up. Her attitude aside. Unrefined, she has shared enough information and behaved within what you'd expect, much to the surprise of many, including me. So from now on, she will be included in your team for two reasons. The first is to have Anko watch over her for a while and the second at her request. Because otherwise, using her own words. If you pair me up with some idiots instead, I'll make them eunuchs. Yeah, that seems like Taiyuya's style. Then my current team would be Anko Sensei, Taiyuya, myself, and Karen, she stated. Yes, not only that, since you picked her up, she will live with you too Tsunade pointed out also, for the moment I have applied a measure against Orochimaru's cursed seal that I have developed in recent days. As long as she didn't take the initiative to break the blockade, we don't have to worry about some things for a while. Great, I'll go visit her as soon as we're done here. Then Tony thought of something, I'll need a new tape for her, she can't keep using the sound one. Shizun will give you one later Tsunade waved her hand at such a small matter the second reason I called you is that we have received an urgent mission from a nobleman from the land of rice, in which he expressly requests your participation. What mission grade is it? Grade C mission. Tony raised an eyebrow at that fact. I understand your confusion, but when you hear the details, you will understand why it has a low rating. The mission is to prepare a banquet for a party that he has decided to throw on the spur of the moment and has heard rumors of your food during the Chunin exam. In other words, the only reason it's not a grade D mission is because of the urgency and status of the client. That, and the generous payment that is several times what we should get for a mission of his level. And you don't find it. Suspicious. A little. I've eaten your food Tony, I think it's something normal Tsunade replied. Okay. Tony sighed, feeling a little proud inside. Preparing a banquet is something simple for him. In that case, get ready while he informed Enko and I want you to leave by this afternoon at the latest. In agreement. Tony left the office while Tsunade stared at the door, which she closed for a few moments. Did his instincts really fail her? Call Enko at my office, he ordered to an ANBU next to him. Meanwhile, back with Tony. Tayuya. Idiot. Where did you go these days? Taiyuya demanded through the bars that girl hasn't stopped coming every day, do you know how hard it is to listen to her talk non-stop? Oh come on, I had to leave the village temporarily and came back recently, Tony explained. Have some cookies. Taiyuya looked at the cookies in Tony's hand and swallowed unconsciously. She had been eating the best food of her life for a month and Karen revealed that the person in front of her was the one who made it. Do you think that with these cookies I will forgive you? She she told him, looking into his eyes I demand twice as much. Sure, Tony agreed so quickly that Taiyuya doubted for a moment if his demands were too low. Tony signaled to the ANBU next to the cell and they opened the door. Come on, we have a mission and we have to leave no later than this afternoon. While we get ready, I'll show you where you'll live from now on. And, where's that? Taiyuya asked with a bad attitude. Tony maybe, just maybe, would have been annoyed if it wasn't for the sound of happily chomping on cookies behind him. He had to resist the urge to turn and give her a wry smile. My home. What? Taiyuya choked for a moment when he heard the answer. In the afternoon, Tony's new team left the Leaf Village after gearing up for the mission. And their members were out of the ordinary in that instead of three members led by a higher rank, they had a special Jounin, a Jounin, a Chunin, and a Jenin. Every level of strength a ninja could reach was present, except for a kage level. The trip was entertaining. Anko and Taiyuya exchanged honest opinions with each other, while Karen watched them speechless and Tony made sure that the powder keg wouldn't explode by taking out different types of snacks on time. 
The only time it was quiet was when they ate and slept. So you think this mission is a trap aimed at you? Anko asked as they rested for the night and ate braised pig trotters accompanied by stir-fried vegetables. At first I thought I was really thinking too much, but I couldn't stop thinking about it, Tony explained to them. No matter how you look at it, I have several specialty stores and employees capable of fulfilling this mission. As urgent as it is, it's just a banquet, I can send Kamatsu or Joichiro Yukihira and everything will be fine. But even so, they expressly ask that I be the one to go there. And what will you do if it's a trap? Taiyuya asked after swallowing a piece of meat. What we will do will depend on his motives Anko replied correcting Taiyuya to her delight there is still the possibility that he is simply a fan or an idiot nobleman, not that there is a shortage of the latter. And if it's not that way? Karina asked. Then we'll take down the other party as a priority, capturing them alive will be secondary, Anko stated. The positive part is that the mission only specifies preparing various dishes of food as the objective, we won't have to act as bodyguards or buffoons for anyone Tony pointed out I would have worried that someone would poison the food, but according to Tsunade, these nobles have tasters of poison always by their side, otherwise they would not have managed to live long. And you're not worried that they'll accuse you of planting the poison? Taiyuya asked. They can point all they want, Tony shrugged nonchalantly. Those who know me know what I'm capable of and if they find any kind of proof, then it's easy to know I'm being framed. Don't you care about your reputation? My reputation was what got them calling me. A smile broke out on everyone's face upon hearing that. Hurry up and eat, this won't be worth anything if it stays cold. The team rested for the night and resumed their journey in the morning. After traveling the entire distance between the village and the land of rice, they asked for some directions along the way to locate the nobleman's territory. Here it is, remember what we talked about Anko said as she approached the door guarded by two guards. After declaring his identity and waiting for one of the guards to enter to report, the team smoothly entered the nobleman's mansion and were served some tea while awaiting the client's arrival. Gross. Taiyuya complained after taking a sip what kind of crap is this? Anko and Karen's expression were no better. Not really nice. Tony frowned at the taste. Not only were the leaves not harvested and prepared correctly, but the proportions and timing are all wrong. Hey Tony, get some of your tea Anko asked after throwing the tea they were served into a pot we need to get this taste out of our mouths. Which do you want? Green tea for me. I want black tea. For my blue tea. Tony took the teapot and using his devil fruit ability, changed the tea inside for each requested type until he poured himself a cup of his favorite red tea. This is something else, Anko sighed with satisfaction with her eyes closed. Taiyuya and Karen nodded at the statement, expressing their unconditional agreement. Looks like the nobleman is here, Tony commented as he took a sip of the sweet note tea. And sure enough, a man dressed in fine clothes and waving a fan walked in and sat on the pillow in front of them. Two servants stood at the door waiting in silence. Tony never understood that part of holding a fan made someone seem more noble. Thank you for coming in such haste, I hope you enjoyed your tea. It's one of the best this season the nobleman spoke I'm his own I've heard great praise from other nobles about Tonikun's dishes. A chill ran down Tony's back at the way the nobleman was looking at him. Thank you for your praise, Mr. Hizo, he replied, trying to be as polite as possible. I wonder, how much time do I have and what kind of banquet would you like me to prepare? My little daughter wants to have a big dinner tonight and has invited many of the children of the surrounding nobility, but after several occasions, the dishes are repetitive and the interest in attending decreases he shook his head in dismay so in an attempt to revive the social event, he started bragging that Tonikun would be the cook this time. This was before he requested the mission. Understand. In a nutshell, the noble's daughter lied blatantly and out of sheer panic, they paid several times the price of the quest to have the lie become the truth. About 250 people are expected to attend, Mr. Hizo explained. Most of them are old and young people, so just do something suitable for them. Three to five dishes per head will be enough. Not counting the desserts, of course. I already took care of the drinks on my own. Tony and the rest were speechless at the casual statement. 250 people. Three to five dishes per head. Not counting the desserts. Tony stopped himself from swearing in the nobleman's face. 
If he had to prepare that many dishes per person, it meant that he would need to make a total of between 750 and 1,250 dishes before dinner. And that's without taking into account the desserts for so many people. When they got back to the village, he would tell Tsunade not to accept any mission like this in his name again. If some nobles wanted to repeat this, they would have to settle for the employees of their business. They were losing money by considering this a grade C mission. After speaking with the noble from the land of rice, they were ushered into a room for them to take a rest before starting their mission. It's a trap. Anko stated. Tony rolled his eyes. Of course it was a trap. For a noble to try to boast of the taste of such bad tea shows that his sense of taste is non-existent. Besides, he now understood why the mission explained his objective in such a vague way. Tsunade understood that it should be a banquet for about 50 people, which is usually the norm when only allies and their families are invited. It was some work, but nothing strenuous. But he did want plates for five times that amount. And not counting the desserts. Even a ninja would end up on the floor after carefully preparing so many dishes with all his energy. Whoever was behind this, he wanted to knock Tony out before he acted. What's the plan then? Tony asked. Tsunadesima suggested that this time you will take the leadership of the mission Enko replied with a smile you are the one who knows how to cook and it will be good for you to gain a little experience in that area. So what do you want us to do? Tony was momentarily silent, not expecting to be given carte blanche for the mission. He took a minute to think. In that case, Enko Sensei and Taiyuya will check the surroundings, Tony said, since it's a trap, the enemy can't be too far away if he wants to act at the right time. Take a look at the people nearby and look for anything suspicious. In the meantime, I'll go prepare the food with Karen's help. Anko nodded as she walked out without comment and Taiyuya just grunted in affirmation before following her. Let's go to the kitchen, Tony said as Karen followed like a waddle. The mansion's kitchen was quite large, about four times the room where they were staying. There were several cooks and apprentices running around piling up all the ingredients they had while they waited for the renowned cook that his lord had called. What are you doing here kids? A man in a chef's uniform and a goatee approached them were very busy, get out of here. Tony just sighed inwardly. They were using the village gangs in full view and there were still people who weren't able to recognize them as ninjas. Did they forget the glasses on the nightstand? We are here at the request of your lord, I will take care of the banquet for tonight, he spoke loud enough for everyone to hear. As expected, people stopped and turned their heads to look at him and Karen. Who are you? Asked one of the cooks who was holding a basket of apples. I'm not going to repeat myself, Tony replied. She had too much to do to spend the next hour convincing any skeptics Karen, check how many cooking stations there are, if there are enough crockery for all the dishes, and find out how many trainees can do basic tasks. Cut, peel, plate and the rest. Yes. Karen obeyed. I want all the cooks to meet here in five minutes and explain what dishes they have cooked during the last banquet so that I can design the new menu. You also explain your specialties to me, Tony ordered. Tony's aura made those present unconsciously straighten their backs and start moving at the clear directions out of sheer habit. Need a list of available ingredients and their amounts? Someone asked. No need, I can provide anything we need, Tony answered quickly. Eight head cooks, thirty able-bodied apprentices, and five dishwashers were Tony's soldiers at his command on this battlefield between pans and knives. He spent twenty minutes listening or asking questions before starting issuing orders on different fronts while he created all the necessary ingredients before the astonished eyes of the others. Team 1, prepare the black rice croquettes and the other five types of appetizers. Team 2, wash the vegetables and prepare the three types of salad. Leave the sauces aside so that the guests can help themselves. I'll do a taste test later. Team 3, hit the meat like it's your wife's hidden lover. I want a tender meat that melts in the mouth. And for your sake I don't want to leave a single bone behind. Team 4, clean up the shellfish. I want the calamari cut, the oysters like a mirror, the lobsters shiny and the tuna like a jewel. Team 5, the rice and pasta dishes must be al dente. I don't want old rice or hard pasta. Team 6, I want a balanced soup. Don't be afraid to add more if necessary, but don't make it watery. And be careful with the amount of salt. Tony, there aren't enough plates. Karen told him. 
send the dishwashers to notify the gentleman or his staff and take care of bringing what is missing. After that, I want you to go around the kitchen and check that no one is slacking off Tony raised his voice a little more my partner will taste the dishes for her quality control. Nothing will leave the kitchen without her approval. Yes boss. Team 7 and 8, wait a minute. Tony bit his thumb and hit the ground. Summoning technique. After the smoke cleared, ten different types of alchemy were looking around. This is my summon beast, alchemy, he pointed out. You'll each take five of them and we'll all start working on the desserts. It doesn't matter if it's cake, biscuit or cream, my beast will help you, he has a very delicate palate with desserts, so you will have to adjust the recipe to get his approval before making the dessert en masse. Any questions? Seeing that no one said anything, he was satisfied. Perfect. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Everyone in the kitchen was suddenly excited and moving fast like never before. Unknown dishes and flavors, endless ingredients of impossible quality, innovative and fantastic techniques, clear orders and priorities. This humble place became a cook's paradise. There will come a day when apprentice cooks will finish their training and burst into the world, wowing everyone with their new approaches to gastronomy and bold creations. Gourmet critics declare it an unprecedented breakthrough in the industry. A leap of 200 years. And when asked how they came to be like this, they will all answer the same thing. It all started when a stranger came to our kitchen to prepare a feast. I never expected it to actually be him. But that is a story for another day. His o was currently in the room used for delicate business, away from prying eyes talking to a masked woman. I did my part, so tell Danzo that the favor is settled said Hizo I only ask that whatever you are going to do, do not involve the guests, it would be the ruin of my family. Danza-sama appreciates that you kept your word, the woman replied. And don't worry, it will all end tonight, she said after calming down the noble from the land of rice and leaving. Hizo's trusted aide walked in at that moment. Are the Kanoha ninjas behaving as expected? The kitchen is frantic preparing the banquet for tonight and I have several men watching that they do not add anything suspicious to the food. The only. What happened? Two members of your team appear to be missing, the aide revealed uneasily. My men haven't seen them all day and we have no idea what they're doing. I see, he waved the fan in his hand as he thought, forget them. As long as they don't cause any trouble, we just have to wait and enjoy dinner before we send them off. In the shadows somewhere in the mansion. I have ten, Enko said, five on the roof, two disguised as servants, and another three in the stable. I have twelve Taiyuya answered with a smug look four in the kitchens, three in the bathrooms, and five disguised as servants. Enko cursed under her breath at losing the competition to her, one that she was sure she would win hands down. She couldn't believe that the girl found more enemies than her. Root? Enka asked. All of them said Taiyuya these ninjas are a laugh compared to the ones Orochimaru trained in his facilities she mocked they still use the marks and customs of their organization without realizing it. Did they just remove their emotions or their intelligence as well? I didn't expect Danzo to be so determined to get Tony Anko frowned from the little I know about this man, he usually sends four or five of his ninjas at most to kidnap someone, it's not normal that he sent almost two dozen. And that's just the numbers we've found so far, if we search a little more it might grow Taiyuya pointed out so shall we eliminate them now? No, Enko denied, none of them are alone and I'm sure they constantly keep a check on their numbers. Let's keep looking in case we missed any rats and get back to Tony. Wait Taiyuya prevented Enko from leaving get me out of my doubts, because the person in charge of the dark side of the leaf village wants Tony. Is it money or another reason? Yes, I guess you haven't been with him for too long yet Enko narrowed her eyes I don't know why he trusts you, but. Yes, yes Taiyuya interrupted her if I betray his trust, he will mercilessly hunt me to the ends of the world, etc. Let me be clear, I have no intention of registering as her sister as Karen explained to me, but I'm not that ungrateful. You know what I've been through and this whole free will thing is new to me, so you should understand that I need time, to assimilate my current state. I still don't know how to feel really Taiyuya scratched her head in annoyance I mean, I'm fighting for my life and suddenly a guy appears next to me, who should be an ally of my enemy, he catches me and asks me if I want to join to his family. I didn't even know him. She says exasperated the worst thing is that I can say that he is honest, he doesn't lie to me or has any ulterior motives. 
that totally takes me out of my element. And later he introduces me to her little sister, I find out that the best food in the world is hers and Arg. Well, it seems that your emotions are still somewhat chaotic Anko sighed, understanding her point I'll bet on Tony's intuition, the thing is. Back with Tony. The dishes and desserts had been in the making for several hours and came down to his direction and Tony was running final taste checks. Add two more tablespoons of soy sauce. Perfect, good texture. It lacks pepper. And also add a pinch of salt, but only one. The outside is cooked, but the inside is raw. Repeat it all. Who made this sauce? You. Done well, the lemon drops have enhanced the flavor. How are the black rice croquettes? Mm, mm great. Prepare another round. No, it better be two. Who the hell brought gold flakes? These things are tasteless and useless, throw them outside. You say the liqueurs haven't arrived yet? It's not my problem, tell your master, he's the one who claimed to take care of the drink. Someone set up the tables and chairs. Well, put the tablecloths and start decorating. Flowers, napkins and everything. And where are the missing dishes? Fifteen people were lying unconscious on the floor when they finished the last plate. Unconscious, but with a smile of satisfaction and pride impossible to hide. Tony looked at the food and declared with a nod. This is a real banquet. Is it normal for food to shine with its own light? Karen asked next to her, intrigued by the unusual phenomenon. This, sis, is what happens when I get a little serious. Wow. Karen's eyes sparkled with stars. My big brother is so cool. Come on, Tony told her, oblivious to Karen's thoughts. In half an hour the guests should start arriving, we need to rest a bit. I also want to know what Enko Sensei and Taiyuya have found. You're right. Karen caressed her stomach. She had had to try so many things that she felt happy and bloated. Lying down for a while will help digest everything better. The guests arrived in elegant wooden carriages and beautiful horses, escorted by their guards and a few genin from different villages. The nobles exchanged pleasantries at the entrance as they greeted their friends with smiles and an even bigger smile at their competitors. The genin, on the other hand, had their guard up against the others. The common guards were not a threat to them and they just hoped that the night would pass without incident. Mickey. Is it true that Tonissima made today's meal? Asked one of the young people who accompanied his parents to the party are you sure you didn't meet an imposter? It is not. Mickey was a little upset that her friends will doubt her. Okay, so at first she got carried away and lied about it. But her dad somehow managed to hire the real thing just in time. Since the lie came true, she had nothing to fear. I hope so, I'm tired of the same dishes every time, another girl sighed. Home cooks are good, but they don't know how to make anything other than traditional food. Not to mention we have to wait for the poison taster to do his job. I can't remember the last time I ate a meal fresh out of the kitchen. If your dishes are as good as the rumors say, I'll try to hire you as my family's cook. Hey, don't get ahead of me. That was exactly my plan. And mine. You can forget about that Mickey raised her nose as she mercilessly destroyed the plans of her friends from what my servants have told me, Tonissima made a unique exception because she owed my father a favor. This banquet will be unique. Too bad, that would have been nice. One of them shrugged and looked around her. It seems everyone is already here, should we go inside? Sure, Mike nodded. She moved towards the entrance and gave some applause to attract the attention of all the guests thank you for your patience, since all the honorable guests are present, she without further ado invited them to enter and start enjoying the banquet. The guests perked up and began to enter the area designated for the banquet, the front lawn. Amazing! What a creative! Is that a chocolate horse? Is it normal for food to emit its own light? Gasps of astonishment were not long in coming. An elegant and careful distribution at each table, the colors and smells of the starters were in harmony with the surrounding flowers, the names of each guest were written in an assigned place on a paper crane and the lighting was good enough to appreciate the scene, but not too much to make the stars disappear from the sky due to light pollution. I'm glad everyone was able to come to the modest dinner hosted by my daughter. Hizo made his appearance at this moment from the top of the garden stairs, dressed in one of his best kimonos initially I wanted to exchange a few words with everyone, 
but I think we all have knowledge of who has prepared today's dishes. The famous cook who was praised for his creations during the Chunin exam of the Leaf Village, Tony. So let's skip the formalities and enjoy our freshly cooked food. Some of the guests agreed while others were inwardly surprised, believing that it was nothing more than a bluff. The genin accompanying their clients tensed. Although they had only heard that the person who cooked today's food was a somewhat prominent ninja from Kanoha, it didn't take away from the fact that he was a chunin. His rank was higher and thus a greater potential threat than the genin from other villages. The question now was where was that chunin? For a moment I thought you were going to go down with those nobles with a stick up your rear, Taiyuya commented, amused by Tony's position. They asked me for a banquet and they already have it, I am not obligated to put up with their questions and false cordialities answered Tony lying on his back with his head resting on Karen's thighs, at her request almost by force have you found something? After several inspections, we found out that there are thirty root ninja hiding in the surroundings Anko informed while enjoying a dessert made by Tony we can confirm that each one has the strength of a chunin and it would not be strange if there were some jonin to coordinate their numbers. That's strange. Tony frowned, sensing that something was wrong. It was too much of a stretch to send out those numbers and strength levels just to catch him, right? I think it's actually pretty obvious what's going on Taiyuya said and everyone turned their heads in her direction, wanting to hear the reason from what Anko has told me about that idiot Danzo, I have an idea of what he wants to do. A single plan with multiple results and they are all negative for you. And what would it be? I don't doubt that they will try to capture you once they act but I don't think you are their only target Taiyuya explained with a serious expression I think you are the priority target to be more exact. From their numbers, I think there's a high chance that while they're dealing with you, they're also trying to kidnap Karen at the same time they're taking us out. That? Karen didn't expect to be a target after this time. That's not all, is it? Tony kept looking at Taiyuya you said there were multiple results and they are all bad. That's how it is. Let's say we've managed to thwart their plan to deal with the four of us, most likely this will lead them to frame us as traitors to the village. You mean to change their gaze to Hizo, his daughter, and the noble guests Enko understood what he meant. It is very probable. The mission is too easy and if the client dies, he'll have an excuse to imprison us all and in the short period between our entry and release, he'll make us disappear. If we don't even return to the village after so many nobles died, he can manipulate and use that fact against us as well. And that's not all. There is more. Even Tony didn't think there were more hidden plots. Again, imagine that we even manage to keep the nobles safe from the attack of an unknown enemy, what do you think will happen? Will the genin from the other villages attack? Karen asked, getting everyone to look at her in surprise. Exactly, redhead Taiyuya smiled the death of the genin is not a big deal, but so many dead and from so many villages, it will make Tony and us earn a wake-up call from the bingo book. This will make leaving the village more dangerous and give us more reason to stay within Danzo's grasp. In short, Tony summed up, Danzo's plan is to deal with us. If that doesn't work, he will try to attack the nobles and declare us traitors to the village or make us disappear during imprisonment. And even if we manage to protect the nobles, they'll shift their target to the genin to put a target on our backs in the other villages and force us to stay within Kanoha's walls. A plan like that could only occur to that man, Anko sighed annoyed. Tony wanted to add something, when suddenly he received a message from the system. Ding! An emergency mission has been declared. New mission remove the rotten apple from the basket. Description you have uncovered Danzo's hidden and seemingly infallible plan. The man has come to the conclusion that if he can't get his hands on you once and for all, it's best to destroy you before you grow too out of his control. Fortunately, you have allies who have managed to unravel the threat and you took precautions before leaving the village. It's time to think about how to counterattack. Eliminate all enemies without leaving any alive. Not completed. The client and 70% of the nobles must survive. Not completed. No more than 40% of the genin present can die. Not completed. You and your team must return safely to the village. Not completed. Present real evidence against Danzo to the Hokage. Not completed. Eliminate Dan Shimura. Not completed. Reward. The banquet began and it was unexpectedly silent. In general, the guests exchanged pleasantries, rumors and thoughts to make the celebration more lively and social. 
They will take the opportunity to look for new partners to discuss possible business or collaborations and they would even take a look at the singles present to try to weigh the benefits of a possible political marriage. But today it was not the case and the reason is simple. Speak. If I talk, I'm not eating. If it wasn't for the many years of etiquette they were used to, their food intake would have skyrocketed. The only thing that wasn't up to par was the drinks, which were all too ordinary. Hizo and Mickey were a bit stunned at the scene. Technically, the banquet was an unprecedented success, but why were the nobles acting like starving beggars who have been given some food by a hostel? Even the genin bodyguards of these nobles were a bit speechless. They had never seen their customers act like this. Hell, even the root in the shadows didn't quite understand the situation. This will complicate Danza-sama's plans a bit. Any news on the targets? They're still in the room they were assigned, but they've somehow kept us from knowing what they're talking about. Do they suspect something? Hardly possible, more likely they want to prevent the gossipy servants from eavesdropping on them. When do we act? Let's put on our costumes and wait a few more minutes. If they don't decide to leave, Team C will deal with the Genin from the other villages while Team A and B will move to deal with them. Ignore the nobles, but if they get in our way, eliminate them. Meanwhile, in Tony's team room. Hey Tony. Are you sure this is necessary? Taiyuya yelled annoyed by her new outfit I can always eliminate them without having to go through so much trouble. Taiyuya had dressed in a yellow kimono with maple leaf patterns, she had done her hair, painted her nails, and Anko had lightly made her up. Don't say that, you're great. Anko said as she tried to contain her laughter. Beautiful Karen looked enviously at Taiyuya's figure and then at herself secretly. Despite wearing a lavender kimono with orchid patterns, she still felt a bit inferior in some ways. It doesn't matter, she could still grow. I've already repeated it several times, it's part of the plan Tony secretly appreciated Taiyuya's fixed appearance you and Karen will go up on stage to pretend to play a piece of music. You will use your flute to genjutsu everyone at the banquet and bring them under control. In this way, we can prevent the Danzo ninjas from slaughtering them like chickens. Karen will stay by your side to avoid ambushes and so you can cover each other's backs. Tony was really impressed, Taiyuya usually didn't care too much about her appearance as long as she could move around comfortably, but it turned out that she was a hidden gem. Even he forgot to breathe for a few seconds when he saw her. When Taiyuya saw her reaction, she somehow secretly felt proud. Under Orochimaru's gaze, things like femininity were superfluous and only her power would allow him to have a better position. So despite her usual gruff attitude, she actually felt a bit uncomfortable and insecure on that specific front. Perhaps should I ask that snake woman for some advice? Her, she considered to herself. But thinking about it, Anko didn't seem to have any man after her. Maybe Karen would be a better choice. Taiyuya suddenly shook her head, what the hell was she thinking? So she should start with me? Enka asked. Did you disperse the snakes? After Tony saw Enko nod, she continued leave then, try to eliminate the furthest group as quickly as possible. If you're not clear, just try to poison them with the poison you showed me. Join us when you're done. Understood Enko left the room and went to the bathrooms to divert attention. Come on, we can't let the special guests get impatient. The team arrived at the banquet soon after and those present only realized their presence when they went up to the small stage that had been previously prepared for the background band. The eyes of many lit up when they saw Taiyuya and Karen. Of course, the cutlery and chopsticks did not stop at any time. Good evening everyone, I hope you are enjoying the dishes I prepared for tonight Tony spoke aloud for the greater enjoyment of all present, my companion will play a piece of music on the flute, since some scholars affirm that the taste of food can be enhanced with the right environment. So without further ado, let's listen to it. Immediately afterwards, he got off the stage. Maybe Taiyuya wasn't too happy with the plan, but it didn't affect her ability to act too much. She made a small curtsy and brought the flute to her bright lips. The sound of the flute began to spread around and many of the music-savvy guests were gratified by the mastery shown at such a young age. Taiyuya was not only good at playing the flute because of her sound techniques, but she was also talented at it. She didn't immediately start the genjutsu, she started with slow notes and only when both the rhythm and the volume increased a bit and it covered all the surroundings, she began to circulate the chakra. 
Tony had secretly slipped out of everyone's sight and created several chocolate clones, to which he gave some kanai and scrolls, which scattered in different directions. He secretly spied on the members of RAZ and indeed, shortly after the music started, many of them made release stamps as a precaution against the possibility of falling into an illusion. Seeing that nothing was actually happening, they just kept listening while coldly watching. The moment Tayuya played the first notes of the Genjutsu, the clones moved in unison to stab the hidden ninja that had been momentarily stunned, killing as many as possible. A single stab and before the body even hit the ground, it was sealed in a storage scroll to keep it as fresh as possible, eliminating the possibility of any seals going into action upon death. Anko appeared next to Tony almost at the same time. TCH, it looks like I haven't managed to take them all out yet, Anko complained. How many are left alive? Tony asked. Three of them. I managed to eliminate almost all the jonin, but one luckily evaded me and took two chunin with him. Then he added, they are all poisoned. The chunin will not survive more than a few minutes and the jonin will need to stop within an hour to treat the poison. I have several snakes monitoring their movements. Okay, let's go get him after we finish off the rest, Tony agreed. Even with Genjutsu and Ambush, seven of the root ninja managed to save themselves in the nick of time. It seems you already knew of our presence, spoke one of them, perhaps a leader. If you expect him to be an MC who talks nonsense, then you're very wrong Tony answered not wanting to talk to a brainwashed person. Step back a bit, Anko he asked as he clasped his hands. Anko nodded and joined Karen to cover for Taiyuya while she kept playing to control the nobles and Jenin. Gluttony Spicy Swamp He slammed his hands on the ground and a crack opened up, revealing a red substance that was easily recognizable by smell as chili tomato sauce and some unknown spices. Don't be fooled, it's more dangerous than it seems. Yelled one of Root when he saw the apparently harmless attack jump. This was unexpected for Tony. If he remembered correctly, the last time he used his ability to turn tomatoes into magma was against the Sound Twins. Because it seemed like they had information about it. Perhaps Orochimaru and Danzo knew more than he expected from him. If it weren't for the seal on his tongue, he would have tried to keep one or two alive for questioning. Anyway, he would have to try something else. Gluttony Breath of N. After his cheeks swelled, he blew out a large amount of smoke towards the root members. The ninja's trained instincts screamed danger and death at the sight of the smoke, but before they could speak or launch a counter technique, they were covered by the smoke. After the smoke cleared, there were no traces of the ninjas and all that was left behind were various types of edible mushrooms that fell by gravity into the spicy swamp that Tony had previously made appear. Looks like the nobles will be able to enjoy an extra dish tonight. Like it? Add to library. Those present were freed from the illusion after Tony, Enko, and Karen clean up the scene to leave no trace of the ambush. The genin looked around somewhat confused, they had the feeling that something was wrong but they couldn't point out what it was. The nobles, on the other hand, were amazed to see that they suddenly had a new dish on the menu assorted mushrooms with sauce. Tony only hesitated for a moment before letting them eat the mushrooms. After all, the transformation had been complete, so technically, it wasn't cannibalism. Although he would never try it, of course. He had standards. You really can't stay until the end of dinner. Dido asked. I'm afraid not Anko denied as she raised a scroll with her hand we received an emergency communication and we have to leave immediately. Fortunately, the only thing left to do is finish the meal and clean up, so we're not needed here. I see, it's unavoidable if it's an emergency, Hazo nodded reluctantly. In that case, let me thank you for fulfilling my request in such a magnificent way. This banquet will be talked about for years. After exchanging a few pleasantries, Tony's team left without wasting time. There was still one jonin to finish and he didn't want to put it off too long, so they invented the emergency call. The scroll that Enko showed. I was blank. Wait Enko stopped the team while a snake came out of his sleeve and they communicated I see. The jonin decided that he could not be saved and took the initiative to activate an immolation seal so as not to leave traces that lead to Danzo. What about the two remaining chunin? Let's just say my little ones have had their own banquet too, Enko teased. Tony wasn't entirely calm, so he decided to do what any smart transmigrant would do. Check the progress of the mission. Remove the rotten apple from the basket. Description you have uncovered Danzo's hidden and seemingly infallible plan. 
the man has come to the conclusion that if he can't get his hands on you once and for all, it's best to destroy you before you grow too out of his control. Fortunately, you have allies who have managed to unravel the threat and you took precautions before leaving the village. It's time to think about how to counterattack. Eliminate all enemies without leaving any alive. Filled. The client and 70% of the nobles must survive. Filled. No more than 40% of the genin present can die. Filled. You and your team must return safely to the village. Unfilled. Present real evidence against Danzo to the Hokage. Unfilled. Eliminate Dan Shimura. Unfilled. Reward. Note due to the unique circumstances, the reward can only be obtained if all the quest objectives are met. At the same time, the reward will be unique. Let's go back to the village, Tony said. We can't give Danzo time to react. Summoning technique. Several small alchemies emerged from the smoke and climbed onto everyone's shoulders. Reverse summoning technique. With another puff of smoke, the team disappeared, reappearing in a hidden room Tony had prepared in advance in Kanoha, in one of the basements of his chain store. What do we have to do now? Karen asked as she patted little alchemy on her shoulder, she closed her eyes in delight at her soft touch. Should we notify Tsunadesima? Enko wasn't very sure what to do next either. They had the root bodies in the storage scrolls, but Danzo could excuse himself by accusing them of treason for attacking his men without reason. It would still be his word against hers. Wait a minute, Tony told him, summoning technique. But after the smoke cleared, there was nothing in sight. Did your summon fail or did the contracted beast die? Taiyuya asked with a frown. No problem, Tony commented as he turned his head to an empty spot to his right. Meliaran, did you get what I asked for? It always amazes me how you managed to see through my perfect plan. A voice replied. It's not funny. A silhouette began to blur, revealing a chimera ant in the shape of a chameleon man in a grey sweatshirt and sweatpants. Karen screamed, Enko widened her eyes and Taiyuya gave her a death glare. None of them could feel her presence. Did you have any problems? Tony wanted to know. I ran into some troublesome seals along the way, but nothing I couldn't deal with. Honestly, for a hidden and secret place, it's too easy to enter it. Melioran laughed as she showed a few scrolls held by her tail here is everything you wanted. Conspiracy records against the Senju clan with evidence of the third Hokage's involvement, the order to desecrate the graves of various founding clans, Hashirama's eye and cell transplant, the truth of the Uchiha clan's attack, all the shady deals and hidden deals of Danzo with the other villages, the kidnappings of various noble clans, the contacts and spies planted in the leaf village, their plans to deal with you, too. She spent several minutes talking about everything he copied or stole. That'll be enough, Tony agreed with satisfaction. The others looked at him. Enough? That is a lifetime of transgressions, betrayals and manipulations. Just thinking about the changes the village will go through when this is revealed. Even Anko and Taiyuya had goosebumps just thinking about the consequences. Now, continuing with Anko's question, if we will go to Tsunade and present her with all this evidence as well as the scrolls with the root bodies. Don't you want us to eliminate Danzo before that? Taiyuya asked as if she saw through her thoughts. Believe me, Tsunade won't want Danzo to live long Tony took out a scroll and wrote a few lines on it and will use this as the final touch. What is it about? Danzo's whole cards, Tony said with a smile. The system's mission demanded that he eliminate Danzo, but it wasn't necessary for him to do it in person and he didn't want to do it if possible. With the eyes he has, the seal on his body, his summoning and everything else, it was for him to face Danzo on his account. Even more so if he wants to keep some secrets up his sleeve. So let the village deal with him. Anko led them through the less guarded paths and they reached the door of the Hokage's office in less than two minutes. They knocked on the door and after receiving an answer, they entered. Are you back yet? Tsunade looked surprised and frowned when she saw her expression what happened. Let's see if we reach one million visits before the end of the year. The team was a bit hesitant and exchanged glances before shoving Tony forward. Tony turned to see them in surprise, betrayal. But none of them had the slightest remorse for their actions. The plan was his after all. Tsunade, before informing you, 
I need to ask something Tony tried to put on the most solemn and serious expression of which he was capable is there a possibility of a leak, however remote it may be? This affects the entire village and the less people hear what I'm going to say, the better. His eyes wandered to the positions where the ANBU members protecting the Hokage were hidden. There isn't. Tsunade sensed that something was wrong. It was easier to watch a parade of tutu-clad unicorns dance heavy metal during a solar eclipse than Tony with that kind of expression opened the isolation seal. Yes, Hokagesima. The ANBU members replied. The Hokage's office naturally had some convenient seals for emergency situations. The isolation seal caused a total closure in the office, nothing could come out of it until the Hokage in charge used his chakra to open the restriction. The team of Tony, Tsunade and their bodyguards were cut off from the world on a near-dimensional level. What I'm going to reveal is true information backed by evidence, Tony explained with a deep tone. There is too much information and it is very likely that we need to act as quickly as possible. I'm sure it's impossible for you not to freak out, so I suggest you prepare yourself mentally. Tony proceeded to explain what happened during the mission, then he took out the scrolls with the bodies of the Danzo ninjas as evidence, he started to take out the information that Melioron stole from Root and explained the worst things he found in them, one of them the reason for the decline of the Senju clan. Lastly, he handed over the scroll that he himself wrote about the hidden letters he knew of Danzo, including his right eye, his arm with Hashirama cells and Uchiha eyes, the seal, etc. Just as he expected, when Tsunade heard everything Danzo did, his expression darkened and cracks appeared on the table as he read the irrefutable proof of the facts. This was even more evident when he discovered the desecration of his grandfather's grave and the attack on his clan, the veins in his forehead throbbing and threatening to burst. Even after trying to breathe several times, he still couldn't calm down. I want all Umbu personnel available and Jonin in the village to come to the root location and catch Shimura Danzo immediately. He bellowed loudly, his face reddening, eliminate anyone at the first sign of resistance and I want Danzo alive before the day is end by any means. He threw the scroll with Danzo's information and opened the isolation seal and if he ended up dead, I want Tio see his body. Immediately. The ANBU left at full speed. They were just as furious as Tsunade, many members of their clans were also mentioned during Danzo's kidnappings and they wanted an explanation. Special alerts that were only used in the worst moments of war were used and in less than three minutes, the main forces of the village rushed readied like a pack of hungry wolves towards the secret location of Danzo Root. It was enough for a Root member to try to stop them and ask why they were here, for him to end up in pieces the next second. Danzo-sama. What's all this fuss about? Danzo was sitting behind his desk, reading a scroll with information about the Cloud Village when one of his ninjas broke into his study. This was only allowed during an emergency is someone attacking the village. No sir, we are the ones under attack. What? Danzo stood up so abruptly that the chair fell backwards. Has the attacker been identified? He notifies Tsunade and to send reinforcements immediately. They are the ninjas of Kanoha. They the ninja tried to report but a kunai plunged for his throat from the shadows and eliminated him before he could react. Who dares? Danzo kicked the desk to clear his surroundings and facilitate his reactions. Danzo Shimura, you are under arrest. In the Hokage's office. What is the situation? Tsunade had managed to get his emotions under control after a great effort and was pacing restlessly. Tonissima's information was all correct informed in ANBU we have found stolen scrolls of lost techniques in the village, forbidden medical research, orphans from different lands and a large amount of money among other things. What about Danzo? Tsunade narrowed her eyes. Other things were meaningless compared to capturing him. Our members are facing him right now, thanks to the information at our disposal, we have managed to neutralize his sealing technique using special techniques. But his eyes are troublesome. Keep pushing and stay tuned, he may die, but he can't escape. Tsunade ordered also, he sends some chunin to also arrest Hamura Mitokado and Kohari Yudatain. His hands are not clean either. After dismissing the ANBU, Tsunade slumped back into the Hokage's chair as he rubbed his forehead. Do you want us to go lend a hand? Tony asked. No, stay with me. Please Tsunade sighed tiredly Karen is too weak to make a difference, Enko is innocent but because of her past with Orochimaru it's safer for her to stay here, Taiyuya is the same and you're the one who managed to gather the information and nothing should happen to you. 
If there is any latent member of Root, he could intervene at this time. Okay Tony nodded as he took out a package jelly beans of all flavors. Didn't you tell me you were making alcoholic drinks? I could use a drink right now. Tsunade gave him an amused look. Sorry, they're not ready yet, Tony denied, but I'll buy you a drink somewhere when this is over. I promise. She was not going to let Tsunade drink during this operation, she had no doubt that as soon as alcohol entered her system, her emotions would overwhelm her. She needed her to stay strong for now. For the village, for her future and everyone's. Okay, give me three. Perhaps seeing through Tony's thoughts, Tsunade stopped insisting on the drink and grabbed some sweets. After taking the first one, her expression was disgusted and that calmed Tony down. It would have been a bad omen for Tsunade to pull out a good-tasting lozenge, it would be like she won a bet. And nothing good happens when Tsunade wins a bet. Tsunadesima. Shizun arrived in the Jonin uniform, full of wounds all over her body, but she smiled happily Danzo has been successfully captured. Send him to the interrogation room immediately. Tsunade asked him I want the best experts of the Yamanaka clan to bring out each and every one of their dark secrets. Somewhere in the land of rivers. Oro Kimurusuma Kabuto appeared before a man bandaged from head to toe who was holding a flask, shaking it a bit as he watched as it changed color something important happened in Kanoha. What could be so important that you would interrupt me in the middle of my experiment, Kabuto? Orochimaru questioned without revealing too much interest. Danzo has been trapped by his old partner, the new Hokage. Orochimaru's hand stopped and he looked at Kabuto. Tsunade caught Danzo. With life? Seeing Kabuto nod his head twice, he started laughing it seems that his past came back to bite her ass, or was it his arm? Should we take action? If you come to know. In case he reveals my research with the first Hokage's cells. No need to worry about that Orochimaru sneered at the unnecessary concern of his right hand man the investigation happened under the express interest of Danzo, he was the one who dug up Tsunade's grandfather, not me. In fact, if I stop to think for a moment, we actually just lost a good customer, which is a shame. He put the flask down and picked up a sterilized petri dish and a pipe to continue his experiment. How did it all happen? A traitor from within? My spies are still trying to figure it out Kabuto shook his head, unable to give precise information I only know that Tsunade suddenly sent the order out of nowhere and caught Danzo off guard before he could find out on his own. His right arm has been severed, his right eye removed, his sealing technique nullified and his chakra points blocked. Right now, his mind is being assaulted by more than a dozen members of the Yamanaka clan and it is estimated that his sanity will be completely lost after the measures they are taking to get all the information possible. A burst of smoke appeared from Kabuto's shoulder and a small blue snake spit out a scroll before disappearing. Kabuto recognized the scroll from one of his village spies and read it. And good. I have news of Taiyuya's whereabouts and she is involved in what happened with Danzo. Oh. Now you have my full attention. Orochimaru stopped his hands and left the instruments on the table to turn around and cross his arms. Taiyuya joined a team from Kanoha for a mission to prepare a banquet for a noble from the land of rice, but she abruptly returned with her team to the village and headed to the Hokage's office. A few minutes later, warrants for Danzo's capture were issued. Who was on the team? A third voice came into the room as Sasuke entered, covered in sweat from finishing the exercise routine Orochimaru instructed him to do. Seeing Orochimaru nod, Kabuto revealed what he knew. The jonin in charge of the team is Anko Mitarashi, who is also Taiyuya's temporary watcher. Ah, little Anko, Orochimaru chuckled. Then there is Karen Uzumaki, who joined the village during the Chunin exam and lastly. Tony Akimichi. Sasuke knew about Tony's adoption of the red-headed Uzumaki. Right Kabuto didn't expect Sasuke to make the connection so quickly. I should have guessed, Sasuke sighed. With Karen on the team and a food-related mission, he couldn't be someone else. The boy who was adopted by the Akimichi clan. Did he leave a lasting impression on you, Sasuke? Orochimaru asked with interest. It wasn't that he didn't know of Tony's existence, it was just that he had more interesting bloodlines and experiments compared to someone who could make food. It was only later that he found out that the same Chunin was responsible for removing his sound ninjas and getting Taiyuya to defect, but since he failed to block Sasuke in the end, he paid her no further attention. Wait a minute. 
Suddenly, Orochimaru seemed to realize something. Why don't I block it? A Chunin beating all five of his ninjas in a row. Enough energy to lead another to the village, but not to continue pursuing Sasuke. Tony is. Complicated. Sasuke couldn't really find the exact words to describe his former partner. I can't say he's a great ninja, but I've never seen him lose. And his food is not what it seems. What are you talking about? His food seems to be much more effective than many drugs and medicines, Sasuke tried to be clear, ninja edibles as he calls them are tremendously useful, if I could eat his food daily, my strength could grow at an even faster rate. Accelerated. Is that so? I'm beginning to see why Danzo fell. Orochimaru was smart, very smart and could roughly predict what Danzo's intentions and actions were. So, Danzo met his end, not by being betrayed or making a fatal mistake. But by trying to get his hands on a cook. Kabuto couldn't believe those words had come out of his mouth. What kind of madness was this? I remember he started a food business a little before the Chunin exam, we should send someone to buy some ninja groceries from there on a regular basis, Sasuke suggested, I think it's called a cooker shop or something like that. Actually, let's do that, Orochimaru agreed, if that food is as good as you say, it might be fun to analyze. It could be a good way to relax between serious experiments and maybe I'll find something interesting. Both Orochimaru and Kabuto watched Sasuke's eyes light up for a moment at the mention of the food supply and exchanged a look that conveyed the same thoughts. Do ninja groceries seem to taste good? Should they try any? All to gather information, of course. Back in Kanoha. You promised. Tsunade said. When it's all over, that was my condition. Tony protested. Danzo is incapacitated and the Yamanaka are emptying his head, what part do you think is missing? Tsunade pointed out. The day's revelations had stirred his feelings and he needed to drink himself senseless to free himself. Her execution of him. Tony was firm and blunt, without leaving open the possibility of rebutting. Tsunade fell silent at Tony's yell. It was she who was offended and with turbulent emotions, because it seemed that he was the one who had a grudge against her. This will cost you dearly. Tsunade narrowed her eyes. Shizun can order twenty bottles from my account Tony patted his chest without hesitation, with his business he didn't lack that little money but. You won't be able to drink them until Danzo is no longer a 100% threat. Don't you think it's blackmail? Karen murmured when she saw how they argued, to the laughter of the rest of the girls. Little sister, you don't help me like that. To the surprise of many, Danzo managed to persist through three consecutive days of mental assault by twenty simultaneous people before they could access his mind and what they found was so terrible that some of the Yamanaka clansmen who saw it ended up vomiting. Danzo's atrocities were too much for them. But much to his dismay, the orders were to get as much information out as possible and record it to be sent to the Hokage's office. So they rolled up their sleeves and they all made an appointment with a psychologist so that when they finished, they wouldn't have nightmares. It was several days of rotating shifts as they continuously extracted all the information and by the time they were done, Danzo had no light in his eyes, well, the only eye he had left and he was staring into nothing while he drooled. His mind was left in a vegetative state by the aggressive extraction. Given the overwhelming amount of evidence, Danzo was executed and the Shimura clan lost its greatest power figure. Counselors Hamura Mitokado and Kohara Yudatane were forcibly removed after their collaboration with Danzo as well as their corruption were revealed and fined, depriving them of their lifetime bribes and more. Finally, Tsunade and Tony exclaimed at the same time, to the grace of the others. Tony stopped Tsunade from drinking a single drop of alcohol these days and Tsunade never expected the Chunin to be able to block her effectively for so long. Even Shizun stood her ground and confronted his master, giving away all of his secret hideouts where she kept the good liquor. But now that Danzo was out of the equation, Tsunade was able to drink to vent his emotions and Tony completed the system mission. The rewards are being delivered. Reward Pearl Jam Jojo. Description Tonio Trasardi's stand that possesses the skill healing through ingestion. Pearl Jam can cure ailments depending on the dishes prepared. Incurable diseases will no longer be as long as good ingredients are involved. The process is somewhat violent, but the client's body will return to normal when it has finished its effect with the ailment fully healed. The stand has gone through an adaptation to be able to use the full power of it in the host world. 
Additional fact this stand was born out of a desire to perfect the culinary arts and no arrow was involved. As it should be. Reminder the host can decide whether or not to activate the stand every time he cooks in person. The stand will not activate if there is no culinary process involved. System, do you mean that if I just use the power of my devil fruit, I won't be able to use it? Correct. The system suggests using the power of the fruit to produce the necessary ingredients for recipes where the host wants to activate Pearl Jam. This will ensure quality and better effects than if the host used common ingredients. I see. Tony thought deeply. He wasn't a fan of Jojo himself, but a good friend of his explained several seasons to him in great detail. He does not remember most of them, but this stand caught his attention then because it is one of the few that is not used in combat and as the system pointed out, it was not born as a result of the arrow either. If his memory serves you correctly, Tonio even prepared a dish using a rare type of abalone as the main ingredient to cure his lover Virginia's cancer. And he did it. In other words, the greater the ailment, the higher quality the ingredients must be. One second. System, it's possible Tony told him about the absurd idea that suddenly occurred to him is it viable? Calculated. Pretending. In response to the host's question, in fact, there is an 87. 48% chance of success. However, only a few dishes that the host knows and is able to prepare meet the nutritional requirements necessary to reach the goal. As long as there's a chance, that's enough, Tony smiled. Tony, more dragées of all flavors. Tsunade yelled. I'm going. A week later. Is it just me, or do you also think that Tony has been acting strange these days? Anko asked when she came to visit. Actually, it's kind of suspicious, Tayuya commented. She had started living with Karen and Tony in the same house and even had her own room. But during this period of time, the number of times she saw Tony could be counted on the fingers of one hand what do you know, redhead. Karen was the closest to Tony on the team, if anyone knows what was going on, it was her. I don't know. Karen looked away unnaturally. She actually knew exactly that she was making her older brother, but she had serious instructions not to reveal anything to Taiyuya and Enko, since it was related to them and it should be a surprise. The girl's unnaturalness did not go unnoticed in the least, so Enko and Taiyuya exchanged glances, communicating silently. It sounds like you know something and don't want to share it. That means we'll have to resort to unorthodox interrogation methods. And we won't stop until we get to the bottom of it. Karen stared at them with wide eyes as they approached her with a large feather, a thick rope, and various objects of dubious provenance. Fortunately for her, a heavenly voice rescued her from the clutches of demons. What are you doing? Tony asked as he entered the living room. Any. The rope and everything else disappeared as if by magic as they turned to give him a look of complete and utter innocence. Sure Tony was sure he was missing something, especially seeing how Karen looked at him as if she had just saved his life anyway, tonight I hope you can come to dinner Anko Sensei. I'm going to prepare a new recipe and I need tasters. I'll be there. Anko raised her hand enthusiastically while with the other she not very discreetly wiped the saliva from her lips. No one in the village would refuse a meal made by Tony himself at this point, especially after the success of the banquet in the land of rice was made known and people discovered that even the Hokage often goes to Tony's house to eat. Well, she is Karen's teacher. What would Tony do otherwise? Karen sighed in relief understanding that she wouldn't need to keep the secret for too long and Taiyuya pouted as she took Karen and dragged her towards her room. Where are you going? Tony asked, as speechless as Karen herself. Is no one noticing that I'm being kidnapped from my own home? Girl talk. Taiyuya muttered, an excuse he found to be very useful in keeping Tony in line. And it's not really like he's lying either. Anko's expression darkened when she heard that and clenched her teeth. And why wasn't she being dragged along as well? Wasn't she a woman? Wasn't she a reliable source of information? Anko turned around and left the house fuming from her head. What the hell just happened? Tony wondered as he was suddenly alone in the living room. The doorbell of the house rang at night and Tony went to open the door for Anko. The dishes were freshly made and as everyone took their seats they would be at their perfect temperature. Tsunade. Tony was expecting someone, but not her. What are you doing here? Here's. Tsunade complained. Is that the way to treat your little sister's teacher? 
Shizun, I need clarification. Tony looked at the dark-haired woman behind Tsunade, knowing that she will understand the situation sooner if she talks to a rational person. Hello Tonikun Shizun was a bit embarrassed by the situation Tsunadesima heard from Anko that tonight you were going to prepare a new dish, so. My fault. Anko revealed herself behind Shizun and stuck out her tongue mischievously. Oh, you're here to scrounge ahem. Trying the new dish too, Tony agreed. Although I would have appreciated a heads up to prepare more dishes, she pointed out. Do you really want us to believe that you are not capable of preparing more in the short time it takes us to sit down at the table? Tsunade looked at him with disdain. Tony was silent, not knowing how to feel at that comment. On one hand he was proud that his abilities actually allowed him to do that, but for some reason he found his explanation very annoying to him. Or maybe it was because of the way he looked at him. Go ahead, you know where the table is Tony kept an expressionless face, he wanted to get past this point of the conversation as quickly as possible I'll go prepare the additional dishes. The only point where Tony couldn't complain was that they had come to dinner a little dressed up, surely a dishonest but effective method of being forgiven for their unannounced arrival. Tsunade wasn't wearing her usual kimono and wore a more traditional sky blue one with star and constellation motifs. Shizun on her side was also wearing a kimono, but hers was snow white with lavender flowers on the sleeves and neckline, giving a subtle touch of color. And the fact that he didn't have the pig with her added a lot of points. Anko next to her was dressed in civilian clothes comfortable but appropriate and applied a bit of eyeshadow. She even brought with her a few bottles of drink suitable for everyone. Sensei. Karen was surprised by the arrival of her teacher and her eldest. The girl wore pants as red as her hair and a white shirt with a large cat printed on the chest. She wasn't wearing her lenses, because she was trying to see if she was comfortable with lenses in her eyes. She gave him a different air with greater security. Let me guess, you played the little sister card Anko saw Karen's reaction and knew she was right actually you're not bad with that look, it's adorable she laughed, covering her mouth with one hand where's the other redhead? Are you going to make fun of me too? Ayanko turned to look at Taiyuya and froze who are you? Meanwhile in the kitchen. This should be enough, Tony sighed. He spent the whole week perfecting his plan and his recipe. Thanks to the system's suggestions and repeated testing, the success rate grew by 5. 57%, resulting in a new total of 93. 5%. If it didn't work out, he could only lament his bad luck. She took the empty plates and left the kitchen. Are you already seated? I hope you're hungry, because. Crash. The plate slipped from Tony's hands as he was completely shocked to see Taiyuya. She was dressed in a black chi pao with silver dragon embroidery, her hair in a large reddish braid that fell down her neck with a pair of small jade green hairpins, and a light makeup on her face that was barely distinguishable, but elegant. The biggest contrast to her was her lips darkened with black lipstick. Does anyone dare to build the image? You owe me a bottle of soju, he heard Enko whisper to Tsunade. Damn. Tsunadesima Shizun raised her hand to her face. She told them that they shouldn't bet on Tony's reaction. He was very rude. Although Tony's reaction was perfectly understandable, it took a moment for everyone present to recognize Taiyuya. She was simply too different from the usual gangly of hers. Ahem. Karen coughed to get Tony out of her thoughts. Should I bring the broom to pick up the pieces? Hey. Oh, sure even with the reminder, it took Tony a second to react time going for more plates. Taiyuya watched calmly as Tony returned to the kitchen, but she was inwardly delighted. She had argued with Karen for a few hours and she had to muster her courage to dare to make such a big change. She, a trained assassin. She perhaps she shouldn't underestimate the power of feminine charm as much as she did in the past. Dinner resumed without further incident, everyone enjoying their food, and only Taiyuya noticed Tony giving her a few more discreet glances. She almost broke a smile. The time has come. Tony announced after removing the last plates. Everyone will get a different recipe and I need an honest opinion. Just one warning, these dishes are a bit special, some surprises can happen, just try to stay calm. Although that earned a few puzzled looks, they nodded. Karen Macedonia breaks limits. She's an immortal peach pudding. Tsunade dessert of Unimo. Anko spaghetti alla puttanesca. Taiyuya pasta of the desert. Tony cake with jewel jam. 
Drink lemonade flavored sparkling hero water no side effects. It really is a different recipe for everyone, Shizun commented. Not so much, Tayuya and I have some kind of pasta Enko pointed out the rest are some kind of sweet. Pasta is very versatile, Tony dismissed. They look good, Tsunade agreed, let's get started. They all ate simultaneously and nothing happened. Let's go. They have only taken the first bite, what did you expect? It wasn't until they finished eating and gave their opinions all praise that Tony looked at them, waiting for him to start his plan. I feel kind of weird, Tsunade commented as he rubbed his stomach. The rest of the girls were also a little uncomfortable and Tony's words caught his attention. I told you these dishes were special, Tony told him with a smile. It should start any minute. Remember, don't be scared. Pearl Jam, get to work. Karen was the first to show changes. Her eyes began to shed tears like a waterfall, one would think that she would end up dehydrated in no time, but no matter how much she cried, there didn't seem to be anything wrong with her. Why is everything suddenly blurry? Karen looked around her confused. Go to the bathroom and remove your contact lenses, you'll have a pleasant surprise, Tony told him. Karen rushed to the bathroom and a few moments later, everyone heard her scream. How is this possible? Karen returned excited I can see well without wearing my glasses. In fact, I have never seen things in such detail before. Before anyone could react, Shizun started scratching her neck and arms, feeling a huge itch all over her body. Layers of dead skin fell to the ground, her hair grew to her waist and her kimono tightened. My skin has become soft as a baby's. She she exclaimed, pleasantly surprised wait, because my kimono is suddenly so tight. To everyone's surprise, including Tony, Shizun's figure grew and along with her new long hair, she gained a greater feminine charm. Her new figure of hers could almost compete with Tsunade in some areas. Tony only prepared a dish to eliminate the effects of stress from following Tsunade for so many years, something like a beauty treatment. The last effect was unexpected. Does that mean that the stress of following her teacher affected her bodily development? Tony Tsunade wanted to ask what was happening, but this time it was her turn. She began to secrete from all the pores of her body an oily and black substance with a disgusting odor at the same time that she felt a strange heat running through her body. It took two minutes for the process to stop, and the ejected substance cracked and turned into dust that fell to the ground as ash. Tsunade knew her body well and was speechless as she inspected herself. All the damage that her body irreparably accumulated against Hanzo, the salamander, just disappeared. She was sure that if she cancelled her technique right now, she would no longer look like an old woman without vitality and strength. Something ripe? Of course. But nothing as bad as before. Hell, she'd even swear her chest gained a few more sizes. Tayuya. Anko. Tony called. This will hurt a little, but trust me and bear it. You'll thank me later. He barely finished speaking when the girls started screaming and holding their necks, more specifically, the cursed seal. Tony pushed the table away to avoid being hit and waited for her to finish. A few minutes later, they calmed down and felt her body fill with strength. Tony. All the women present looked at him and it was clear they weren't going to let him get away with it if he didn't give a proper explanation. First of all. Anko and Tayuya congratulations. I just destroyed any negative effects of Orochimaru's seal. That means you can use it without fear and you don't have to worry about outside interference, like, say, remote control or torture. Anko and Tayuya's two dishes were indeed his main focus when making this dinner. The cursed seal on both is too risky a factor in his eyes and containing it was not enough in his opinion, especially knowing that there was a piece of Orochimaru's soul deep within the seal, used as a wild card to be reborn in case of death. So he used the power of Pearl Jam to remove the illness from the negative effects of the seal and for that, that fragment of Orochimaru's soul was broken down and used as nutrients. The excess was integrated into their bodies, resulting in increased strength and potential. He gave a summary of the rest of the dishes. Karen could not only see well, but her brain was developed to increase her learning level and increased her natural recovery factor. Even someone from the Uzumaki clan can't compare to her level. She explained Shizun's anti-stress dish and Tsunade's detox dish, the effect of which also exceeded her expectations. Wasn't that releasing the impurities from the body like in the legends? 
Why did she suddenly think of Tsunade embarking on the path of immortal cultivation? How long have you been thinking about this? Tsunade asked, still in shock from the results of the dinner. I started investigating the cursed seal when I learned about Anko Sensei's past, and it became a priority after Taiyuya's arrival Tony told them. It wasn't the whole truth, but I wasn't lying either for Karen, it was after she became my little sister. As for Shizun and you, I improvised it at a time like she saw he looked into her eyes so happy. You improvised Tsunade was speechless. Even knowing the effects of Tony's food beforehand and eating at his house from time to time, it never crossed his mind to use food to remove the scars from one of the worst and most distressing fights of his life. You should have warned us, Tonikun. Despite Shizun's words of complaint, her happy expression betrayed that she was not at all dissatisfied with what had happened. Although she might regret it when she finally understood the shoulder pain that her teacher always complains about. Karen hugged Tony while he cried again, but this time with joy. She was so glad to have become her little sister of hers, she always tried to take care of her the best she could. She swore to herself to become a great expert in medical jutsu, so she could always take care of her amazing older brother. Anko didn't say anything, but the fact that she was no longer in the shadow of her master, made her feel as if a mountain had been lifted from above her and she could suddenly look up at the blue sky above her head. Her. She never noticed Tony researching the subject so tactfully and for so long, achieving results even without being a mad scientist like Orochimaru was. Her emotions were agitated. Taiyuya turned her head to hide the single tear that she couldn't hold back despite her best efforts. That her presence was a determining factor in greatly speeding up countermeasures for the cursed seal touched her. And finally be free from the shackles of his past. Not having to fear that one night she'll wake up suddenly and Orochimaru will control her. Thank you she murmured in such a small tone that no one heard her. But the feeling was there. Ask. What dish would you like to eat if you knew that Pearl Jam was in it? Leave a comment with the name, reason and a picture. Tony, is this type of dish something that can be produced in larger quantities? Tsunade immediately understood the enormous appeal of this form of food. It was no longer a question of whether it was nutritionally rich or tasted great, no, this went much further. It would not be an exaggeration to call it a medicinal kitchen. If they could get a supply for the Kanoha Hospital, he estimates they could reduce the recovery time of patients from months to days. Ninjas could take riskier and better paying missions, since they could recover more easily. And that was just the tip of the iceberg. But Tony didn't hesitate to pour cold water on the Hokage's illusions. Impossible, Tony denied. These dishes can only be prepared thanks to the unique combination of my ingredients, recipes, and special techniques. While the first two could be used, the techniques are something I can't pass on. Not for lack of will, but because it's a unique trait of mine. Also, the food should be freshly made. It will lose any effectiveness if some time passes, so I can't do the same as with my ninja edibles. There is also the fact that I prefer to keep this type of food as my trump card. I think you understand what I mean. Tsunade could only nod in dismay. Danzo already made plans just because of the little she knew about Tony and she herself also began to think of possible benefits as soon as she found out, as a reflex action. If what happened leaked into or out of the village, the number of sick people and people who would search for Tony or try to eliminate him were countless. Don't worry, we won't say anything about what happened today, Tsunade assured as the rest of the girls nodded to demonstrate a similar promise. Thanks, Tony replied, but just to be safe, this includes not mentioning it to people like Jiraiya or your personal ANBU. No written records either. Tsunade froze for a moment, but she nodded again. In fact, she thought of keeping it confidential in the village archives, so if people like Jiraiya ask about her change, it wouldn't be a problem to reveal a bit. But remembering how Tony had to keep his guard up against Danzo all this time, this would probably be considered a huge betrayal of her trust. Tsunade liked the boy, her little sister was her second apprentice, quite talented at it, and the chain of shops in the village accounted for a significant part of the taxes that the treasury collected. And she was still waiting for the liquor from her fiancé from her. No matter what angle he looked at it from, it was definitely better to keep Tony's trust. With her assessment of the other party's personality, she knows that he will not deliberately cause trouble. Dinner ended while they talked and laughed, having fun.
Tsunade proposed to go for a few drinks, but she suddenly remembered that she and Shizun were the only ones allowed to drink alcohol. Karen, Tony and Taiyuya were still considered minors and drinking at their age was not smart. Before Tsunade went from talking about drinks to betting, Shizun, who knew her teacher well, told her that it was late and they should return, since tomorrow she had many documents to sign. Don't talk about it Shizun, I want to end tonight in a good mood. Tsunade sighed, her spirit suddenly sinking. Tony rolled his eyes and simply gave him some advice, the same as any person with common sense should have told any Kage from any village. But apparently, such people did not exist in the world of Naruto. Only great fanfic readers could possess that wisdom. Why don't you use clones to help you with the paperwork? Just do two or three and the speed at which you'll finish the job will be greatly reduced. Shizun and Tsunade gaped at him. That's it. How is it possible that no one has noticed until now? Ha ha ha, in the end I will finish the night in a good mood. Tsunade laughed happily and approached Tony with her eyes shining. The next moment was so fast it was a blur, Tony felt something warm on his forehead and before he could react Tsunade turned and ran off with Shizun. Karen and Taiyuya looked at the bold Hokage in surprise as Tony reached up to touch his forehead. Tsunade had just done what he thought he did. Ding! The host has fulfilled a hidden achievement. Hidden achievement Prince Charming. Condition obtain a kiss from a true princess given on her own initiative that contains genuine gratitude and innocence. Hidden reward in the world of Naruto, there are several princesses and the reward is influenced by the hidden achievement trigger, Princess Senju Tsunade Senju. The host obtains the Forest of Gluttony One Piece Summon Contract. Tony didn't expect him to get another hidden achievement after so long. He didn't immediately consult the reward, because he had to deal with Karen and Taiyuya, who were suddenly in a strange mood. Only after calming them down and sending them to his rooms did Tony look at the reward as he cleaned up the dishes. Forest of Gluttony This is a giant carnivorous plant that grows in the Boyne Archipelago, also known as Baron's Stomach. Due to their large size and the greenstone forests that grow from their body, they are often mistaken for islands. These forests contain hundreds of varieties of highly nutritious and delicious food in the center of the island, which is actually the mouth of the barren stomach. The closer the prey gets to the center, the more delicious the food will be and the less chance it will have to escape. Warning Forest of Gluttony is a large area mass summon and is unable to distinguish between enemies or allies. As long as someone takes a single bite of your exposed bait, they will be marked as the next item on the menu. System, you mean as long as I summon it and it doesn't eat any of the bait, it won't attack me? Correct. It will only attack if someone takes the initiative to pluck or eat its bait. As long as you don't lose anything on your end, you will be calm and patient. It's a predator that uses a honey trap and as long as the trap doesn't pop, nothing else matters to it. At least I won't have to feed him for his services. He murmured, remembering the payment of the chimera ants. Melioron didn't come cheap. He was a chimera ant who specialized in stealth and infiltration, just thinking how much food he would need to prepare in order to summon royal guards or royals makes him shudder. At the end of the conversation, I forgot to discuss with Tsunade what I want to do next she looked out the kitchen window and saw the dark sky it doesn't matter, I'll talk to her tomorrow she shrugged her shoulders and finished washing the dishes. Meanwhile, in an underground laboratory far from Kanoha. Yellow Eyes observed the data from his most recent experiment in his hands, turning his head towards what seemed like a simple broken apple on the table. This how is it even possible? Orochimaru always considered eating as a simple act to keep the body functional and stay alive. But long ago he realized with a simple calculation that the time spent eating throughout his life would be too much and could be used elsewhere, as his researches, so years ago he devised a nutritional solution for only required a few seconds to drink it and supply your body with what it needs. He rarely ate normal food unless the situation demanded it or he had a purpose. And that was exactly what happened. Kabuto informed him that the ninja groceries from the cooker shop were sent to the base by his subordinates and Sasuke rushed off to claim some for himself. Orochimaru couldn't help but gaze with mild interest at his unusual behavior, even if they had already discussed Tony's food. So he took some ninja grocery scrolls and brought them to the lab. In any case, he needed to wait a few hours for the chemicals to form the reaction he was looking for, he could play a little to relax his mind. He opened one of the scrolls and got a bowl of curry, a bottle of red tea, and two apples. 
The smell is a bit pleasant, Orochimaru contemplated as his nose was stimulated by the curry. He took the bottle and examined it the tea seems quite ordinary at first glance, a mixture that includes some wild fruits. Not even the apples seem to stand out in any way, except for their perfect shape. Some kind of specialized crop. Orochimaru was not impressed. He separated a few samples and after making sure the food was drug-free and tampered with, he began to eat. Oh. He raised an eyebrow after chewing a bit the taste is actually quite, no, much better than he expected. Though perhaps it's simply due to the fact that it's been half a decade since I last ate in this inefficient way. The curry flavor was thick, but not too strong. It stimulated his papillae and increased the secretion of saliva in his mouth. After a few more bites, he drank his tea and drank some. Interesting, the tea is actually interacting with the remaining taste in my mouth to create a new sensation. Clever trick, he commented. He alternated between curry and tea, finishing both in a few minutes, which actually surprised him. He hadn't expected to enjoy a meal at this point. He turned his head to look at the apples and shrugged. I have always despised wasting resources. She took one and took a bite as he reached out with his free hand to grab a scroll to read while he finished the fruit. He swallowed and just as he was about to take a second bite, he froze. What's this? Immediately he sensed an anomaly. It could be said without fear of being wrong that both Tsunade and Orochimaru were true eminences when it came to controlling their bodies. The only difference was that Tsunade had said control thanks to his medical ninjutsu and Orochimaru due to his forbidden technique. The food including the curry and the red tea were nice and she certainly felt the kick her body got, but she had drugs in the lab capable of achieving similar effects, so while she found it a bit interesting that such effects could happen from cooking a specific mode, it was no more than that. But the apple made him feel something familiar and strange at the same time. He closed his eyes and felt every pulse and contraction of his body, paying attention to it all. Is the feeling gone? He frowned in dissatisfaction. Without waiting another second, he took another bite of the apple in his hand and after chewing it, he swallowed and waited carefully. Soon, he felt the same again. A strange energy that circulated through his body so smoothly that if it weren't for his experience it would be impossible to feel it. Orochimaru checked the status of the areas he circulated through and discovered that they had actually been strengthened. Very slightly, but the effect was there. The most extraordinary thing was that it didn't seem like something temporary. This must be the effect Sasuke was talking about, he stated without hesitation, but where I've felt this before. It was the first time in a while that Orochimaru needed time to go through and analyze his own memories, trying to find the match he was looking for. After several minutes of silence, his eyes widened in genuine disbelief. Ryuchi Cave Long ago, Orochimaru discovered the origin of the Yugo clan's abilities, which led him to visit Ryuichi Cave with Kabuto. There, he managed to comprehend what natural energy was, but he could never fully obtain the ability to absorb natural energy, since his body could not support it. But the point was that he was exposed to natural energy and the sensation he had was very similar to the energy that ran through his body when he bit into the apple. That's it. Similar, but not the same. The natural energy he got from the apple was gentle and beneficial, causing no damage or stress to his body and even strengthening him a little. Natural energy does not usually act like this at all. Not even the oil from the toads of Mount Mayaboku, which could help its practitioners absorb natural energy, could do this in such a beneficial way. After all, practitioners will turn into stone toads if they are not careful when using the toad oil. Is it because the amount of natural energy is a small amount or is it a stable trait? Is it something replicable? What is the upper limit that can be ingested each time? Orochimaru forgot about his chemicals and spent the rest of the day testing the apples and everything on the storage scrolls. Each test was intended to examine, deduce, or limit the range of possibilities about the strange natural energy. And the results were scandalous. Each dish, drink, and ingredient has varying degrees of the same natural energy. The comparisons and the data were in his hands this how is it even possible? How did he manage to keep the natural energy confined without the slightest leak and without seals? How did he manage to so perfectly eliminate the terrible side effects? Where did the natural energy come from, its original source? So many questions and one last one crossed his mind. Could he somehow use this so he could finally become a sage? 
Looks like I'm going to need a lot more of these ninja edibles, he laughed in the lab. Now that I think about it, Taiyuya is with him, right? Perhaps we can reach some kind of mutually satisfactory arrangement. 